many rules in 40K, hundreds of events, and constant updates. Skip the learning curve of Warhammer and join the pros. Art of War is led by multiple world champions with decades of success. We teach clinics, stream games, and inspire you to succeed at your favorite hobby. Join our global community of gamers just like you. What's up everyone? Welcome back for another exciting Art of War Hot Takes. This time we are bringing you something special. Horsies! Something long awaited. We are bringing you... Horsies! Horsies. And the oldest book in 40k. The last 8th edition codex. Now it's what? This book Necrons? is... Uh, Space Marines, but uh, they're tied I think. It's, I think they released it the same. It's been a while. Uh, this book came out, no, no joke, I think five, like the last guard book came out over five years ago. Yep. Yeah, it was it was early eighth edition. It was early eighth edition. It was one of those first ones, and uh, and we got a new one. So we have received a copy of the Cadia Stands box and the Codex within, thanks to uh, Wonderful Games Workshop. So we very much appreciate them providing us with this content, so that we can give it to you. That's right. Uh, they That's gave right. it to us so that we could share it all with you. And happy Saturday. We are now allowed to talk about it. We are excited to talk about it. Uh, we've been stewing and brewing on some of the rules in this book for a while, and we've been wanting to talk about them and wanting to test them. I'm really excited to see how this book is received, how, it, uh, how the guard community reacts, because they've, they've been waiting. Some of them have even been waiting patiently. N not, not, not all of not them. Not many of them. I've seen the most, extra military subreddit. It is. <laughs> It's wild out there. They've, they've been waiting a long time for this beautiful book. Uh, first of all, this is, of course, the limited edition book that comes inside the box. You've got uh, looks gorgeous. Le Lord Solar Leontis riding his pony on the front, and uh, courtesy of the green, green screen, just uh, poking a little bit of holes in that. And then right on the back, you've got a brand new Rogel Dorn with a pretty cool art style. Also looks really cool. Also looking really good. I'm excited to watch you put this on the table against Nick. Absolutely. This is going to be going on the table pretty soon. Uh, since you're watching this, uh, well, I guess it's Saturday that this is going live. Uh, that means we've got games coming up this week, so you can tune in to watch it. Uh, I'm going to be going up against Leagues of Otan Chaos. I'm going to get a lot of games with Guard over the next couple weeks. I'm really excited to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're an iconic army of 40k, and it's time to get back in the saddle, as it were. Absolutely. It's, we, we've waited too long. It's been too long since Guard was a, a, a relevant force on the tabletop. Uh, and uh, since they've been popular, you know, the, the game is better when Guard is in it unless that game is also artillery spam. Yeah, then the... I don't know, Guard has always been kind of cancerous <laughs> like that. Never as bad as Guard has always come out and then been like, what if I took nine wyverns? It's like, oof. Yeah, that was, that was a thing, wasn't that it? That was a thing, yeah. Yeah, uh, just to give a little bit of context on this, uh, we don't know how this is going to interact with the balance patch that currently exists for yes. Warhammer 40k. There's a... Uh, there is precedent for it both getting the balance patch mm -hmm. and also not getting the balance patch. Yep. So it's going to be whatever whatever gets decided. Yeah, we've seen some of the rules that were introduced in the balance patch, such as uh, obsec armagers that count as multiple models. We've seen that get removed because it was redundant with the codex. And then we've seen things like armor of contempt stay for Chaos Space Marines. We've had both. A lot of the rules are going to end up look, sounding kind of redundant when you hear the rules in here, and some of them won't. So we're just going to evaluate this base level on what's in the book. Uh, I'm kind of assuming that none of the balance patch stuff stays. But if it ends up staying, if GW is generous and gives uh, Armor of Contempt to tanks, something that is not inherently in this codex, yep. then just whatever we said about an armored unit, same thing, but tougher. There are reasons to believe that they will not keep the balance update. As you said, some things in this book yeah. are a little redundant with them. Yeah. Uh, and we'll go over those as we get to them. Absolutely. I, I would like, because there's four things in the balance patch for guard. Right. It's the tanks get uh, armor of contempt. Yep. It's hammer of the emperor, six yep. is to hit auto wound. Which will end up being a little redundant. That one is super, well, something is redundant. Something <laughs> is. Something is redundant. Either the born yeah. soldiers trait or whatever is redundant. But 
hammer the emperor, uh, the indirect fire, uh, they ignore the nerf. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the last one is, did they make did they they made Lehman the, Rusta 2 up, or is that always the That as well. Uh, they, they gave uh, Lehman Rusta 2 up, and they also uh, gave them uh, auras off of their orders. I see. They turned them from targeted into hit everyone. Yes. Which that one is also a little redundant. A little redundant. So, so we'll, we'll kind of see how that plays out, of course, as we review this book. But are we ready to dive into it? Absolutely. All right, so starting off on a good old page 59 is where we get into the first page of like actual so real close. crunchy rules. Yes. Um, Detachment abilities. So it's got the normal things that you'd expect where uh, troops gain ob objective secured and the National Military Deta Detachment gains chain of command. Chain of command is basically telling you who your warlord is. Uh, if you take a, uh, an officer, then the officer has to be the warlord. Unless you take a commandant, then the commandant outranks the officer. Unless you take Lord Solar, who outranks the commandant. So that all makes sense. You can't yeah. have Lord Solar, you know, Leontis show up to the battlefield and get outranked by some dude on his second day out of the officer academy. Yeah, no, they they, they won't be doing that. Yeah. So uh, it's the exact same thing you'd expect. You're not going to make an engine seer your warlord when there's a real officer at the t uh, on the battlefield, and the, the chain of command goes on. A uh, couple other interesting things is that keyword regimental units. This is not a bracket, and this is one that we're going to have to explain a little bit. Yeah, they, they departed a little bit from... Uh... Yeah, this is an interesting book. So keyword regimental units gain uh, the Born Soldiers Regimental Doctrine, which we'll cover in just a second. And uh, if you wish, you can replace Born Soldiers with a custom regimental doctrine of your own, as described on page 60, the next page. So basically, there is no bracketed regiment. Uh, so you no longer take your Lehman Rust Battle Tank, see Bracket Regiment, and replace it with Cadia, or Catachan, or Steel Legion, anything like that. All of that's gone. Yes, this book is, it's not even, it, it feels weird to call it soup, because it feels designed without any of those mm -hmm. um, clarification, like classifications yeah. in mind. It's not like you're mixing a regiment, you know, Cadia and Valhalla. It's just that that does that distinction doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, there will be some uh, specific regiment keywords keyed to data sheets, but those will be built in, and it won't matter if you mix them. So, for example, you can take a Catachan Infantry Squad. It has keyword Catachan. That doesn't matter. That doesn't change anything for your regiment. It'll only affect stratagems and some very specific rules that might hinge off of those regiments. But that's just on the data sheet. There's no way to give a Lehman Ross Catachan. You buy a Katachan Infantry Squad, and that will just happen to have the keyword Katachan in addition to Regimental. Yep, and you can have Katachans, Kadians, mm -hmm. uh, Death Corps of Krieg, and you can have Regimental. I mean, all of those have Regimental in yep. them, but you can have, you know, if your regiment is in your head going to be the Valhallen 117th, that it appears nowhere in the rules. Absolutely. Like, you yep. don't replace anything with anything. It just has the Regimental word, and you get to yeah. take regimental doctrines. Regimental is on almost everything that you would expect. Guardsmen are regimental, officers are regimental, tanks are regimental, scions, Valkyries, uh, Ogren, Rattlings, those are not regimental. They're auxilia. They're, yeah, uh, scions and uh, Valkyries kind of have their own term. But they're, they're all auxilia in some form or another, meaning that they're not going to break any of your rules but you're not going to get the benefit from them. Yeah, this is the first book, I think, in since 8th mm -hmm. edition to not have sub-factions in it in the way that uh, yeah, other Yeah, we've only seen it in things like Grey Knights, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, which, but even then, some of those have like Brotherhoods yeah, that you can replace. you're playing Preservers, yeah. you're playing Rapiers, you're playing Sword Bearers. It's literally the first? Yeah, it's the first one. You're playing Cult of Duplicity. This one, there is no, I'm playing X, hmm. you know, Guard. Yeah. Now you can say my regimental units have this doctrine or whatever, but the doctrines are not named after places yeah. or regiments or anything. They are themed after them, though. You could, they are. You could certainly look at what some of these doctrines that are coming up and see, this sounds like the Katachan doctrine. And yeah, no, it'll, it'll even share some resemblance with what you remember. Jungle Fighters, I think, is one of them. Yeah, or I think it's Brutal Strength. Brutal Strength. Um, and it sounds a lot like what a Katachan used to be. But it's not actually keyword Katachan. Um, the other things to know with the detachment abilities is that all troops in a detachment gain obsec, as you'd expect. Uh, just troops. There is nothing to give uh, tanks inherent obsec like there used to be. Because it used to be all troops get it and Lehman Ross in a spearhead. That part's gone. It's just troops get obsec. Finally, if every unit in a uh, guard detachment is uh, Militarum Tempestus or Auxilia, then your scions take the troop battlefield role instead of elite. Uh, so, okay, that's spoiler alert, they will end up being elite slots, not troop slots, yeah. which means you're not going to put a troop scion in a guard battalion with a bunch of Russ and infantry squads. It's no longer just two infantry squads and a scion to get your R&D. 
not an option anymore. But if you want to run pure scions, if scions is your army, you can still do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So let's cover regimental doctrines. Uh, might as well cover born soldiers with the rest of them. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's in the list writing phase, right? You or the list writing mm -hmm. part. You select either born soldiers or two other regimental doctrines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those are your regimental doctrines, and your entire army gets the benefit of that trait. And they yeah. also get keywords, which inter, uh, interface with different stratagems. Absolutely. It is a bit much to like, memorize up front. A little bit, and, yeah. like, in practice, it's kind of like you have a, like a trait, like a sub-faction trait. Mm -hmm. But there's no sub-faction warlord traits, there's no sub-faction relics, no sub-faction strategy. Well, there, no, there are, because they have keywords. Yeah. It's weird. It's like, it's like the sub-factions <laughs> got spread throughout the book instead of... Yeah, it, it, instead of, it is it is a little bit strange. So basically, yeah, it's like their faction specific sec, uh, stratagems are kind of just in with the stratagems. So you, you have less generic stratagems and a lot more of that. But some some of them are still accessible to everyone, and they're better for a uh, for yeah. a unit. So it, it, it's a little bit weird. You'll kind of see as we go. So first up is born soldiers. Uh, weirdly enough, this is the one that you start with, but in the list writing phase, you can replace it with two. I think the reason that you start with this instead of just having this be an all consuming one you can choose is tied to Crusade. Because uh, I, I flipped, I tried to figure out why that was, and I flipped through the Crusade rules, and there was some answers there. But that's OK. We don't, we're probably not going to cover Crusade much more here. I think they really like having, in the rules writing process, they really like having default options that you can mm -hmm. swap out so that newer players like come to this book, and they don't want to have to read you know, 75 different regimental doctrines in order to figure out which two mm -hmm. their army wants. They just will take born soldiers because that's the default, and then you know work from there as they, they grow. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So let's talk about what born soldiers is. Uh, first up, it gives you uh, the born soldiers keyword. Again, this is a common thread we're going to see with a lot of doctrines. Uh, second, uh, officers with this doctrine gain an aura, and that aura is uh, while a friendly platoon unit is within six inches of this model, models in that platoon unit can use the officer's leadership instead of their own. Platoon is a, a very common keyword that's on everything you'd expect it to be, same way that squadron is on what you'd expect it to be. So everything with platoon is going to be like your infantry squads, your heavy weapon teams. Uh, basically, if it's a dude on foot, they probably have platoon. Likewise, if it's a tank that's not a super heavy, it probably has squadron. So something like a Lehman Russ is going to have squadron, a Chimera is going to have squadron, a, a Wyvern is going to have squadron, and a heavy weapon team is going to have platoon, an infantry squad is going to have platoon, a, you know, all that's basically Ooh, that. Yeah, the keywords get a little complicated. They, honestly, they, they are so close to just being able to say infantry instead of platoon, but where this becomes an exception is that Ogren don't have platoon. Yeah. Rattlings don't have platoon. That's kind of where the line is drawn. Don't have regimentals. They could have they, uh, they 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 could have just done regimental infantry, and I think regimental it actually vehicle, would have yeah. been the same. Yeah. But uh, there is of course a second part to Born Heroes that is uh, much stronger, and will remind you of Hammer the Emperor. Yeah, this is the reason why, th it, to me, I think Born Soldiers is the strongest. Mm -hmm. Uh, strongest option. It is every time a model with this doctrine makes a ranged attack, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. And there's a note here that uh, any hit roll of six is counted as a wound roll of six. And like every other time they have done this in the past, this will come up and I think is a mistake. Yeah. But, <laughs> why, why, why do they keep making rules like that? They just keep I don't doing it. Know. Compared to Votan, I think that Guard have less instances of a wound roll of six matters. They do. But it does exist, yeah. and when it matters, it matters. Yeah. So we'll see how impactful it is on the meta. But this is strictly a buff to Hammer the Emperor, but also remember that it's now the Regimental Traits. You're not Cadian and Hammer the Emperor. Yeah. You are now Born Soldiers, period. And, and Born Soldiers existing the way it does makes me assume that Hammer of the Emperor will not be in uh, in the next uh, balance patch, but we don't really know until GW tells us. Otherwise, if Hammer of the Emperor existed, Born Soldiers would be terrible because you'd get Born Soldiers with everybody. Yeah, exactly. Like, it would make sense to just invalidate it like that. So there are, what is this, 6, 10, 15 regimental doctrines. Easy. You can pick any two of them, although there is one that counts as two. Yep. So going through them, we've got... Uh, Da, 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 da. All regimental units in astromilitarium detachments in your army uh, have that regimental doctrine set of born soldiers. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, if yeah. you're creating crusade, all regimental units. And you choose it for your army, not for your detachment. Yes. So even though there's no replaceable keyword, you can't take a battalion of born soldiers and a battalion of mechanized, mechanized infantry. Yeah. Speaking of which, first one up, and probably my like thematic favorite, mm -hmm. is mechanized infantry. Uh, 
every single, most of these come with a keyword. This one comes with the mechanized keyword. All units in your army gain mechanized. Uh, and then units of this doctrine can disembark from a transport model, excluding aircraft, after that model's made a normal move. But if they do so, such units cannot be selected to move again this phase, although though they still count as having moved. And neither they nor the transport model are eligible to declare a charge. What this means is you disembark the three, and then you don't move after that. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. So that's very strong. Mm -hmm. It gives your... I, this is one of two. Yeah. And this is probably the strongest one out of the... Uh, the regimental it's definitely one, one of the more born soldiers. It's one of the more interesting ones. It's one that's easier to build around because it tells you how to build around and take transports. Uh, there's a couple that I think are very powerful. Yeah. Um, and there are some contenders for born soldiers to be sure. But this is one of the the leaders. Yeah. If you're taking heavy transports, I think mm -hmm. you take mechanized infantry. It's just it yeah. gives you a lot of mobility. Absolutely. All right. Parade drill. If a unit with this doctor remains stationary in your movement phase, then until the end of your next shooting phase, change the type characteristic of las guns and hotshot las guns model in that unit are equipped with to heavy two. Yeah, so you basically shoot it for you basically have a bolter drill. Yeah. If you stand still, you fire your max shots out to range. Only with las guns makes this a bit of a miss for me. Yeah. Um, there are ways to move and count as remaining stationary, but generally I don't think that this is that's enough to make me want my las guns to rapid fire at full distance. They, yeah, it's <clears throat> las guns and hotshot las guns, not the hotshot volley gun. Yeah, not just las else. guns. Just las if guns it was all rapid weapons. fire weapons, I might see this as slightly more interesting, but that's okay. They, yeah, they can't all be hits. Fine. Armored superiority. Mm -hmm. They gain the armored superiority keyword. Sentinel models count as three models for determining control and objective. Titanic count as ten, and all other vehicles count as five. Yep. So it doesn't give OPSEC, but makes them count as a ton of models on objectives. Yep. That is very powerful and for mechanized. There are ways to give them OPSEC. Yes, there are ways to distribute OPSEC throughout this book, so that is uh, uh, not insignificant. Yep. Then there's Blitz Division, mm -hmm. which is very cool. It's a very cool sounding word. It is. Uh, when placing units with this doctrine into strategic reserves, have their combined power ratings when determining the number of command points. Meh. In the second battle round, each time you set up a vehicle unit, uh, other than Sentinels, from strategic reserves, it is considered to be the third battle round for purposes of determining whether that unit can be set up. Mm -hmm. That is a very big miss for me. I don't think you yeah. really want to be putting a lot of your tanks into mm -hmm. reserves. And weirdly enough, uh, Blitz Division does not give you a keyword. So Armored Superiority gives you the Armored Superiority keyword, but Parade Drill and Blitz Division don't come with a keyword. So, yeah. weird. Expert Bombardiers, mm -hmm. uh, they gain the Expert Bombardiers keyword, and then every time an artillery model with this doctrine makes a ranged attack, if the target of that attack is within 12 inches of and visible to a friendly Vox caster or Sentinel unit, add one to that attack's hit roll. I think that's super cool. It's very thematic. I like very this thematic. one a lot. I like. I think it's outshone by Born Soldiers, because I think that just making auto wounds on sixes to hit mm -hmm. is going to be better than Expert Bombardiers plus something. Yeah. But I do like how Expert Bombardiers like tries to make indirect work because you have, you know, you're radioing in the position. It's kind of like how they made uh, Hive Guard work. Yeah, where you have to see them with a synapse creature. Yeah, you have to call in the bombardment. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I want indirect weapons to work. And they're trying to make it work here. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Yeah, so how this synergizes with, you know, whether or not there's an indirect nerf will matter a lot. But for now, uh, this is also the basically the only way to give something like a Basilisk or a Manticore plus one to hit, which is significant. Yes. And if it is in line of sight, so if you're in line of sight with a Manticore and you call it in with a spotter, you're hitting on threes, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or well, or if it keep if they keep the indirect immunity, then it still hits on threes. Yeah. We don't really know yet. Yeah, my guess is it won't, but... That's my guess as well. Yeah. That seems like a reasonable guess. Yeah. All right. Heirloom weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, add four inches to the range characteristic of all ranged weapons models in this doctrine are equipped with. Yeah. That is solid. That's just, that's just really good, honestly. It, it is really solid. It's a little weird because a lot of guard weapons have, like, range 90. Yeah. But then a lot don't. A lot know? don't. Like, flamers, demolisher cannons, like... There's plenty of 18-inch weapons to go up to 22, 24 Absolutely. go to 28. Yeah, Hellhound you know, time. 12 go to 16. Run my Hellhounds really in the like Blitz it. Division with the heirloom weapons. Yeah, keep Those are really old Hellhounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next up we've got Recon Operators. Uh, this uh, doesn't come with a keyword, but at the start of the first battle round, uh, and any infantry, cavalry, or sentinel units that you have can make a 6-inch normal move uh, if they start the battle wholly in your deployment zone. Uh, I genuinely have not figured out how to get infantry, cavalry, or sentinels outside of your deployment zone. But this might just be covering their body. Just to make sure, <laughs> I think they're just covering there. And maybe I'll find it on, on a third read through here. Uh, but a six-inch normal move is really nice. 
I mean, that, adding that is fair because you don't want to slip up, find a way to have like mm -hmm. cavalry start the game like twelve inches up, and then yeah. suddenly they're. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm sure it's just a good feature proof. Yeah. Um, so, so really strong there. Um, uh, basically, a redeploy builds into all your infantry, cavalry, and sentinels. I think that all of those are really good. I think you're going to want infantry, cavalry, and sentinels in most lists. So Thankfully I'm all about it. Get tanks. Yeah, I, that's probably for the best, honestly. That's, yeah, nobody needs to have a tank move six, then move ten, and then get line of sight and shoot. <laughs> Indeed. Turn one. Next up is trophy hunters. Uh, trophy hunters. Could you fix that? Uh, trophy hunters gives you plus one strength, and weirdly enough, this is there. We go. Uh, this is the one that's all consuming. So trophy hunters, you cannot take a second one with it. Uh, so trophy hunters is plus one strength whenever you target a monster or vehicle with a uh, oh, just an attack. So that it works in combat as well. That's fun. So uh, just plus one strength into monsters and vehicles. It's solid. Uh, it's weird that this one's all consuming. Yeah, this one is counts as two. Yeah. Um, wait, plus one strength is like just not great. Con comparable traits mm -hmm. would be like plus one to wound monsters and vehicles from um, Cult of Strife. Yeah, Cult. Of, oh, no, no, it's not. It's, uh, uh, it's a test, test of skill. skill. But that's also not with guard level firepower. So that's I, true. It's mostly combat. I can appreciate why they were hesitant there. Yeah, I get it. A lot of guard stuff though is like strength nine already, where. Mm -hmm. 9 or 10 doesn't really matter. Yeah, unless there's a toughness 9 10 coming in. There's matter. a lot more of those nowadays, aren't there? Weird how that works. Yeah. All right, next up is Grim Demeanor. Uh, this gives a keyword, Grim Demeanor. And uh, you ignore any and all modifiers to combat attrition. Wow, that sounds an awful lot like Death Corps of Krieg. Uh, no, it's actually Valhalla. Oh, Grim Demeanor is them? Yeah. Okay, what am I thinking? Cult of Sacrifices. Uh, Cult of Sacrifices. We'll get there soon. Brutal sure. Strength right. is uh, the one that they compare to Catachans. Uh, and it does not give a keyword, but infantry ignore hit penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons with uh, this. So solid heavy weapon teams and sniper rifles and things get a little bit better. It's not bad. And plus one strength uh, on the first round of combat. So if you uh, charge, we're charged, or perform heroic. But both of these are infantry only. Notably, doesn't extend to cavalry or vehicles. Now, you don't need to ignore heavy penalties on anyone besides your infantry, but the plus one strength is only infantry. I think this one's decent. You're probably not going to see it, but it's decent. Yeah, I don't think you'll see it just because like, it sounded good and then I went and read through it to try to find heavy weapons on infantry and it's just the heavy weapon team. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know if I care about that that much. Well, yeah, okay, that's, yeah, exactly. that's a lot worse. Exactly. It's like that's, that's the only one. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, it's just heavy weapon teams who probably aren't going to move that much. It's like how, uh, let me take a brief aside. Mm -hmm. It's like how Snakebite's trait is amazing, but it only applies to like 600 points of your army if you really, really, really try. So it's like, eh. It's that, that's how that feels. Fair. Uh, next up is Veteran Gorillas. Uh, still, that's exactly how you pronounce it. Veteran Gorillas. Uh, and your Veteran Gorillas uh, that's pronounced. Exactly. Yeah. gain uh, uh, the keyword. And uh, each time an infantry or a sentinel, so again, this is infantry or sentinel only, not everyone, makes a ranged attack, you ignore uh, uh, the benefits of cover with an 18. So if you target an enemy unit with an 18 with a ranged attack, you ignore the benefits of cover, which does mean that you ignore light and a dense. Nice combo. That is nice. Uh, yeah. Something to mention as well as we're going through these regimental doctrines is that there's a number of abilities and rules and warlord traits and tank aces, etc., that can let a unit add a regimental doctrine to their normal one. So while some of these may sound like, oh yeah, that's super niche, I think I would only want that on like one or two units, that's an option. Veteran Gorillas also makes, I mean, we'll get to it in a bit, mm -hmm. but it also makes a defensive strat really good. Don't do yeah. mortals when somebody charges you, just very strong. Yeah, 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 there's some interesting stuff there. Uh, Elite Sharpshooters comes with a keyword, so this will have a strat synergy later, and you can reroll one hit roll when you resolve the unit's attacks. Just good old fashioned master artisans. Not bad. It's not bad, especially if you're going vehicle heavy. Yeah, I think most of the time your your damage is going to come from your your vehicles. Mm -hmm. Although a lot. although there are some notable exceptions we'll get to. <laughs> Indeed. Which is why I don't think veteran gorillas is like amazing. You as, mean as an army wide? Oh, but yeah, yeah. Is because it only applies to infantry and sentinels, whereas elite sharpshooters applies to everything. Yep. Uh, cult of Sacrifice comes with the keyword Cult of Sacrifice, very Death Corps of Krieg esque. And uh, if you are below your starting strength when you're selected to make an attack, plus one to hit. So you kind of get a little bit of Martyred Lady in here. Um, again, you have to, so that, again, this by definition does not affect most vehicles. I think Sentinels can benefit from this, all other vehicles can't. Yeah. You can take a squadron of Sentinels and lose one. But other than that, this only will affect vehicles and Sentinels and like cavalry. Yes, because there's no more tank squadrons. Yeah. The main problem I have with this is not that it's a bad rule, it's that there's a, it only affects certain units and all the units that can get this have 
other ways to get plus one to hit. There's, a, there's an order for plus one to hit in combat, there's an order for plus one to hit in shooting. But then you can take plus one to hit and use a different order. You can. But again, if your guard squad goes out, loses some people, and then is still effective enough to care. Which, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little shaky. It's mostly, like, the way I would really want mm -hmm. to use this is in a transport. You take that and mechanize infantry. Yep. And if they kill your transport, you get out, you lose a guy to the disembark behind a wall, and then you pop out with plus one to hit. Yeah, I agree. That would be a good combo if you're going transport heavy. Yeah. Um, industrial efficiency. This one is uh, themed after Steel Legion. Treat AP1 is AP dash. So it's like a little baby armor of contempt. And again, this by definition does not stack with armor of contempt. So that's another hint that maybe they're not keeping it. Yeah. But also, you know, Iron Warriors, however, also had this. And then they were like, don't worry, we're getting rid of that, giving you something new and keeping armor of contempt. So they could go either way. Uh, the final one here is Swift as the Wind, which is a little bit themed after Talon. And that is that you get plus one to move to all of your infantry and artillery units. Then you get okay. plus two move to everything else, so all other vehicles. All your cavalry, all and your cavalry. Tanks, yeah. yeah. And then finally, you get plus one to charge rolls made for all the units with his doctrine. That's pretty good. It's very solid. It's doing different things than what guard normally does, but this is a very strong buff to a weakness of the army, or you could take a less strong buff to a strength of the army. Generally, Strengthening what your army does well is better than trying to shore up weaknesses. Usually I agree, but there's, there will be some interesting yeah. plays with this. I'm imagining... I think this would be nuts in most armies, but uh, in guard... It, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. That wraps up the regimental traits. Uh, that is all of them. And they come with a bunch of keywords, and those keywords affect some strategies. Yes, which we're getting to now. All right. Want to dive into it? Yes. Armored Fist. Mm. All right. I like this one. One CP. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when an Astra Militarum core unit from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack against the closest eligible target, if that model disembarked from a transport model this turn, you can reroll the wound roll. So one CP core unit rerolls wounds against the closest eligible enemy. And they've had they had to have disembarked from a transport that turn. Yeah. A lot of hoops to jump through, but when you get through the hoops, it's one CP real ones. Yeah, that is that is really good. It's also not even that hard of a hoop to jump through. No. No, you disembark from a transport, mm -hmm. closest target, die. Yeah, that's it's very doable. Very, very doable. Best thing about this strat in my mind is that it's hard to spam because of how transports work. Yes. Because it's usually difficult to get into a transport after you shot. Wait, wait on that one. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes, uh, this is great with mechanized, for sure. Yeah, this is great with mechanized. Yeah. Vengeance for Cadia. Mm -hmm. Ooh, all the Chaos players in chat uh, holding their breath. Yeah. One CP, use it in your shooting or fight phase when a Cadian unit from your army, oh, they, mis they misspelled it, they said form your army, <laughs> or a platoon unit from your army that is itself within six inches of a friendly Cadian officer unit is selected to shoot or fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a mall in that unit makes an attack against a Chaos unit, add one to that attack's wing roll. Yep, I like that this is now shooting or combat. I was always mad I couldn't use it in combat before. Yeah, they weren't. They got up close and then they decided they weren't actually that mad about Cadia. Yeah. Like, it's fine, you know, let bygones be bygones. Mm -hmm. um, really strong when it matters. Uh, less overpowered into Chaos, probably, but still is a, roll hits and wounds. Yeah. Still a nice buff. Uh, and yes, you will notice that it involves the Cadia keyword, even though you don't have a regiment to replace. Some data sheets have Cadia baked in. Yes. Uh, this is a good reason to take a Cadian officer unit, which you Absolutely. can take, because mm -hmm. then anyone nearby him can get really mad about Cadia. Yeah, yeah, and it's a platoon unit. So basically think of this as almost any type of infantry. Yeah. Uh, but like a squadron unit like a Lehman Rust is not going to be able to benefit from this. No, it's hard to tell through their scopes, like whether it's Chaos or... Oh yeah, just, you know, side. weird Xenos, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Cadia stands, 1 CP, use the stratagem in any phase when a Cadian infantry unit from your army is selected as the target of an attack. Mm -hmm. Until the end of the phase, each time an attack is made against that unit, an unmodified wound roll of 1 through 3 for that attack fails, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or model making the attack may have. So this is Transhuman for yeah. Cadia. That is really good. It is 1 CP for as many models as you want to yeah. affect with this. But it will never be more than 10 models due to how the units work. Yes, but 1 CP for 10 model transhuman is incredible. Uh, it's still a great strategy. Especially on Toughness 3 models. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's a big, it's a big, big deal. deal. No, Cadia Stands is awesome. Cadia Stands is, is yeah, gonna, you're going to be using that a lot. Mm -hmm. Ingrained Precision, this is really good. Yep. <laughs> 1 CP uses strategy in your shooting phase only when a born soldier's unit from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a mall in that unit makes a ranged attack, an unmodified hit roll of 5 plus automatically wounds the target. 
If an attack automatically wins the target as a result of this, then it counts as a sex tool. Yep. So one CP gain your second grudge token, but only for born soldiers. So this is the first of our like keyword regiment specific strats, yes. but it's a good one. Yeah, the strategy is insane. <laughs> yeah, it's the same like, reason that Votan was good is it didn't work here. And this remember is, the radium weapons? The radium yeah, weapon strat? Yeah, like, just this that. is getting to that level. Uh, and it's just born soldiers. It's not core, it's not platoon, it's not reg it's just born soldiers. So it could be a tank. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 That's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm waiting until someone gets me down to ballistic skill five. I'm just like, F this. Sure. <laughs> like All right. we're just I just wanted to nice once. Yeah. All right, overlapping fields of fire, 2 CP. Mm -hmm. In your shooting phase, when an enemy model is destroyed by an attack made by a platoon or squadron model from your army, until the end of the phase, each time a friendly platoon or squadron model makes an attack against that destroyed model's unit, reroll wound rolls of one, and on a wound roll of six, improve the AP by one. Yeah, so this is good. It only works on multi-model enemy units by definition. Uh, 2 CP is a little bit harsh, but also sometimes this will matter. Yeah, 2 CP reroll wound rolls of 1 and sometimes have better AP feels like it's pretty overcosted. Agreed. Compared to in the context of other strats you can use here, I don't see myself using this much. Yeah. I think 1 CP I'd be like very willing to look at this. Especially since you have to jump through a hoop to get it in the first place. Yeah, the biggest upside to me is that this does give rerolls to vehicles, which otherwise just aren't rerolling wound rolls. I have sure. not found a single other way to get a Lehman Rust to reroll wound rolls of 1. I might find it again on, on, a, on another read through here, but I haven't seen it yet. Fair enough. Volley fire, 2 mm -hmm. CP. Use the stratagem at the end of your shooting phase. Select an infantry squad unit from your army that remains stationary this turn. That unit can shoot again. 2 CP to shoot twice is hard to pre-plan because you have to hold still. Yep. But there are ways to count as stationary even if you move or advance. If you have those, the stratagem feels like a good pocket tool for the last minute. But uh, infantry squad is basically a keyword shared by all of the troop units. It's not really going on anything else. Yeah. So it's not like anything in your army is going to 2CP shoot again. It's mostly just guardsmen and various flavors of guardsmen. Yeah. Which is like, fine, I get why they didn't make it 1CP, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you couldn't make it 1. All right. Experience die, 1CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Kasserkin or Elite Sharpshooter's core unit from your army is selected to shoot. Mm -hmm. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, improve the AP of that attack by one. This is the biggest argument for Elite Sharpshooters in my mind, because the, the reroll the hit is nice on vehicles, but then it doesn't help that much on infantry. This is a great stratagem for infantry, but of course, because Kasserkins get it anyway, that is also really good for them. Yeah, Kasserkins are... They're... Pretty good, so. Yeah, Kasserkins benefit from a lot of the rules found in here. They have basically every keyword you could ask. And Elite sharp, Sharpshooters is ignores uh, cover with a knee. No, no, no. Nope, they uh, the... reroll a hit roll. Yeah. 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 yeah but this right. is core only, which is not going to include very many vehicles. Immovable indoctrination, 1 CP. Uh, in any phase when a Militarum Tempestus infantry unit from your army that is within range of an objective marker is selected as the target of an attack. To the end of the phase, each time attacks me against that unit, the wound roll cannot be re-rolled and worsen the AP by one. Armor of Contempt and just, uh, it's basically void armor for silence for one CP. That's a really good strat. It's fine, they're tough as three. It's one CP. Minus one AP is good. Minus one AP is solid. And no re-rolls ones. Yeah, you'll pop this sometimes, but the if it was no hit re-rolls, that would be something else. I guess. Yeah, because wound rerolls like strength six or more is just okay. like, okay, cool. I feel like one CP void armor is just like great. It, it's good. What, they have a four plus? Yeah. 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 It's not bad. Gives uh, them a three I'll plus, take it. essentially. Yeah. Two up and cover, fun functionally a two up and cover. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good. All right, let's uh, cut through some of these. We're on to the epic deed stratagems, although not many of the rules that I found here interact with the type of stratagem, so no, needing to know that seems pretty low. That's good, because I never really... I never really remember that anyway. It's like epic deed, I'm like, oh my god, and yeah. I have to flip back through. Like, <laughs> Relentless. This, 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 and you have to remember them. Yep, Relentless for 1 or 2 CP is a very uh, basic strat. It's uh, count as top tier if you're not a top tier. It's 1 CP, unless you're Titanic, then it's 2 CP. Classic top tier stratagem, it's good to have. Okay. It's it's nice to have access to, no other way around it. One CP plus two to hit, plus four move, uh, and then whatever else you lost is like real good. Yeah. Uh, feel the promotion for one CP. When your warlord is destroyed, uh, pick, a new, pick an officer on the table that does not have a warlord trait. Then select a warlord trait, and they count as your warlord for all rules purposes. So uh, just and just select a, uh, a warlord trait that is, uh, let's see, 
that no model from your army has. So I'm wondering if dead models count for that. Is a yeah. dead model still in your army? So I know where you're going with this, uh, whether you can switch your old, uh, old grudges target. Yeah, I, can yeah. you? I don't know. I looked into this too because I saw that and I was like, wait a minute, can you just get old grudges killed and then repick a new target for old grudges? That's something I would do. But um, that no model from your army has, I think army yeah. includes... I would, I would lean and no. Yeah. For the same reason that like, if you're running soup and you get all your guardsmen killed, you don't suddenly gain doctrines. Yeah. But wouldn't mind an FAQ on that, just to make sure. Uh, mainly this is used for, uh, like there are some warlord traits that I wouldn't mind getting mm -hmm. mid game, but I think mostly I would like to just preserve my warlord if I lose them too early in conversion. Yeah, yeah, conversion, you don't get your CP uh, each turn unless you have your warlord, and if you lose your warlord in conversion, that's real bad, so don't do that. Yep. All right, moving on, we've got Vengeful Salute, one a personal favorite of mine, for one or two CP. Uh, so use this uh, in your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase. When an Astra Militarum vehicle model from your army is destroyed but did not explode, do not remove that model from play. It can shoot after the attacking model's unit has finished making attacks. When doing so, it can only make attacks with turret weapons. Which, which generally be, are its better weapons. Which are generally the best weapon, on, and uh, they have a ballistic skill of 5 plus. If this model has battle tank or armor superiority, it costs one CP. Otherwise, it costs two. So this is the one that uh, synergizes with armor superiority. However, battle tank is like a Lehman Russ or a Rogel Dorn. So it's only one CP if it's on your best turret tanks. You well, know, not the, like the Shadow Sword or whatever. No, um, because in like, yeah, it is as a military turn vehicle. Yeah, so yeah. You can imagine. Yeah, no, you can totally just shoot like your Bane. Yeah, Blah. on death. Um, uh, so um, the ballistic skill characteristic is five, but turret weapons give you plus one to hit. They do. Well, that that'll, unfortunately is not covered for another eighty pages. But uh, yes, you. So you'll hit on fours. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Turret weapon strong. What if you had some sorts of root rolls? If that would help. What if? What if you did? <laughs> what if you did? Uh, that 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 is scary. <laughs> like that's yeah, really the fact that like every time a, a Russ dies, it's just like one CP turrets going off. That's gonna get annoying if you just have a lot of them. Yep, and there's no longer the problem of like turret weapons. I mean, we'll cover turret weapons really fast right now, which is you get plus one to hit, mm -hmm. and that's about it. And you can also shoot out of combat, I, which that's, also that's means very significant. When they die, they can shoot their turret weapon out of combat into just random nonsense. Yep, no penalties there. That seems really good, but they no longer have the thing where they shoot twice. So you're not missing out on like your second half of your shots. They're now pray like they but now their stats. But reflect. their guns are generally a little bit better. Yes, their their stats of their guns reflect the fact you're not firing them twice. Yep. Uh, battlefield surgery for one CP. If you have a uh, the keyword medic, then uh, and you're below your starting strength, restore D3 destroyed models other than keyword officer models to the unit uh, with their full wounds remaining. That doesn't so, make sense. You can't restore officers. Well, they didn't want you bringing back a four or five wound model, but yeah. also don't kill your officer first if you have a command squad. Yeah, that, that seems pretty. Yeah, don't don't kill right. him first. I'm just imagining that uh, you know. The officer's lying on the ground wounded alongside three other guys, and the medic runs over and goes, sorry, sir, and just heals D3 guys, but not the officer. Yeah, not the officer, absolutely not. Um, crush them, one CP. This is your uh, classic uh, combat with a guard tank. Strategy. Uh, so when a battle tank or super heavy, which is basically Lehman Rest, Rogel Dorn, or a uh, or super heavy, uh, in the fight phase, uh, until the end of the uh, phase, unless you're going against a monster or vehicle, you change your weapon skill to four, and if you have the armored keyword, not armored supremacy, armored, then it goes to weapon skill three, and on a non-modified wound roll of six, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So splash mortal wounds, better weapon skill. This isn't great on a Lehman Russ, frankly, but it's actually pretty solid on a on the, uh, the tanks, the super heavies. The super heavies all have the keyword armored built in. Everyone else has to buy it for five points with, um, uh, with track guards. But, you know, if you've got a one wound Abaddon and you are the, and it's the beginning of your charge phase, screw it, right? See if you get a, a mortal wound through there. Yeah. Um, it's not, I mean, it's great to tell your opponent you have, and then they're like, ooh, Baharoth better stay back. It's like, yeah, yeah. you better. Yeah, uh, but the, you actually have a combo up on the super heavies because they have Trax's weapon, so they hit hard in combat. Well, I, they, they could run over an intercessor squad. How many attacks do they have? Like, there's six attacks at like strength 8 AP, 3 damage 2 or something. It's like, it's not great, but that could kill an intercessor squad. I 
if you go to weapon skill three and then get plus one to hit, you're hitting on twos, wounding on twos, take saves or die. It, sure. It, it's not great, but it's I a... I mean, it's one CP. So it's one like, CP. What are we talking for about For super here? heavies, this is fine. Yeah, for super heavies, yep. that, that is quite... Next up, we've got fire on my position, which is strictly better than it used to be, because it used to be the worst strat in the game. One of them, for sure. It was the. Hands down, it was the. It was three CP for a four plus to do D3 mortal wounds if you lost a uh, Vox caster in combat. It was the single worst strategy in the game. Yeah, that is pretty overpriced. It's pretty bad. Now it is one or two CP for the exact same thing. Uh, when you lose a Vox caster to a melee attack, roll a uh, dice for every enemy within three inches on a four plus to take D3 mortals. If you have Cult of Sacrifice, this costs one CP, otherwise it costs two. Uh, 2 CP, I really struggle to see the scenario where I am desperate to do wounds to someone and have 2 CP in my pocket and they killed my Vox caster in melee and I don't have something better to do. But if that happens, I will remember this exists. If, no, you won't. If, yeah, well, if your Cult of Sacrifice... Perfect. Sure. If, uh, if your Cult of Sacrifice, I could actually see using this. This is a lot like the... Uh, it's worse. It's worse than the Tau, Tau one where you blow up one of your uh, mm -hmm. battle suits, but you don't have to lose a battle suit to do it. Yeah, the fact that it's a 4 plus hearts. I get it, but it is like in in Tau, like against Harlequins. My game plan is every time you kill a guy, you're going to take a bunch of mortal wounds. Have fun with that. Yeah. And fire my position. I could see doing a similar thing. Yeah, four plus is hard, but yeah, we'll see. Just uh, better. It's like easy. Officer Cadre is one CP. Uh, if a Esmeral Terror uh, model is your warlord, give warlord traits to more people. If it's Strike Force, do it twice. This is the exact same by warlord trait strat that uh, you've seen before. And just to make Jack's life easy, I'm going to hit the next two. Uh, battlefield uh, bequest uh, give a relic to a sergeant there is a list of relics here uh, it is uh, legacy of Caladius, claw of the desert tigers the barbican's key the emperor's fury relic of lost cadia those are all strat uh, yeah, relics the barbican's key is the interesting one there's mm -hmm. a bunch of relic weapons you can give one of them i think to a uh yeah. rough rider well, sergeant it's not relic bad. of lost cadia is still cool it's still cool. firmly Cool. Uh, finally, Imperial Commander's Armory is 1 CP. Buy relics for people, but the normal way. Uh, the only thing that is interesting about this uh, is that in addition to buying them for commanders, you can also buy, or for characters, you can also buy relics for certain models in command squads. There's a relic flag and there's a relic foxcaster. You can use this stratagem to buy them, them relics even though they don't have character. You know what I wish? I wish they did the thing they do in the FAQs where they highlight changes in like magenta. Mm -hmm. Like I wish they just highlighted the changes to the like any difference to the standard relic and warlord trait one. I mean, I wish they just highlighted. That. I mean, if I if I had a request, it'd be that the next time we get an addition, I would like these stratagems to just go into the main rulebook. Yeah, like just, and just then, the relic and warlord trait one can go in the rulebook, and like if you have a sergeant or a second warlord trait, that's a cool thing you can print in a codex. Yeah, yeah, and then. And maybe at the start of the book, they just say, hey, when you do X, you can also give them a, like any model in that unit. That yeah. Thing. Yeah. It took us like took us a couple days to notice demons couldn't get Warlord Trades because we always gloss past that part anyway. And we're like, oh, wait, that one's not wait here. Wait a minute. That's yeah. not there. You only have one more. So one. funny. So good. All right. Yeah. All you. I'm so mad about that. Orbital Interference, 2 CP. Use this stratagem at the start of the reinforcement step of your opponent's movement phase if an officer of the fleet model from your army is on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. If it's the first or second battle round, you select one of your opponent's strategic reserves or reinforcements units, and that unit cannot arrive on the battlefield this phase for any reason, even if it has another rule that states it always arrives on the battlefield during a specific battle round, e.g. drop, pod, assault. You can only use this stratagem one time. This is hilarious for people who try to do like a... I'm going to deep strike Scarbrand and bring him off of Bellicor. The problem is that you have to take an officer of the fleet. Well, it says opponent strategic reserves or reinforcement units. Yeah, that's reinforcements. Reinforcements are if you put them into like, because it's not strategic reserves. I believe the reinforcement counts as. Okay. Yeah. Got it. The reinforcement part covers that. So yeah, they put Scarbrand on, they move Bellicor up, and then you're just like, no. <laughs> yeah, not today. God, that actually ruins demons. <laughs> it's so rough. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but like, brutal. The, the problem, like, I being realistic with the whole book, I don't think I'm taking an officer of the fleet just for this. He's very cheap. He's like 25 points. Yeah, it's very cheap. I, genuinely... I mean, if you're having any problems with demons, man, there okay. are ways for this book to mess them up. But like. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. It's really funny. Because they have to like pre-commit their warp locus. Yeah. Like they move their warp locus up into the spot, the measure where everything's going, you're like, yeah, that might not Yeah, happen. it is the start of the reinforcement step. It's not at the start of the movement phase. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, they have to move their... But, like, that's turn one or two. They could kind of wait until turn three, and then you can't use the stratagem anymore. Yeah, sure, if they wait until turn three. Yeah. then you didn't have to spend any CP, and you mm -hmm. made them wait until turn three. Yeah, that's... That's hilarious. If drop pods come back in the meta, this is going to be hilarious. Yeah, you take a 25 point, you don't get to drop pod me turn one. Yep. Yeah, big success. I mean, it's, you pick one of their units. So if they have multiple drop pods for some unknown reason, sure. Yeah. Uh, Maverick Maneuvers. Mm -hmm. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when you select a Sentinel unit from your army to shoot. After shooting, they can move up to six inches and they cannot shoot again. One CP. I love this stratagem. Not bad. Fire and fade, but Because you can charge after. Yeah, seems good. I like that. Their Sentinel's close combat weapons are trash. It's, it's not about the damage, Jack, but a uh, Scout Sentinel moves 12 now. Yep. And it has a scout move. Yep, so, so it can go turn, like 24 inches. Turn one, it can go 27 inches. And then charge. That's, that's neato. Yeah. It's pretty neato. Still just a scout sentinel, but... So, yeah, it's not like doing anything. I, but sometimes actively doing nothing in engagement range with the enemy is what you need. I Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's also a great move block because, like, Imperial Knights can't walk over it. It's a yeah. vehicle. Neom. Yeah, if you go... And then, like, end, you know... You don't charge after, unfortunately, because yeah. the knights will just go. Yeah, I'll find a halverin, maybe. Uh. Yeah, sure. Charge a halverin, or just move a whole bunch, and then stand right in front of the, you know, three inches away mm -hmm. from the biggest knight possible, so they can't heroic, and you're like, you can't walk over me. I really just want to go, like, tag, like, a, a Hecaton Land Fortress turn one, and just be like, stay. <laughs> stay. Yeah, they'll overwatch you. I'll charge someone next to it. <laughs> All right. Thunderous Charge, 1 CP. When an Ogren or Adelin Rough Rider unit from your army finishes a charge move, mm -hmm. select one enemy unit with an engage range of that Ogren or Rough Rider unit and roll 1d6 for each model in that unit that is within engage range of the enemy unit. For each result that equals or exceeds the enemy toughness, they take a mortal wound. Okay, it's like a cool Hammer of Wrath. Yeah, Hammer of Wrath is good. Yeah. I like this. It's nice to have. Yeah, solid. Uh, artillery strike requested, 2 CP. In your command phase, if Master of Ordnance or Expert Bombardier's officer model from your army is on the battlefield, mm -hmm. select a point, place a marker, start your next command phase, roll a D6 for each unit within 6 inches of the center of that marker, adding 1 if the unit being rolled for is within 3 inches of the center, and subtracting 1 if they're a character. On a 2 through 5, they take D3 mortal wounds. On a 6, they take D6 mortal wounds. The marker is then removed, and you can only use the stratagem one time. You thank God you can only use the stratagem one time, otherwise it busted. I, it's cool. It's cool. It's not cool. amazing. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Again, am I actually, like, I could use this strap, not very often, and am I actually going to take the Master of Ordnance just for this? I mean, I could see putting this and a Death, death Strike. Oh, sure. Uh, you, <laughs> take the, you take the Death Strike one that's a little wider mm -hmm. so that you can actually cover an objective. Or you could take two three inch ones and just go boop, boop, right on an objective and say anything still on this objective is going to have a rough time in a second. Mm -hmm. They're both three inch rounds, whereas an objective is bigger than that by a little bit, but enough that a unit will just tow the objective and still be out of your your ordinance. Yeah. So this this is mm, fine. It's fine. It's fine. Right, um, so you got the fun one. Yeah. Acceptable losses. One CP in your shooting phase. Select one Astro Militarum unit from your army that is not within engaged range of any enemy units. Then select one enemy unit. Until the end of the phase, models in that Astro Militarum unit can target that enemy unit even if it is within engagement range of other friendly, uh, friendly platoon or grim demeanor units. But each time a model makes an attack against such a target, the attack's hit roll cannot be rerolled. And on an unmodified hit roll of one, resolve that attack against one friendly unit selected by you that is within engagement range of the target instead. Resolve any attacks against friendly units after resolving all attacks against that enemy unit. Hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. Love it. You can shoot into combat mm -hmm. if they are platoon or grim demeanor. Yep. The ones that are in combat. Because uh, presumably otherwise they're like, stop! And then you actually like, listen to them, I guess. But if they're grim demeanor... I like, think it's like they don't, yes. they don't mind. I, I, I guess it's their way of... like Because you're not going to really have that many units that aren't grim demeanor shooting. Because yeah. like, all your units are regiment anyway. Uh, you can't like mix. So yeah, it's like they're, they're just willing to shoot you off the tank. But only if you're... You're a very dour tank. Yeah, I guess. Like if you're a tank that they think would be cool with it, they can, they'll go for it. Yeah. Yeah. This is very good. Yeah. The one CP shoot into combat. Excellent. That is one of the big problems Guard has. One problem is getting their tanks tagged. Don't worry, the turrets can still shoot. And the other problem is shooting enemies in combat. Don't worry, you can do that now. <laughs> big success. Trap me in combat. I will find those witches. 
All right, one more page of stratagems, and we've got the vicious traps. One CP. I like this one. This one's fun. Uh, one CP basically deal mortal wounds when your opponent charges you. So if they charge in, uh, one or more Astro Military units that are wholly within an area terrain feature, roll a d6 and apply the following modifiers. Uh, plus one if any of those units are either keyword Katachan or keyword Veteran Gorillas. Uh, then veteran Gorillas is ignores uh, light cover than 18 inches, right? Correct. Yes. So which is a good trait to have. That's a good trait to have. And then plus one if any of those units have the Meltamine keyword, which is mainly Kassarkins. It's hard to get Meltamines. Yes. And finally, plus one if uh, Slime Marbo is on the battlefield yeah. and he's part of your army. Um, so you can get up to plus three if you manage to check all these boxes. On a two plus, you deal D3 mortals. On a six plus, you do 2D3 mortals. Let me, let me see something real fast. Sure. Does Sly Marbo have melt -bonds? melt bonds? He probably does, honestly. He's a guy. He's a dude. He's a dude who can Sly, carry Sly him. Rambo? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Sly Rambo does sound really annoying to charge. Yeah, like that sounds actually pretty good. He does have melt mine So if you just charge Rambo, or whatever they're calling mm -hmm. him, if you charge Marbo, uh, one CP, you take D3 mortal wounds, but on a three plus, you take two D3 mortal yeah. wounds. Only if he's wholly in an area train feature, but Which that's not that a hard. Single model unit. Yeah, it's very easy yeah. to do. Otherwise, like cat, um, any catechin units are pretty good at this. Theoretically, and, yes. Theoretically, yes, and also Kassarkin are very good at this because they can take a melt mine. Yes. And so if you charge them on a three plus, you take two yeah. D3 mortal. I don't think I like, do take a melt mine, but it is nice to have the it's option. It's nice to have option. Um, but also on a four plus they take two D three mortals, and mm -hmm. on a any on a one through a three they take D three mortals. Yeah, it's still really it's a cool strat. You know who hates this with a passion? You're gonna say Abaddon. Harlequins. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty. Harlequins good. do not like taking two D three mortal wounds anytime you want to declare a what? charge. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, you were. Yep. <laughs> All right. Fainting strike, one CP when an Adeline Rough Rider is selected to fall back. They can fall back, shoot, and charge. So it's only the one unit, but fall back, shoot, and charge, one CP is really good value. You're not going to be using the shoot part of this much, if I'm being honest. Uh, they have las guns. But one CP fall back. <laughs> you and, will use it. But you, you'll use it. But the fall back and charge is really, really nice. Yeah. It's, it's uh, because uh, Rough Riders are way better on the charge than not. Flak Barrage. This... This one makes me happy. One CP at the uh, end of the reinforcement step of your opponent's uh, movement phase. Select one Hydra unit from your army that is on the battlefield, and uh, that is not within engagement range of any enemy units. It can shoot as if you were shooting phase, but can only target enemy aircraft that were set up as reinforcements this turn. So if you have Hydras, and your opponent is Tau, because specifically I'm thinking about Tau here, uh, and you go first, you're just going to just be like, hey, any bomber on the, the board, I am going to kill immediately. And they're going to be like, no problem, it's going in reserves. Like, d don't worry, yep, buddy, we're cool here. The carry on yeah, they're going straight into reserves, no problem. And then the second they show up, you're like, no, nah, you're still dead. Bang. Yeah, it's not. It's so. Yeah, Hydras mm. are so good at killing flyers. Hydras are a real anti air unit. And they're like a fine unit when they don't have flyers. It's nothing special. But they are very good into planes. Yes, and they're, they're trying to in implement some. Uh, some like interceptor stuff. Yeah, it's and, but also hydras have turret weapons. So if theoretically, if two sun sharks came on the battlefield, one of them dies in your movement phase because the hydra we will talk about later wrecks planes uh, really badly, <laughs> really badly, <laughs> really bad. And then they like they kill it, and then I'm like, ah, uh, parting salute. Let's go ahead and shoot the turret weapon on death into the other plane. Ballistic skill five, no problem. We're still hitting on force. Does it have to be a battle tank? Uh, What's the keyword? It is a uh, battle tank or armored. I think. Oh, oh no, it's an astro military vehicle. vehicle. But it's 2 CP if you're not battle tank or armored. I accept. I'll, I'll pay 2 CP to get a plane out of the way. No problem. I'll pay 1, though. 1's even better. Yeah, flak barrage good. Yeah, uh, shield the flesh for 1 CP when your enemy shoots at an infantry unit that is behind a Bulgren or Ogren unit that is within 3 inches of. Um, minus 1 to hit. You can't use uh, bodyguard units for this, because you could take an Ogren bodyguard and shove it in a command squad. That lone bodyguard isn't covering people, but a uh, unit of Ogren or Bulgren, just if it's within 3 inches, can hand a minus 1 to hit, as long as it's closer to the enemy. That's cute. I, I don't like situational, but I don't mind it. Eh, it's fine. Yeah. You're probably not going to see it that much, honestly. Not, not often. Uh, mount up for 2 CP. This one's good. When a mechanized, so this is where mechanized infantry, or a Tempestus Scion unit, uh, infantry, uh, after that unit has shot, if it's within, if every model of the unit is within 3 inches of a friendly transport, the infantry can embark within it uh, as long as you don't exceed its transport capacity. So it's basically 2 CP, 
fire and fade into a transport with scions or mechanized? Yeah, 2 CP is a little expensive because you probably want to get out shoot and use stratagems on them. Mm -hmm. But good thing it is a little expensive because if this were one CP. It would if it's one CP, I'd impressive. spam it. Yeah, it'd be a the problem. And I'm glad it's not, but I would spam it if I could. Yeah. Uh, this thing's real good. Uh, overcharged Laz Cells. This one's also really good. One CP Warrior Stratagem when a Kasserkin or Militarum Tempestus. This might be the best one, best strat in the book. Uh, I, I don't think it is, but it is really good. I, I think ingrained precision might be the best. The combo of the two. The combo sure. of the two is great. The two combo together really well, so who yeah. knows, you know, they're peanut butter <clears throat> and jelly. Uh, so overcharged Laz cells is one CP. Whenever you make a wound roll of a six with a hot shot Laz, Laz weapon, then um, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal in addition to normal damage. Maximum of six mortals per unit per phase. So that means that if your Scion squad manages to find a way to get 12, more, 12 sixes to wound, but they'd spread it out across two different squads, they could both take six mortals. It's per unit. Yeah. And if your sixes to hit count as sixes to wound, it gets more. And if your fives to hit count as sixes to wound, it gets more and more. And if there's some way to reroll hits? If you, you can, found uh, a way to get those units reroll hits, you we'll, could do a lot of mortals. We'll talk about this when we get to Kasserkin, but you can totally get like 24 mortals out of the unit. Yeah, it's you can do a lot with this. Yeah. All right, uh, next up is Smoke Launchers. It's one CP. If you have the keyword smoke, it does exactly the same as every other smoke launcher you've ever seen. Minus one to hit when you get shot at. Good value, nothing unique here. Uh, a Blade of Plating for two or three CP. This one is very good. When a battle tank or keyword armored, so that's Lehman Russ or um, Super Heavies or Rogal Thorns, or a support tank that bought the five point upgrade to get the keyword armored. When, you, uh, when they're attacked uh, at any phase, uh, it's minus one damage. But it's 2 CP unless you're a Rogal Dorn or a Super Heavy. And then it's 3 CP. So this is expensive, but 2 CP minus 1 damage on a uh, Lehman Russ will sometimes be really good. Yes. Or on a Hydra. Or on a anyone who's got armored. Yeah, so battle tank or armored. So it would only be a Hydra if you're armored. I think I'm willing to spend that 5 points, though. Because it's a good upgrade. It is a good upgrade. Um, and, and then, then Meltamine? Meltamine's the final one. One CP in the fight phase when a uh, Meltamine unit from your army selected to fight. Select one enemy or uh, vehicle or monster with an engagement range and roll a d6. On a two up, you gain d3, do t3 plus one mortals. And on a six, you do two d3 mortals. It's pretty good. It no longer takes your attacks away. No longer it takes the, I mean, yeah, but like what? You're going to have like one punch with an idiot. <laughs> But it also... Uh, I guess it lets Sly Marbo swing still. It goes off on a 2+, plus instead of having to actually hit as well. That is, that is true, yeah. yeah. So that one is going to break your heart, because I know how this strategy works. Yep. But it's nice to have. The amount of times I've done a 2-up do D3 mortal wound strat to something that needs to die and is at one wound, and I've gotten it, is like... You would, you yeah, would I'm think a, it goes I'm, off on a 6. I'm batting at like at like 40% success on uh, the Tyranid Charge one. I'm, I'm terrible at that strat. I've stopped uh, using it. The stratagem of Explode a Scarab and do D3 more wounds on a 2+, plus. Mm -hmm. I think I got it two of like five times. I've seen you get it more than two times. Okay, well... Bellicor remembers. Bellicor is both of them. <laughs> yeah. I failed it three times in a row at Nova. <laughs> All right. Tank aces. If your army includes any Astro Militar detachments, then when you're mustering your army, you can upgrade any battle tank or super heavy models from your army by making them a tank ace. Mm -hmm. Each time you make a model a tank ace, select one of the skills presented on this page for that model to have. That model's power rating is increased by one if that model's about whatever its power rating. If you're playing a match, point, uh, match play game or a game that uses a points limit, then the points value of that model is increased by the relevant amount shown in the table below. Each time you take, uh, make a model a tank ace, make a note of which skill you select for on your army roster. I appreciate that you read that entire paragraph. You're welcome. Named characters cannot be made tank aces, and then each model can only have one tank ace skill, and your army cannot include the same tank ace skill more than once. They're not considered to be relics for any rule purposes. That's cute. All right. Vaunted Praetorian. Mm -hmm. Super heavy or rogal Dorn only. This model gains officer and knows mechanized orders. In your command phase, it can issue one order, and if the model is a super heavy, the unit you select for that order can be an Astro Militarum Titanic unit instead of a regular one. Yep. So just. Yep. This one is 15 points on battle tank, 30 on super heavy. It is fine. Your officer does not want to ride in a regular tank. They want to ride in a Rogal Dorn. Otherwise, they'd be just a it's very fancy. command tank. Yeah. It's fancy, it's cool, it's all right. more accurate, but uh, it's not anything special. No, nothing special. <clears throat> Meticulous Calibrator. Each time you make a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. That is incredible. Yep. 
It's 20 points on a battle tank, 40 on a super heavy. That's much better. That is very, very good. That's the one you're going to see in every list, I think. I think so. There are several good ones. This is the best. Uh, I think so. I think there's a second one in here, but I don't really remember which mm -hmm. one it is. Uh, but yeah, that one's crazy. You make a Rogal Dorn, all of its weapons ignore cover, and you just start ripping people apart. Mm -hmm. Mechanical Pack Rat, each time an attack is made against this model, an unmodified wound roll of 1 through 3 for that attack fails, irrespective of any abilities the weapon or model making the attack may have. That's cute. Your toughness, 8 and 9, so, you know, whatever. It yeah. is 20 points and 30 for Super Heavy, but you're probably not taking it. Probably not. I could see it on a Super Heavy, honestly, because they're going to be taking a lot of, like, the really high-strength weapons. Yeah, in. there may be a point in the meta where this becomes the right call. Like, uh, if we start taking Castellans to, tar to combat the Baneblade Menace. But... I think the Baneblade should counter the Castellan Menace. Well, we'll have to see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, veteran Commandeer, when you add this model to your army, select one Doctrine from the Regimental Doctrine section that no mm -hmm. other unit from your army has. The model has that Doctrine in addition to any others. That one is 20 points or 30 for a Super Heavy. That one's fine. I like it to get the the brutal, the uh, the Trophy Hunters, plus one strength against Vehicles Monsters. It can make a uh, make you actually a pretty good tank killer. Yeah, it would have. It would, you definitely have to pick your your weapon carefully. Which one yeah. you want this on? So, yeah, that could totally be. That could totally. It's be. very easy to give Ross at strength eight weapons. Yeah, taking those strength and nine would be really. Strength good. nine is really good in the current meta, especially because guard are about to be introduced at the same time as this. So uh, there's going to be a lot of T eight and nine. Okay. Yeah, I could. I could definitely yeah. see that because that's just twenty points for plus one strength against vehicles. Yep. And taking like heavy bolters up to strength six does matter against some vehicles. Yeah, I was thinking plasma cannon sponsors at that point. Sure. Plasma cannons and an executioner turret and the last cannon on the front. That's all of those like the strength buff. Yep, for sure. Knight of Piety. Uh, the model has a five up invulnerable save, and then every time they lose a wound from a mortal wound on a five up, they do not. Mm -hmm. That one is 25 points for a battle tank, 35 for a super heavy. Probably don't want it because your armor is good enough. The, the five up invulnerable, yeah. It's, it's not bad. There's probably yeah. better ones. If you don't have Armor of Contempt, this gets a little more interesting. It does, because otherwise it's the same unless you're AP5. Yeah. 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 But if you do, then it only is the same if you're AP3, and then AP4 becomes better. But even so, I think I probably would skip it out for something else. Mm -hmm. uh, Master of Camouflage. Each time a ranged attack is made against this model, if the attacker is more than 12 inches away, model is treated as having the benefits of light cover. And if they are Titanic, they only get it for 18 inches away. That one's really good. That one's really good. They're yep. 25 points or 35 for super heavy. Mm -hmm. Tank that's just like camping around. I mean, not even around the back. 12 inches is uh, Yeah, 12 short. inches is pretty easy pretty to get. Yeah. And then you're just like, all right, I have a one-up armor save. I, I think for sure Meticulous Calibrator is the best, but... Uh, Master Camouflage is certainly a good choice. Pretty good. Then we have Steel Commissar, officer model only. Uh, knows Prefectus orders, which are the Commissar orders, in mm -hmm. addition to Mechanized. In your command phase, it can issue one Perfectus in addition to one Mechanized. And when this model issues a Perfectus order, the unit you select for that order can be an infantry officer or abhuman unit. But in such cases, the regimental tactics ability does not apply. So you don't get to chain. We'll get to that in a bit, but the, the uh, benefit for being pure guard is your order's chain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you play telephone. You can issue them to infantry officers or out humans, but you do not have to. It's the same way as the black runes. Yep. It just unlocks an additional suite of people you can have mm -hmm. order around. Yeah, so when the commissar is in a tank, everyone listens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you point that, that gun, you mm -hmm. know, you point the turret weapon at the Ogren, and they're going to pay attention to whatever orders yeah. you're shouting. I'm glad that they included the option to have a tank commander commissar, because, like, that's just really cool. Like, the idea of just a commissar in a tank, it's like, heck, yeah. It's got his own, it's, like, painted black, you know, because he's a badass. There's that... Uh, like drag at me closer the at the beginning. No, that too. Oh, yeah. But at the beginning of um, Necropolis, there's that. Oh, I, I read Gaunt's Ghost. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, there's that commander, that, uh, the uh, commissar that goes out and starts like yelling orders at like this massive tank battle outside the walls of uh, Vervenhive. Real real cinematic, and you can do that too. Heck yeah! Next up, we've got a psychic discipline. And it's the Psychana discipline. Uh, then if the psyker is a uh, so these go for everyone. But if you're an astropath, you can only get the first three options. So primary psyker can get options one through six, and an astropath can get one through three. Uh, so uh, first up is terrifying visions. This is uh, pretty simple. Warp charge six, select an enemy within 18. Line of sight's not required. Subtract two from their leadership characteristic, and they cannot be selected for insane bravery. 
uh, or and they also cannot reroll morale checks. In addition, roll 2d6, and if it's greater than the opponent's uh, leadership after you've put the modifier on, then they automatically fail any actions and cannot perform actions. That's cute. Yeah, minus two leadership and no uh, bravery is really cool. I don't think this is a huge deal, but Nick it's still nice. Nick would really try to make this work and then realize he's actually Black Legion all along. Yeah. Uh, Gaze of the Emperor for uh, for uh, warp charge of six. Uh, select an enemy model within 12 inches invisible, and you draw a straight line. This is uh, just a classic witch fire over here. Uh, and you uh, roll 1d6 for each enemy, for each uh, between end part of this model's base or hull and this psyker's base. Roll 1d6 for that enemy model's unit, and 1d6 for each other unit that this uh, line passes over. On a 1-up, you take a mortal, and on a 6, you take d3. Superman. S Superman, 12 inches. Every time they try to do the beam powers, they suck. Yeah. Psychic barrier, real simple. Uh, warp charge 6, pick a friendly estimator unit within 12 inches, give it a 5-up end ball. It's simple to the point. There are some units that really like this. It is not nearly as good as Psychic Barrier was before, and it is that not. is probably for the best. Yeah. Uh, Night Shroud, uh, Warp Charge 6, select a friendly astral Terror unit within 12. You cannot select Titanic unless you uh, uh, pass on an unmodified 11 up. So you can normally not do this on super heavies, but every once in a while you can. Uh, they get Trans Hitman. So it's an unmodified hit roll of 1 to 3 always fails, irrespective of any abilities or modifiers or anything that you have. But you can reroll hits, so it's only half of the the true combo, uh, which is trans hitman no rerolls that like Harlequins and Chaos Space Marines have. Still, Night Shroud just give a unit trans hitman is really solid. It's good on a Rogal Dorn because you can just cast it and boom, Rogal Dorn. Yeah, good on a Rogal Dorn. I love it on a Rogal Dorn. It's a lot of the time minus one to hit, but sometimes it's better than that. Yeah, uh, Mental Shackles is pretty fun. This is Warp Charge six. Select an enemy unit within eighteen, and uh, subtract two from their movement. Uh, Characteristic and subtract two from advance and charge rolls made for that unit. That's pretty brutal. That's slow down, little man. Unit like, of Chaos Terminators, stop. Mmm, that one's good. I like this one a lot. Final Psychic Power is Psychic Maelstrom, uh, another uh, Witch Fire that does mortal wounds. This one's a little bit better. Uh, it's Warp Charge 6, and uh, uh, it is the closest enemy unit with an 18. You roll a number of dice equal to what you passed on. So it's a minimum six because you have to pass it. But every five up is mortal. Yep. You know some people are going to just roll that 12 and then roll six, because it, it's to a maximum of six mortal wounds. Yep. So, eh. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's roll a die for every every point of the power that you pass mm -hmm. by. So if you roll a nine, yeah. you roll nine dice, and every five up is mortal wound. This is a very nice backup mortal wound of power. It, 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 it's, like, slightly better than smite. I think you're probably not going to take I think you're probably going to take Night Shroud and Mental Shackles and mm -hmm. just be the biggest jerk possible. Probably. Yeah. I actually like Psychic Barrier um, more than Night Shroud. Only it because depends on what you're putting it on. It, it really does. It depends on how, what you're building the list for. All right. So we've got some more lit traits here. That's right. All right. So first one up, Frontline Combatant. Mm -hmm. Every time this Warlord makes a melee attack, hit roll of six is two additional hits and add one to their wound roll. Yep. That's also Strakens. Yes. Uh, and, well, trait. and you can use this with relics. Yeah, yeah, it totally just makes your relics better too. Yeah. This is a very good combat trait, but but you're in guard. But you're in guard, and so there are better things to buy. There are better. That's things. That's the problem. All right, master tactician. Start of the first battle round, you select up to three friendly astro militarum units, other mm -hmm. than Titanic. Remove them from the battlefield and set them anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within your deployment zone. If the mission you are playing uses strategic reserves, you can put them in there. It's yeah. pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, really uh, it's good. just Master the Kion, which is great. It's just the redeploy. That's always solid. Yep. That's what I want. And they explicitly say that you cannot infiltrate with your redeploy, which is always a question you get asked, and then you're like, well, yeah. no, because you can only infiltrate when you actually first set them up. This just simplifies it and says, no, you have to put them in yep. your deployment zone. And this is Creed's Warlord trait. Yes. Very Ursula thematic. Creed. Ursula Creed. Yes, new Creed. All right, Grand Strategist, every time you spend a command point to use a stratagem on a 5+, plus, you mm -hmm. get it back. Yep. This is Lord Solar Leontis' Warlord trait. I was a little surprised that he only does one he only does one Warlord trait. He, he does enough. He, he, he's great. He but does I, enough stuff. He does not need to do more stuff. But like compared to some of the, you know, you know, like Trajan, who gets two, some of the other characters who get three, I was surprised he only got one. I was expecting him to be a two Warlord trait kind of guy, but I guess he's not quite as destined as Uther. Uther gets two? Uther gets two. Shame. All right. All right. Superior tactical training. When mm -hmm. you select this warlord trait, select one type of orders, uh, regimental prefectus or mechanized, that this warlord does not know. This warlord knows those orders in addition to any others. Meh. It's 
fine, fine. but I, this actually this seems good at small level games and not that great at big level games. Yeah, where you really just don't want to have to take like the Commissar to get the Prefectus one. Yeah, I get that at like 500 points. I, I would actually take that. But as soon as I have a, a, like a full battalion to fill, I'll find someone else. Yeah. Old Grudges. Start of the first battle round, select one enemy unit. Till the end of the battle, Warlord gets the following ability. Old Grudges, Aura. While a friendly platoon or battle tank squadron unit was within six inches of Warlord, each time a model in that friendly unit makes an attack against that enemy unit, add one to the wound roll. That's it's, very good. That's so good. It's so I, good. There are some great Warlord traits this one. I, old Grudges makes me happy. It's not the real wounds always before. I don't know if this is an upgrade or a side grade compared to before. There's I think not it's not a lot of reroll wounds outside. Like, in the book, yeah. so it's not like you can be like, this is better because you can get reroll wounds elsewhere and then this is plus one to wound. I think it's a side grade. I think it is. But like, it was great before and it's still great. And the fact that it's not core locked makes me really happy because it's platoon or squadron. Yep, which battle, means battle tank squadron. Battle tank squadron, but that's okay. Those are the ones that wanted it. <laughs> yeah, I think reroll wounds is just better but old grudges as it existed before was an insane warlord trade. Yeah. And so this one is is very nearly as insane. It's very yep. good. Very Love good. It. It's amazing into like uh, especially actually no this one actually might be better because there's plenty of things out there now that you can't reroll wounds against. Yeah. This is very helpful for that. Yes. Uh, so like like uh, like Votan this Short old. Kings. This is much better into the Short Kings. Yeah. All right, lead by example is the last basic one. Mm -hmm. Warlord can issue orders to its own unit even though you cannot normally select officer units when issuing orders. Whatever. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, there is value to that because like a tank commander being able to order himself is kind of a big deal. But again, it's probably not going to come up The enough. differences between tank commanders and regular battle tanks has, has disappeared basically. Yeah. It's just the order. But then, it's just the order. But then because they can, this is the only way to get it. This is the main, not the only, one of the ways to get a battle tank to uh, benefit from its own, or, own orders. I think this is actually cool. Again, smaller point games like this a lot. Or larger games, I don't think it will come up because I'm going to take no. the other tech can that allows this. How many orders does a tank commander get? One, but it regimentals out to two. So he, he can order himself and, and a guy. take it to someone else. Fine. No, I, I wouldn't want to take this, though. Not a 2K. No. All right, Militarm Tempestus have their own Warlord traits. There's only mm -hmm. three, though. They're all auras. Yep. So, Drill Commander, while a friendly Militarm Tempestus infantry unit is within six inches of this Warlord, instead of following the normal rules for rapid fire weapons, models that unit make double the number of attacks when shooting. So, that means <clears throat> that if you have rapid fire one, no matter uh, if you are within six inches of the Warlord, you just fire two shots. That's honestly. At all times. It's like rapid yeah. fire out to max distance. Because the um, hotshot volley gun is rapid fire, I actually like that a little bit more. But I still don't think I'm going to take enough science for this to matter. I actually think that you probably, if you're running a pure military tempestus army, you, you probably take all three of these. I, I fully agree. It's just that 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 doesn't happen. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> Precision targeting while friendly military tempestus infantry unit is within six inches of this warlord. Each mm -hmm. time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover. That's then, also very good. That is also very good. Well, and then finally, uncompromising prosecution. While a friendly Militarm Tempestus infantry unit is within six inches of this warlord, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack that targets a unit within half range, improve the AP of that attack by one. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's the, the silent warlord traits are all pretty solid, I think. Yeah. It just, uh, they kind of need to be because they're buffing scions, which are a little mediocre in this book. Yeah, and if you're taking enough scions for this to matter, then. You, yeah, you really do need those yeah. traits. So let's go ahead and head into the relics here. We've got uh, the Emperor's Benediction, which is your iconic relic bow pistol for your commissars. It is indeed commissar only. And uh, it is pistol three, 18 inch range, strength four, AP one, damage two. And uh, it ignores lookout, sir. And uh, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. That is, uh, that's not a lot. No, it's pretty bad. Uh, the Tactical Auto Reliquary of Tiberius, uh, one of my old favorites. Just I just like the name, actually. Yeah, it's uh, officer only, the bearer can issue one additional order. That's a little mediocre to me. Yeah. You can just get, there are so many ways to issue orders. Uh, Death Mask of Alanius, uh, infantry model only. Models in the bearer's unit have a 4 and vulnerable save. Notably, it's in the bearer's unit. But this isn't not, yeah. one you can buy sergeants, exactly. but this is most relevant in command squads. Yes. Because command squads are now an officer and his four dudes as a big 
broke your Iron Master style unit, not a command squad and a dude as two separate things. It's not a single single data sheet. Yeah, I definitely would not take this. No, because they've got character protection. They're still gonna die when your opponent really tries to kill them. And yeah. Unless they're Cajun and transhuman. Sure. Uh, <laughs> getting out of and that. minus one to hit from wall of flesh. The Barbican's Key, this one's fun. Infantry only. Uh, once per battle in your movement phase, the bearer can use this relic. If it does so, remove the bearer's unit. This one can be given to sergeants. Yeah, this one's good. <laughs> this one's uh, really good. And set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. And until the end of that turn, you can reroll charge rolls made for the bearer's unit. So it's once a game teleport the bearer's unit. So you have to call your shot a little bit by putting it on a unit. And then they reroll charges afterwards. That's not bad. I think it's quite good. No, the, the charge rolls part. The the teleporter unit mm -hmm. is. I like the reroll really charges. I, I like I like that built in because like I always I always declare a YOLO charge after I've done my nine teleport with the shooting unit, and then I fail it, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't really worth a CP, and then I move on with my life. Yeah, but this you get to reroll. No, I think it's I mm -hmm. think that is pretty good because it dramatically increases your odds of actually yeah. like getting to an objective and contesting it away or mm -hmm. anything like that. Yeah, Kurov Zakila. This one uh, is an old reliable that is uh, still CP manipulation, but very different. Once per battle, after opponent uses a stratagem excluding the command reroll, uh, you can use the relic. If you do, until the end of the battle, the command point cost of that stratagem is increased by one. Yeah. It's Vect that you do have to pay for. Yeah, Vect is good because it costs you nothing and your opponent just randomly loses some CP or a stratagem. If you have to pay one CP mm -hmm. pre-game and use up a relic slot on it, then who's really I think, winning or losing here? Yeah, I think that this relic is perfectly fine, and I think it's okay from a number of relics slot. I think I have enough relics that I could take this. It's just a question of is that one CP that I always spend worth the value that I sometimes get out of it? Yeah, almost certainly not. I would. I think I think it's on the line. I don't think so at all. You have to pay one CP pregame yeah. to after they've used a stratagem, make them pay one CP the second time they use it. Yeah. So the, this is really going to depend on what the problematic matchups are for guard. If we get to a point where I'm playing with guard and I find out that I'm struggling into Kraken Tyranids or into Tau, ah, oh, this is great. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> Strike and fade going to two CP, over and going to two CP are massive. You paid a CP for that, yep. and if they strike and fade twice, they paid a CP. You guys both broke even. Woo! I'm not taking yep. a relic and to break it, even with my opponent after they've already used their strat twice. It's very close-minded, but let's talk about Gatekeeper. <laughs> uh, tank commander equipped with a Lehman Rust battle cannon only. It replaces the battle cannon and has a falling profile. 72 inch range, heavy D3 plus 6, strength 9, AP 3, damage 3, blast, and it's a turret weapon. So it's plus 1 strength and AP on a battle cannon. That is That's good. a significant upgrade to a battle cannon. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's worth a relic slot. Those are the two stats I'd want to change. Is it? I think it's also more shots. Because I think it's. Uh, oh, it's D3 plus 6, not D6 plus 3. Yes. I didn't notice that. Yeah, that is fair. It is more shots. So I do like that. Let me mm -hmm. just double check, make sure I'm not crazy. Uh, Battle Cannon is, that's a Rogaldorn. Yep, you went too far. I always go too far, John. Mm -hmm. Lehman Ross Battle Cannon is D6 plus three. So this is a significantly higher amount of shots. It's eight as opposed to about six and a half on average. That is a much better Battle Cannon. Yeah, yeah, that is actually very It's good. actually not bad. I, I missed that. I, I kind of glazed through D6 plus three and D3 plus six as yeah, the same thing. Yeah, they the thing. exact same. But no, that is a significant change there. Yep. No, that, that's okay. That's actually worth considering. Yeah, I actually really like Gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Relic of Lost Cadia. Cadian model only, because they didn't give it to They don't give no. it to just anybody. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, once per battle in any command phase, the bearer can use this relic. If it does so until the end of the turn, the bearer gains the following ability. Uh, while a friendly Cadian infantry unit within six inches of this model, improve the weapon skill and ballistic skill characteristic of models in that unit by one, mm -hmm. and add one to attacks and leadership characteristic of models in the unit. That is a lot worse than it used to be. Yes. It's still nice. But you don't get it on anything other than Cadian infantry, which yeah. is not all your infantry. No. It's Cadian infantry. Yeah, it's not going to get taken, I think. No, I don't it's think not. It's not going to make the top six CP you can spend here. It's not as good as Karazakila. If it was, right. If it was always active, you would probably take it. Yeah, always active would be a, maybe a little much. I, I don't, maybe. Maybe. But once a battle is like certainly not good enough. Yeah. 
Order of the Bastium Stellaris. Infantry model only each time it attacks me against the bear's unit. A modified wound roll of one through three always fails. Cool. You give this to a... It's the same as the Death Mask of Alenius Pius, honestly. Mm -hmm. like. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You're not going to take it. Probably not. No. Legacy of Caladius. Mm -hmm. It's a chain sword. It replaces the chain sword. It's exactly Teeth of Terra, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. Just... Plus one strength, AP two, damage two, with three additional attacks. I mean, hey, Teeth of Terra used to be pretty good. Teeth of Terra is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, I still really like Teeth of Terra. Yeah. Um, but, but it's going on a guard, man, not a captain or sanguinary priest in my case. Yeah. I mean, it could go on a common, like a guard character, but that's a lot of effort. You can take this on a sergeant. Like, like you see, Caladius, you can. Yeah. But I would still put it on a, on yeah, a regular still put guy. It on a regular guy. Size sigil of sanction. Psycho mm -hmm. model only knows an additional psychic power and manifests an additional psychic power. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Makes a uh, primary psyker uh, much better. Absolutely. Armor of Graf Tashenko. Uh, plus one wound and a two of armor save. Yep. Uh, funny enough, this can go on a, uh, I think on a tank character, because it's just any character. But why? It's just plus one to wound. Um, yeah, there's there's no reason why not. You, but it's, yeah, you, you already have, have a two of a save, so it's not great. Yeah, plus one wound, they go to like from like however many, 13 to like 14 or however many they have. Yeah, they might still be 12. I, I don't know. Be 12. We'll, we'll find out. Laurels of Command. Officer model only once per battle at the start of any phase in your opponent's turn. Bear can issue one order. It knows from the following list as if it were your command phase. Uh, cannot be an order. Mm -hmm. It has already issued this battle round. Fix bayonets. Take cover at all costs. Show them steel. Show them contempt. Remain vigilant and shock and awe. It really sinks in when you see them all lined up that how many of these end with an exclamation mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is a thing. It's so a once per game reactive order that you could have just done in your command phase. Start of a turn in your opponent's, start of a phase in your opponent's turn. No, yeah. They, they all buff your units, and so what that means is your opponent is just going to be like, oh, you're buffing your combat. Well, all right, first of all, I don't care about that. Second yeah. off, none of them buff, like, durability. It's... Some of the, the perfectus ones are pretty interesting, but no, this isn't no. that big a deal. Claw of the Desert Tigers. Yep, so Claw of the Desert Tigers is a Relic Sword, and it replaces a Power Sword or Power Saber, and again, can go on a Sergeant. Most notably, I think you could put this on the, uh, um, the Rough Riders, but yeah. I still think I wouldn't. I uh, bad on a Rough Rider. Yeah, I would, just, I would rather have their damage 3 base attack than a damage 2 Relic. This gives you two additional attacks. Yeah, but like, I'm not paying a CP just for two additional attacks. I think he comes with a Power Saber, and that's it. Yeah, and a Spear. He comes with both. So anyways, um, the Claw of the Desert Tigers is plus two strength, AP three, damage two, and you make two additional attacks. It's a very cool power sword. Yeah. I don't, don't mind it at all. Uh, next up, you've got the Clarion Proclamatus. This is for a command squad issued with a Master Vox only. Uh, each time an officer in that unit issues an order, you can ignore all range restrictions when issuing an order to a Vox caster unit. Vox casters are free now, so taking them is very uh, convenient. So just unlimited range in your command squad. But a command squad only issues one order a turn, so I don't think that you're going to pay a relic just to have your one order a turn be a little longer range. I don't think it matters that Probably much. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but there's interesting ones coming, and that is the Finial of the Nemradesh first. Yeah. This is a uh, relic <laughs> regimental standard for a command oh. squad only. This one's good. Well, a friendly Astro Militarum core is within sections of this model, each uh, of the unit, not even the model, jeez. Each time uh, you make a range attack, you can ignore any uh, or all modifiers so that attacks hit roll. And if, you're, uh, if it gets allocated to an enemy model, uh, the enemy model cannot use any rules to ignore the, the wounds it loses. That seems really good, John, yeah, especially even... since it's going to be on a five model unit with character protection that can string way out and just affect every core unit in your army. Yeah, and for the record, uh, for anyone who's curious now, like, hey, what's core? Uh, core is everyone you'd think it would be, which is like infantry and rough riders, and it's also sentinels, but it's not ogren, bulgren, ratlings, those kind of people. It's, not it's just infantry squads, heavy weapon teams, the seven variants of infantry squads that we have, and sentinels and rough riders. Finial, I remember reading through and being like, oh man, these, these relics are kind of weak sauce. You know, like, they're whatever. They're, they're fine, but they're nothing like, oh my god. And then as soon as you hit Finial, it's like they, they get pretty good. They get pretty good. <laughs> they get pretty good. Uh, you've got a Null Rod on a Tempester Prime or Commissar. Uh, and that is, uh, you can attempt to deny one Psychic Powers if you were a Psyker. And you add one to your Deny the Witch Tests for the Bear. So it's one Deny at plus one to Deny. 
there could be a meta where I take this. I think it's cool. I think it's actually pretty good. My biggest objection is that I don't want a Tempester Prime or a Commissar. That's true. That's, That's my true. biggest objection. But the Null Coat is, it's literally their their trench coat is just like anti-psychic. Yeah. Got a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's, it's good for denying uh, psychic secondaries. That's you the main reason you would take yeah. it, yeah. Uh, the Emperor's Fury is a Relic Plasma Pistol. It's pistol 3 and it doesn't overheat. It's just always strength 8 AP 3 damage too. That's it. It's a Relic Plasma Pistol. It's, and it's much better, but not enough to make me want it. Final one is the Refractor Field Generator. This is a Tempestor Prime only, and it gains an aura ability. While a friendly Militarum Tempestus Infantry is within six inches of this model, they gain a five up and vulnerable save. This is a good relic, a good relic. but you have to run a lot of Scions. If you're running it. Mono Scions, you're taking yeah. that relic and taking all the relics three. and royal traits for Scions are really good. It's just the problem of the data sheets, in my mind. And also how few there are. Yes, yeah, the fact that there's like two. Yeah, you get. One HQ choice, you get one troops choice, and then you get like a transport and like a Valkyrie, I think. Valkyries are just like neutral, they're just auxilious. So they don't get the rules, but they're, they don't hurt. All right, that's it for relics. So we are on to data sheets, and uh, we've got a couple of uh, uh, rules that we've kind of already hinted at, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go through them real quick just yep. to get it over with. Uh, turret weapons, we've already said what they do, but uh, anything with turret weapon, and that'll be in the rules description of a weapon, is plus one to hit, and it's uh, it can shoot out of combat. No yep. problem. So if you have a tank commander mm -hmm. or a Lehman Ross with a battle cannon on the turret, and you have like three heavy bolters, and it's in combat, heavy bolters have to shoot into that combat. Turret weapon can go anywhere. And will be plus Does one Does it hit. still have the minus one to hit for being in combat? That's the thing. Uh, no, that's only when you shoot into combat. It's only when you shoot into the combat you're engaged in? Correct. Okay. So you'll, you'll ignore that. And you're still able to fire your blast weapons, even though you are engaged. Correct. You just yeah. can't fire them into your own combat. You can still fire them in general. Yes. Uh, regimental tactics is... Can you uh, shoot into another combat with your combat guy? With your guy that's in combat? Uh, no. no. I mean with the strats. No, because that's a uh, model's not engaged in range. Uh, regimental Tactics is sneakily hidden on the datasheet page because it's a special rule that's in everyone's datasheet, but this is the only pure buff for being pure guard besides the secondaries. Yes. And this is if every, good, if every model from your army, excluding agents and unaligned, has extra term, then each time you issue a regimental or prefectus uh, order, then you can select one or more friendly platoon units within six inches of that unit, the one that you ordered, and they also receive the same order. So pick order a unit, Pick a unit within six inches of the target, and they also get the same order that you just picked. Yep, and it's the same bullet point over again, but for mechanized orders. Exactly that. Yep. So you, yeah, it's just regimental perfectus go to platoon, and then mechanized gets to, to sprout squadron. out to squadron. Yep. This and is the only. Pr uh, it's the only pure buff. The only in the pure book. buff feels weird. Yeah, I like. It's I totally feel ignorable. Like it, it's very ignorable. But it's nice. If you're going pure guard, you're going for the secondaries, I think. Yeah. And then, oh look, I and have regimental also tactics the CP as well. if I didn't want a second detachment anyway. Yeah, I don't think guard like need an ally detachment yeah. or anything. Uh, voice of command is just uh, the rule that officers have that lets them give orders. Uh, there are three types of orders. There's regimental orders, which are generic, like a uh, commandant or a command squad knows regimental orders. There's perfectus orders. That's what commissars know. And then there's mechanized orders. You can guess who knows those ones. It's tanks. Uh, and each uh, unit, kind of like a psyker, will say how many it can order and what tree it knows from. But it's all very logical. Most little guys issue one. A tank commander issues one. Uh, like a commandant issues two. And then a named character might issue three. Yeah, that's about it. Um, each time an officer, officer issues an order, just select an order it knows. It can be an order that was already issued, so you can uh, do fixed bayonets, fixed bayonets, fixed bayonets. Uh, no problem. But the same officer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. E the same officer cannot attempt to issue the same order more than once in the battlefield. So it can be an order that someone else did. So I could have a. Creed issue fixed bayonets and then take aim. And then I could have Leontis issue fixed bayonets and take aim, but I couldn't have Creed issue bayonets, bayonets, bayonets. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you just select a target. For a regimental or perfectus unit order, it is a platoon unit within six. If you're doing a mechanized order, it is a squadron unit within 12. So perfectus is six to platoon, which is basically just your infantry and cavalry. And a squadron is 12 inches to basically your vehicles. Okay. Um, can only be affected by one order at a time, and if you're being uh, uh, affected by multiple, you take the last, the last one. Yeah, so if you get one issued to you and you already have one, you just the new one is the one you have, the old one you lose it. Yep. 
Um, officers can issue orders in your command phase, bullet points, etc. Finally, the last uh, rule here is disembarking officers which is uh, in your movement phase, an officer uh, disembarks from a transport. After that officer's unit has been set up, it can issue orders as if it's your command phase. However, when doing so, you don't use the regimental tactics ability. Um, even if every uh, model from your army has extra military keyword, and an officer cannot issue orders in this way when disembarks from a destroyed transport. So if you are in a transport, you do lose your command phase. But as soon as you get out, you can issue the orders. You just don't get to chain them. You just issue your orders. Yeah, so this, is ba this helps when you have a unit that's in a transport. Yep. They go get out, and then you have an officer that goes and gets out of the transport and, and orders the unit that just got out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where that matters the most, I think. All right, uh, we've got three pages of orders. Want to start us off? I saw what you checked. All right, regimental orders. First rank fire, second rank fire. Mm -hmm. Until the end of your next shooting phase, change the type of all las guns and hot shot las guns to heavy three. Yep. That's pretty solid. Solid, yeah. Matters a lot of hot shots, I think. Yeah, for sure. Take aim until the end of your next shooting phase. Each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack, add one to the hit roll and improve the AP by one. That's a really good buff. Just generically yeah. strong. Fix bayonets until the end of the next fight phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to that attack's hit roll and improve the armor penetration char uh, characteristic of that attack by one. Mm -hmm. So in combat, it's just take aim, but you know, in combat. Mm -hmm. Take cover until the start of your next command phase. Each time an attack is allocated to a model in this unit, they receive light cover against that attack. If they already have it, they receive dense. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Move, move, move. Uh, until the end of your next movement phase, if the unit makes a normal move, add two to the move characteristic of the models in the unit. Until the end of your next movement phase that this unit advances, you add six to their movement characteristic. So basically, plus eight if you advance because you, uh, mm -hmm. oh, makes, you know, if you make a normal move, plus two to move. If they advance, you auto six it. So you don't yep. combine the two. Yeah, still, I like move, move just to get a little faster. Suppression fire. The first time this unit is selected to shoot, you can select one enemy infantry unit that's visible to it. And if you do so, models in the unit can only make attacks against that enemy unit this phase, mm -hmm. and only if that enemy unit is an eligible target. If this attack scores five or more hits, then until the end of your opponent's next turn, that enemy unit is suppressed, and they get minus one to hit. So my absolute favorite thing here is uh, move, move, move. You could command phase, tell someone to move, move, move. Then that unit moves eight inches. Then you get out of a transport and issue them an order, and then they, they lose move, 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 and they get the new order. Mm -hmm. Right? You can just do that? Yep. Yeah, you just can. Yeah. yeah. Get some sneaky uh, transport stuff out of there to basically get two orders. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Or you could do it to advance and shoot, or to advance the full six, and then you could later use an order that lets them advance and shoot if you had one of those on the next page. Who could have guessed? Yes. Yes. Weird. Perfectus orders. These are your commissar orders, but also you can get them in a couple of other places. Namely, Leontis knows them as well. Yes. Which means that you don't want to come, so you want Leontis. Uh, so these are really good. Uh, forwards for the Emperor. Until the end of your next shooting phase, when this unit is selected to shoot, if it made a normal move or advanced, cancels out of the main stationary. Look at that. Almost like you could just like move, 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 then get a commissar out of a transport and be like, don't worry, boys, you're still shooting. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. really cool. I like that little combo. That, that is pretty cute. Yeah. Uh, duty and honor. Until the start of your next command phase, this unit can still perform actions in a turn in which it fell back or advanced, and it can shoot without any actions it is performing failing. That's pretty good. That's, that's useful to have. Uh, get back in the fight. Until the start of your next command phase, the unit is eligible to shoot or charge, but not both, in a turn in which it fell back. So fall back and shoot, excellent value. Uh, at all costs, uh, this unit gains the objective secured ability, and if it already has it, it counts as an additional model. So that's again, perfect this uh, it orders basically always go on infantry. Yeah. Um, show them steel, show them contempt. This, I mean, just for the names, this one's good. Plus one leadership. And if you uh, lose a uh, wound as a result of a mortal on a five up, you do not. The next one is the most hilarious one. The next one is the, the most hilarious one. Remain vigilant. You tell those boys to watch out, and they will. <laughs> Until the start of your next command phase, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of this unit. Nice! Uh, brutal. <laughs> if an enemy unit declares a charge against this unit, and it is uh, not within engagement range of any units, it can hold steady to overwatch on fives, even if it's not in area terrain. <laughs> Demons hate this one weird trick. Yeah, you do not need to use Remain Vigilant very often. But when you do, because it's just there, you yeah. know? It's not, it's not like if you, you don't write it down in your list, you're not using it. It's just 
uh, officers know all the orders of their tree. They don't know two orders from their tree, like a psyker. They know them all, and they auto pass them. And so if I find out that someone put flamers of Zinch in reserves, they're not shooting the turn they come in. No questions asked, they're not shooting. Yep, the first, the front unit got Leontis's remain vigilant. Uh, fortunately, yep. there are demons out there, Leontis can't go. You three units remain vigilant. Yeah, but he can, he can do it too with, uh, with the, the regimental tactics. Oh yeah, because yeah, so just one the front it, two, it, yeah, just kicks it to the next one. Like, yeah, no problem. We'll be vigilant, boss. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it is so brutal because the ten man squads will just string out, and your opponent goes, oh, yeah. It's just like and yeah, it's not like yeah. What are you gonna like do about that? Have shooting other than that. <laughs> yeah. So like, what are they gonna do? <laughs> they can't declare charges on those units either. So yeah, you're just, just there twelve next inches away. Get ordered again. 100% they are. Yeah, then they're gonna, yeah. yeah, screw that. Uh. Yeah, deep strike and shooting range, go ahead. Ah. <laughs> it's, ju it's just telling demons not to bother deep striking. Yeah, they start so, Yeah, just like, it's like, get out of here, what are you gonna do? But, the, but the that's so valuable. You don't have to spend anything on no, it. No, it it's just, it's just there. Have to... I feel like I'm never even gonna use Remain Vigilant. I'm just gonna be like, hey, um, oh, yeah. be aware of Remain Vigilant. And they're gonna be like, oh no, I'm like, yeah. No, you're gonna use Remain Vigilant and it's gonna mess some people up. But I feel like, like once I tell them that it exists, who's gonna go in reserves? Like who? I feel like it's still gonna happen. Oh my god! People are gonna be like, all right, all right. So yeah, maybe well, he'll mess have, up his screens. You're gonna have a lot of a lot of questions like, okay, but I'll just use my warp locus and get around. And you're like, that's not how that works. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you can come in within six of your dude, more than twelve for me, no problem. Yeah, that's that is brutal. <laughs> reserves. Just against guard in general, might as well not. Just might yeah, not. yeah. Just don't take reserves don't against guard. Up. Wolf. Yeah, I saw you check to make sure you. Uh, it's you actually not what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Mechanized orders. Pound mm -hmm. them to dust until the end of your next shooting phase. Each time this unit is selected to shoot, for the purposes of determining how many attacks are made with blast weapons, double the number of models in the target unit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, it's because you find a six man and you're like, boy, you're looking submissive and blastable today. It would be real rough if you were to just take 12 hits right now. <laughs> just like, ugh. Full throttle until the end of your next movement phase. Add two inches to the move characteristic models in this unit. Until the end of your next shooting phase, when this model is selected to shoot, if it advanced during your previous mm -hmm. movement phase, then it counts as remaining stationary. Yep. That's great. It's pretty good. You yep. move two extra inches and can advance and shoot. Lots of good options here. Yeah, you, you go real fast. Yeah. Gunners kill on sight until the end of your next shooting phase. Each time a mall in that unit makes a ranged attack, where you'll hit rolls of one. Always solid. It's still good. Blitz them at the until the end of your next charge phase. Add one to charge rolls, and if mm. this unit makes a charge move this turn, select one enemy unit within the engagement range of this unit and roll a d6. Adding one if they have dozer blades on a four plus, they take d3. Mm. Yeah. You're probably not going to come up very often. Especially since you can't combo with shock and awe, which is until the end of your next command phase, the unit gains objective secured. Ah, there you go. That's how you do it's it. Pretty good. It's pretty good. That's good. That's good. Uh, and it's really good in the vehicles count as five models one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pinning it fire. In your next shooting phase, the first time this unit is selected <sighs> to shoot, select one enemy infantry and it's visible mm. to it. If you mm. do so, you have to shoot it and only it. And if you score five or more hits until the end of your next turn, that enemy unit is pinned minus two move. Yeah, which does not say it doesn't stack with other minus two. Well, like mental shackles. Says. Yeah, it'd be a shame if your turner unit moved an inch. Yes. Minus one solitary inch. Minus two advanced, though, which means if you roll the one, I'm choosing the one inch you go. It's a negative one. I'm, I'm kidding. That would be funny, though. Yeah, it would be funny. Uh, no, but funny enough, you can't actually subtract your roll below one, so they'll always get one on their advance, but like, woof, who cares? So they advance to go two inches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, the boy, here you go. All right. I have the points. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we're into the data sheets now. We are on the home stretch, unfortunately. Or fortunately, there's a lot of data sheets. Uh, some of them we will give a lot of coverage to. Like, uh, like this one. Like Lord Solar Leontis. Like this one. Some of them we will probably say, yeah, this is like an infantry squad, but has one rule, and then we'll move on with our lives. Uh, but Lord Solar Leontis is one of a kind. As a matter of fact, he is your supreme commander, and he rides a golden horse. And uh, he's pretty be, cool. The horse can be whatever color you want. That is true. Yeah, it will actually come gray. Probably. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Lord Solar Leontis. He moves. He does a bunch. He does a bunch. Uh, stat line, real quick. He moves 10, 12. 
He's weapon skill plus six skill two, strength six, only tough four, eight wounds, six attacks, leadership ten, three up armor. Weird to me that Lord Solar Leontus has a higher leadership than Morven Vol, since they're both High Lords of Terror, but we're just gonna move past that one. It is weird to me also that he's strength six and not his weapon is plus two strength. That is also weird. That's super weird to yeah, me. Yeah, actually I guess he's not a High Lord of Terror. He's just Lord Solar. No, Lord just. Solar, I believe, is uh, no, he is um He's Lord of the, the Lord Solar is one of the High Lords. I looked it up. Oh, okay, cool. Lord Solar is the guy in charge of the Solar Force. Weird, he didn't have High Lord as a keyword. Not that it ever matters. Anyway, he does voice of command and regimental tactics, blah. Uh, he issues three orders, and he can do any of the orders. He can do mechanized, perfectus, regiment. He does them all. Uh, and in addition to that, he uh, can be, let's see, in addition to the normal units that can be selected uh, for regimental perfectus orders, uh, they can issue to friendly infantry officers and military auxiliary units. And in addition to the mechanized, he can do it to vehicle officers and super heavies. So you normally can't order super heavies, but he can. You normally can't order a tank commander, but he can. Normally can't do infantry officers, but he can. You normally can't order auxilia. But so Lord Solar can, which is great for Ogren and Bulgren because those boys love orders and they do not get them often. Yeah, they love plus one to hit, plus one AP in combat. Yeah, like the fixed bayonets on, on Bulgren. Big success. You walk, you, you walk up to a Bulgren who has a maul, like just a big electric maul thing. You're like, fix bayonets. And they're like, okay, fix the bayonet on top of their maul and go hammers. You know that I'm going to like model my like Bulgren with like bayonets jammed into their... Into like the into, shield or, or into the... No, it, into like the slab shield probably and yeah. then also into the, the mall. Um, so he has an artificer refractor helm for a four-up invuln and halves damage. That's pretty cool. Uh, it can be hard to kill. Uh, after your opponent has uh, revealed their secondary objectives or their agendas for the battle, uh, if your armor contains this model, you can choose to either change one of your secondaries or agendas if you're doing those, and if you decide not to, you just gain a command point. That 90 per, 95% of the time is just going to be a gain a command point, but there are times where you will switch your, your secondary. Yeah. It's a nice, and it's also fun to tell your opponent, but often you're going to take that CP. But this is just good. Yeah, so the times when switching your uh, secondaries matter are, I mean, like it's, it's very simple. You pick a kill secondary, your opponent picks a kill secondary, and you go, nope, and you just switch it to something else, and then they have to run at you or get a zero on their kill secondary. Love that. That happened, that'll happen like all the time, actually. Yeah. Um, but his weapons? Mm -hmm. Yep, he has uh, Saul's Righteous Gaze, which is a, uh, a pistol. Theoretically, might be a relic. Might, might be, we'll ask John Shaves. Uh, but it's pistol two, 12 inch, strength eight, AP three, damage three. It's a good pistol, honestly, and he's ballistic skill two. Uh, and then he carries Conquest, which is a sword, and it's a uh, melee user, so strength 6, AP 3, damage 2. And they, it makes him a perfectly fine puncher, but nothing to write home about, because no. he doesn't inherently reroll anything. Right, he just hits on 2, strength 6, AP 3, 2, yeah, damage 6 attacks. Perfectly fine. He is regimental, so he does get traits of whatever you picked, and he has, uh, yes, two more special rolls. We're not done yet. He is uh, both a captain and lieutenant, effectively, because he's a 6 inch over a ones to hit and wound for core. Again, that's basically infantry, rough riders, and sentinels. Which is just not a thing that really exists in in guard? Well, I think they're, I, I, I have all three of those on my list. No, 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 not, not the core. I mean the Captain Lieutenant Ors. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Um, Lieutenant Ors come off of banners and Captain Ors come off of uh, officers. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But he does both. Here's the big thing. In your command phase, you can select one friendly Astro Militarum core, Astro Militarum character, or Astro Militarum battle tank unit within six inches. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit roll. If the, and if that unit is core, you can also reroll wounds. So he's a chapter master for battle tanks and characters, or it's full old, re -roll old school rerolls and everything to a core unit. That's good. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. Or Solar Leontis, Leontis does not play. That boy? He's 170, which is a he's, good bargain, I think. He's very, very, very good. I think Lord Solar is just slamming his way into my list. He also has um, the Warlord trait of uh, uh, Grand Strategist, which perfectly fine, like CP regen. Uh, it's not anything crazy, but I will probably take it just because I like the strats here. It's good that his Warlord trait is good because he has to be your Warlord. Yes. And so what that means is you're not forced to only take two Warlord traits because you're not taking his. Mm -hmm. His is good. means you still get access to all three. Right on. You want to cover right. Creed and the Castellan? Ursula Creed. Mm -hmm. Move six. Weapon skill, skill three. Strength, toughness, three. 
5 wounds, 5 attacks, so you ship 9, 4 up save. She has Duty and Vengeance, which is a 12 inch pistol, 4 strength, 5 AP, 3 damage, 2 gun, and a power sword, which is exactly the same as a power sword. She has, uh, she knows regimental orders, and she can issue up to three, so no yep. effect disorders, just regimental. Each time the model issues an order until the starting next command phase, each time the model in that unit makes a ranged attack, plus one strength for that attack. Note this ability only affects the original target and not their splash target from regimental tactics. Indeed. Uh, refractor field, they get five up invuln. While it's on the battlefield, uh, you can use command, uh, command reroll stratagem twice per phase instead of only once, which does come up sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then senior officer, every time on the unit, uh, core unit within six inches makes an attack reroll, hits a one. Yep, and she's obviously Cadian keyword, so she'll give out Cadian buffs. Yep, how many points is she? 80. 80. She's pretty cheap. Yep. She's pretty cheap. She's, for reference, she's 30 points more than the next data sheet because she's just an upgraded Cadian officer, and the regular Cadian officer is 50. You want to hit him? Yeah. Cadian Castellan uh, mm -hmm. moves move six, weapon skill, blitz skill, strength, and toughness of three. Five wounds, four attacks, so ship nine, five up save. Gets a last pistol and a chain sword, which you can swap out for a bolt gun, power fist, power sword, bolt pistol, or plasma pistol. Mm -hmm. uh, gets a five up invuln, just like Ursula Creed, and uh, has the reroll hit rolls of one. Honestly, I, I think that Cadian Castellan, I mean, 50 points, I would just mother, much rather take him over Creed. Still has access because he's a uh, Cadian character. Still gets mm -hmm. access to give vengeance for Cadian yeah. to everybody, same well, as Creed. I like, I think 30 points for an extra order and the plus one strength. It really, the plus one strength is the main draw of Creed. True, true. But plus one strength only goes to infantry. It goes to platoon, platoon, which could be the field artillery guns. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right. All right. Yeah, right on back to you. Yep. So um, we've got ourselves next up the tank commander. The tank commander is the same stat line as before. Oh, they're Mostly, they are 13 wounds, 6 attacks instead of 3, and they are ballistic skill 4. Yes. So... One worse ballistic skill, one better wound, more attacks in combat. They're still open skills. Yeah, they're still the same movement as before of degrading 10 and 8, 6. Uh, there are two up save baked in. A tank commander is only leadership 7, which boggles the mind. Because, like, a, a castellan is 9, which is an officer on foot. But as soon as he gets in a tank, he's just not feel. I would feel the more... The castellan is a specific Cadian unit, and they're supposed yeah, to... Yeah, I get it. But, like, a platoon commander is leadership 8. How is a tank commander leadership 7? I am more brave when I'm inside a car than outside. That's true. That's like, imagine a tank with sponsons and guns. Anyways. You don't have uh, hiking trail rage. The leadership road rage. Yeah, yeah. The, the leadership seven is not too big a deal. Uh, you can take a whole bunch of guns, and we should actually probably cover uh, them now. He gives out his, if you're in Board of Soldiers, he gives out his leadership, right? Uh, to platoon. Yeah, leadership seven. He gives out leadership seven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are going to go over the guns now, I think, just to save it for uh, for the Lehman Rust, because it does matter. Uh, but we're also going to go over some of the war gear that's going to be the same on everyone. So there's Dozer Blade and Armored Tracks. Dozer Blade is ignore any or all modifiers to its move characteristic, advance rolls, and charge rolls. So just, that's cool, but not that relevant. Uh, armored Tracks is you gain the Armored Keyword, which is relevant towards a couple of stratagems, and you essentially get all, all is Dust, which is plus one save against damage one attacks that are allocated to you. Not bad. Remember that this could theoretically stack with the minus one damage to turn you into plus one save against damage two, which could actually be really useful. Yeah. How many points is that? Uh, so it's 160 base. Uh, it's It explodes like normal, and it does one mechanized tank order. And 160 base means it's barely more than a Lehman Russ. Uh, tank commander is 160, and a Lehman Russ is, I believe, 150. So it's 10 points more to issue an order. Well, the, the hull-mounted weapon is going to cost you as well. Uh, it, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's, uh, it's a character, it's officer, it's battle tank, it has all the keywords you'd expect, it's regimental. Let's talk about the main guns. I meant the, the upgrades are how many points for dozer blade and armor Oh, I'm tracks? sorry. The dozer blade and armor tracks are five points each. Okay. And then... Um, Basically, every single upgrade other than a plasma can and multi melt is five points. Uh, you also have to pay for your whole heavy bolter, which yeah. is five points. So you start at 165. Yeah, but a whole mounted las cannon is also five points. So you're just, your whole, you're 165 and your whole weapon's built in. And then it's five points for heavy bolter, 10 for a plasma cannon, and 15 for a multi melt on the, on the, uh, on the sides. And then all of the turret weapons are the same cost, every single one. So no 240 point. Tank commanders or anything. Yeah, no, it's you with a tank case, you can get them pretty close to 200. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, so Demolisher Cannon is 24 inches, heavy D6, strength 10, AP3, damage D3, blast turret weapon. Damage D3 plus 3. D, D3 plus 3, sorry. Yeah, that's 
It's that. So it's the same as before, but better damage. You no longer double tap. So arguably, I think this is worse than it was before. Oh, yeah. Um, the Eradicator Nova Cannon is D3 plus 6, 36 inch range. So it's a very consistent number of shots. At 6, minus 2 damage 2, blast turret weapons, and you ignore light cover. I think I would rather just have something with more AP and yeah. give light cover and call it a day. Uh, Executioner Plasma Cannon, this in my mind is the standout for a non relic weapon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D6 plus 3, strength 7, 4, 2, blast turret weapon, and then if you overcharge, it's D6 plus 3, 8, 4, 3, blast turret weapon, and a non modified hit roll of 1 turns into 1 mortal wound. And it's each time. So it's not, it is each time, yes. If you roll 3 ones, you're taking 3 mortal wounds. Still, I think that's don't, really don't good because you can, uh, if you, uh, what is it, Gunner's Kill on Sight is real ones to hit. But you can't issue that to yourself. Uh, no, but you can have uh, Leontis just. Tell just you. hand it to Just give it to you. Yeah, just and it bounces to the guy next to it. I mean, it's honestly, awesome. if you're taking Leontis, you're probably just taking two battle tanks. Yep. So they can each get the same order and just be like, go! And then. <laughs> Love that for me. Um, the Exterminator Autocannon is six shots, 48 inch. Uh, strength 8 AP, 2 damage, 2, turret weapon. That's not that exciting to me. Yeah, these weapons are going to repeat for the actual Lehman Russ. Yeah, it's this exact same. Exactly. So we're going to only do this once. Uh, the Battle Cannon is D6 plus 3, strength 8 AP, 2 damage, 3, blast turret weapon, uh, 72 inch range still. The Punisher Gatling Cannon is 20 shots at 6 minus 1, 1. A great combo with Ignore's cover. Yeah, the Punisher Gatling Cannon is still pretty cool. You won't do that though, you'll probably give that yep. to a Rogal Dorn if I had to get Yeah, you really are. Yeah. Finally, you have the Vanquisher Battle Cannon, which is 72 inch, heavy 1, strength 14, AP 5, damage D3 plus 6, and uh, it. Uh, it ignores invulns, and you take D3 mortals. It's a slightly worse railgun. Yeah, it's AP5 instead of AP6. Is a railgun strength 12 or 14? Railgun's 14. Okay. Um, and a railgun does three mortal wounds. when you And this does D3. Roll. This does D3. Uh, also, the tank commander doesn't have inherent rerolls. Uh, yeah, you would have to take the... Um, the trait where you reroll your hit roll. Which you could do, but the fact that you don't have just a built in reroll to hit reroll the wound makes this feel much worse than a railgun. Yeah, and railguns, hammerheads are not that good. Like, honestly, yep. they're, they feel great when your opponent rolls nothing, but. Yeah, they're terrifying to play against. Yeah, but, but. as the person who played Tao to WTC for Team America, long strike, great. Hammerheads, less great. And a lot of that is because they're not reliable. And if you take a worse railgun on a more expensive chassis that doesn't fly, it does feel a lot worse. The AP6 on a railgun actually matters quite a bit mm -hmm. because then Armor of Contempt, you get no save on a lot of stuff. Because yeah. Armor of Contempt plus cover, all of a sudden this thing's functionally AP3. And if you have a two up, they have a five up to just be like, nope, didn't happen. Yeah, so you're probably not going to take the Vanquisher Cannon. In my mind, the Executioner is the best. But I could see a solid argument for Gatekeeper if you took the Battle Cannon. I like Gatekeeper. Actually. Gatekeeper, the number of shots thing actually is like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. But unupgraded, I feel it's the Executioner. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I could see a Punisher if you gave it Ignore's cover. Yep. Uh, the Platoon Command Squad, if you want to cover it. Sure. Uh, again, this uh, has some things that are going to get repeated. Okay, so you have four veteran guardsmen. This is your only way to get vets in your army, and they don't do anything special. Now, the weapon skill four now. Yeah, the weapon skill four, but the skill It's a little uh, disappointing. So four veterans, you get a, you have access to a veteran heavy weapon team, and you get a platoon commander who has four wounds. Mm -hmm. Platoon commander, at almost six, platoon commander's weapon skill plus skill three, the other ones are four. Everyone's strength and toughness three, veteran guardsmen are one wound, uh, heavy weapon team is two, and the platoon commander is four. They have a various, variable number of attacks, whatever. Uh, leadership seven or eight on the platoon commander, five up save. Okay. Yep. Uh, you have to replace two veteran guardsmen in order to gain a veteran heavy weapons nope, team. As you'd expect. Yep. Uh, so they're equipped with various LAS weapons, LAS pistols, and uh, all of that. And mm -hmm. then the heavy weapon team starts with a heavy bolter. You can upgrade one guy with master with a Vox caster, which makes him uh, upgrade them to be a master Vox, which they gain Vox caster keyword. And every time your officer issues an order, you increase the range in which that order can be issued to 24 inches, but only if you select a Vox caster unit to issue that order too. It still splashes, so you Vox caster to Vox caster, and then that one still splashes out six to somebody next to it. Exactly. That's pretty good. Medipack, the bear gains the medic keyword, which lets you one CP resurrect the three guys, except for the, the commander. Uh, each time a model in this unit would lose a wound, on a five plus they don't. Yeah. It's not bad. 
It's a small squad, but still cool. It's not as good a uh, medipack, I think, as on the... Uh, the Votan, like, the, ignore failed save? No, no, no. I was talking about the, oh, like, the, the Death Core. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Which it is, is funny because I would rather have the the medipack of the Command Squad on the Krieg unit, and I'd rather have the Krieg unit on the Command Squad. Yeah. But, I, I would take a 5 of Feel No Pain if I could. Oh, on. For, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Regimental Standard, which uh, gains the standard keyword and the following ability. Uh, while friendly core units within six inches, each time they make an attack, we roll wound rolls of one. The Platoon Command Squad is 75 points, and every upgrade is free except mm -hmm. for Plasma Pistol and Power Fist. There's a lot of upgrades. So everything's free except for Plasma Pistol Power Fist. Yep. You can just upgrade with Master Vox Medipack Regimental Standard. All that's just built in. All that's just built in. Heavy Weapon Team uh, can be replaced with Auto Cannon, Last Cannon, Missile Launcher, and Mortar. Mm -hmm. um, they can Platoon Commander can take solid the melee weapons. Yeah. The Last Pistol can be replaced. Uh, and then Last Gun or Chainsaw can be replaced with Master Vox Medipack Regimental Standard, etc. Yeah. And then any number of the veteran guardsmen have their Last Gun replaced with a special weapon. Uh, although you can't take more than one sniper rifle. Um, oh, no, no, that's the end of the entire thing. You can't select more than one of the same weapon. So you can take one guy with a flamer, one guy with a grenade launcher, one guy with a heavy flamer, one guy with a meltagon, you know, etc. You know, there's only four of them, but you can do that. Yeah. Um, or you can replace them with a chainsaw if you want to try and make them a combat unit, which mm -hmm. I would not. Although, um, no. they would go up to four, three attacks with a chainsaw. You can plus one to hit, no. plus one AP, you can no. plus one strength. Still no. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can make a, mm -hmm. a platoon command squad with a bunch of yep. uh, special weapons, but because they come in a box set with only one of each weapon, they don't want you to double up on them. Really don't. So that means the unit as a special weapon team is going to be not great. Yeah, that's okay. Next up is the Caden command squad. Uh, their stats are guardsman stats. Yep, same as you'd expect. Yep. Uh, they This one is slightly different on the war gear in that it, you can't take a heavy weapon. They have the keyword Cadian. Uh, you don't have any special rules that distinct them. It's really just the keyword and the war gear choices. But the war gear choices are largely the same, and it's the same points cost. So if you don't want the heavy weapon, it might as well just be Cadian keyword. Yes. Um, and uh, they come with uh, one of all the things you'd expect, one standard, one medipack, one master vox, and uh, uh, one guy with a chain sword, and then you can replace either your regimental standard or your chain sword with a special weapon. But again, you can't double up on a special weapon. So I yeah. think you just replace the chain sword with a special weapon, and you call it a day. Yeah, the one guy. With yeah, the I'd sword. rather have a special weapon than a chain sword. That's 100%. all I got. Yeah. Um, yep. You can take power fists and power and all of the upgrades you'd expect. You can even take two combat weapons because you can replace your chain sword with a power fist and then take a power fist on the officer. That's fine. You're is not this, going to. Is it the same price point? 75 points? Yep, 75 points. And it's the same thing where you pay for exactly the plasma pistol and the power fist. Oh, so it's just a better platoon command you, squad if you're not taking the heavy weapon. Yeah, you choose. Basically, platoon command squads are identical. And you choose whether or not you want to have a grab bag of special weapons and a heavy weapon, or if you want the Cadian keyword and to keep your off your uh, Vox and uh, med pack. Personally? That's it. Personally, I like the Cadian Command Squad. I don't yeah, like just to get the much. keyword. The, key, the heavy weapon, it's cool to have one LAS cannon that can't be targeted, but like I don't care that much. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, Iron Hand Strachan. Yeah, this guy's my boy. I used to run him a bunch. Absolutely. Whoa, I used to run him a bunch. Okay, well, okay. Uh, Iron Hand Strachan. Move 6, Weapon Skill 2, Ballistic Skill 3, Strength 6, which actually makes sense on him, uh, Toughness 4, 5 Wounds, 6 Attacks, Leadership 9, 3 Up Save, he has an auto shotgun, which is three shots at strength at, at range twelve, strength four, AP mm -hmm. zero, two damage. Fine, uh, and a bionic arm with devil's claw, which is uh, strength user, AP three, damage two. So he is exactly the same in, con uh, in combat as Leontis. Yep. If you take his warlord trait, it is the one where he hits harder. Sixes are Tesla. It is genuinely good. Plus one to wound. Yeah, it's real good. Yeah. Uh, he is a senior officer, so reroll hit rolls a one. Every time he makes a melee attack, it's a monster. You can reroll wounds. He has a four up mm -hmm. invulnerable. And then every time he issues an order to a unit until the start of your next command phase, uh, every time they make a melee attack against anything that's not a vehicle, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. Uh, I think that's actually really good. Yeah, he's he's not that expensive. He's uh, he does he does two orders like a normal like a commandant. Um, he's uh, seventy five, right? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, where is he? Yeah, he's seventy-five. So twenty-five more than a Castellan for some niche special rules and much better combat and uh, a much little bit better durability too. Yeah, he's also yeah, he's got a better stat line. 
Um, I think he is just worth the points over a Castellan as long as you didn't want relics and warlock traits on him. Yeah, he is a three plus save too. Yeah, no, he is he is a much upgraded commandant. Yeah. I hate that I have to say commandant instead of company commander, but commandant. He's just a better commandant. Yep. Primaris Psyker, mm -hmm. um, basically the whole stat line you'd expect. Uh, yeah, he's a four wounded guy with a five up save. Yep. He hits on threes with his Lias pistol and his force stave, which is exactly the same as every other force stave. Uh, this model manifests two and can deny one, and he mm -hmm. knows two powers. Yep, he's a bargain. Uh, how many points is he? He's like not that many, right? Is he that 50 is or 60? A great question. He is 60, which 60. is a, an absolute steal. Yeah, he is perfectly good for 60 points, no objections. Uh, is he? How, how cheap were uh, Malefic Lords back in the day? Were they 40? They were like 30 or 40. I think they were 40. Yeah, they were. They were cheap. But Premier Psyker is not that far from them. No, no, 60 points for a support caster is very good. But he doesn't also, do anything else, and that's okay. No, he can also cast Smite and a support power, or Smite and the other man, more I, I mean, power like, he 60. just does psychics. Like, yeah, he, he doesn't does do psychics. anything besides psychic powers. <laughs> but you could, I could definitely consider taking a couple Premier Psykers and just having them be Smite bots. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I'm doing Goss Ghosts. I've read um, almost sure, all I, I, Sure, go ahead. <laughs> like... Almost every single Gaunt I I've read. fully believe you. Uh, all right. They all, so we've got Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt, mm -hmm. Colm Corbeck, Elam Ron, Plain Larkin, mm -hmm. Try Again Bragg, and Owen McCall. Mm -hmm. One of each of those in there. Those it's are six like man the big squad. ones. Try Again, unfortunately. Um, well, no spoilers, but. Uh, hey, does he try again? Not for long. <laughs> oh. Spoilers. <laughs> No, he, he he does for quite a bit, but Koo, uh, I hate Koo. Koo's terrible. Okay. Um, all right, so they're a mix of weapon skill and ballistic skills. Some of them are two, some of them are three. Bragg hits on fives in shooting. Good for him. He's the one with the heavy weapon. All right, they are all strength and toughness three, except Bragg, who's strength four, because he's a big boy. Uh Gaunt and Corbeck are four wounds. Ron is three. Everyone else is two. And then they're a mix of three, two, four attacks. Oh, McColl is four, which makes sense. All right, leaderships. Uh, Gaunt is nine. Everyone else is some flavor of eight and seven, although Larkin is six because he's a bit of a coward. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone has a five up save. Gaunt has a four plus. All right. Uh, they have a lot of different weapons. Yeah, everyone has their own special snowflake. Uh, weapons, right? Gaunt doesn't have uh, the power sword of Hieronymo Sondar that he gets in book three. Oh, uh, it's a pity. He just has a chain sword. He just has Gaunt's chain sword. Uh, all right, so I guess this is like at the start of the books. All right, auto cannon. So that's Bragg gets an auto cannon, bolt pistols. Uh, Colm Corbeck has a hot shot Laz carbine. That's just three shots. It's assault three. Uh, mm -hmm. Regular Laz carbine, which is not great. Larkin's long Laz is 36 inch heavy one, strength five, AP two, damage three. And each time you select a target for this weapon, you can ignore the Lookout Sir rule. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, a modified wound roll of six, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to any normal damage. Solid. Yeah, he's, he's a good sniper. He's actually a really good sniper. Uh, Gaunt's Chainsword is an extra D3 extra attacks at strength user, which is three, AP1 damage two. It's you a know, better Chainsword. He kills a Chaos Space Marine in combat. You know what? That does seem about average. I think he would get one Chaos Space Marine when he swings. Yeah, which is what he did. But like half the time, not like every time. That, that it's only a he one. He did do it with a relic power sword, though. Ah, well, that would help, too. That would help a lot. And then straight silver knife that everybody has is strength three, AP one, damage one, except for Bragg, where it's strength four. Cool. OK, they have a lot of rules. Covert stealth team. During deployment, when you set up this unit, it can be set up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away. Makes sense. Oh, wait. Are they regimental? No. Dang it. Geo Prefectus. I was trying to figure out how you could infiltrate and also scout move, and I haven't found nope. it yet. No, All right. I was hoping this regiment. was it. Uh, they are character, though. So this entire unit of six guys with a million wounds, you can't target them. Are, is everyone in character or is just Gaunt character? Gaunt is a character. Perfect. It means they don't give up 21 on... No, uh, no prisoners. Uh, assassinate got changed. It's yeah, unit. Cranial Feasting didn't. Sure. You, can get, you can get 15 points off Salastin. That's hilarious. That is very funny. But no, only, I, like, I like to watch these things. Only Gaunt has character. Okay, no problem. All right. Uh, Tanith Camo Cloak. They're not eligible attacks for range unit more than 18 inches away. Each time a range attack is made against this unit, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. Mm -hmm. Each time a range attack is allocated to the mob while they're in cover, an additional one to any armor saving throws. So they're like all of the stealthy cover stuff all added together. Cool. All right. 
Gaunt, every time they take a morale test, if they have Gaunt, tests automatically passed. Good for him. Ron, if the unit contains Major Elam Ron, select one enemy unit within engagement range. That unit cannot fight until after all other eligible units from your army have done so. Yeah. So it has to be one enemy unit within engagement range oh, of the unit, not just Ron. He's still doing great. Yeah, still doing great, and the unit can heroic. So it's fair. It is still a uh, squad of guardsmen. With but. But you can put it like next to Bulgren, and then if they charge Bulgren, you're like, heroic in, you fight last, thank you. It's possible, yeah. Corbeck gives you once per battle round if this unit contains Cold and Corbeck when this unit is selected for a Astro Militarum or Core Stratagem. That stratagem costs one fewer CP to use. Um, that is pretty good. Any future uses of cost the normal amount, so when you use a strat, it costs one less for them every battle round. Is it one strat per battle round or just whatever? Once per battle round? Once per battle round. But still, it's just an extra CP, but only on them. Oh, I'd have to figure out if there are any strats that I want on them. Yeah, but it seems pretty good. Let's toss a free CP roll in there at the end of the phase. Larkin gives the entire unit ignores cover. Which cool. Which is cute. Yeah. Uh, Bragg, if, so he does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing heavy weapons when they move. And in your shooting phase, if no hits are scored with Bragg's autocannon, he gets to shoot again. I'm glad they fixed these autocannon. It used to be that if you didn't score it, oh, it's no. you can shoot the auto cannon again. Yeah. All right, great. They fixed it. It used to be he can shoot again, so you would throw a frag grenade and be like, "Boy, that auto cannon just didn't hit," and just throw a frag grenade until the sun goes down. You would auto kill everything within six inches. You, it's it's gone. It's not there anymore. It just used to exist. I think you can still do that. No, you make. It's after the unit has finished making its attacks, if no hits were scored with his auto cannon. Yeah. He can immediately shoot again with his autocannon. Oh, I see. So it doesn't yeah. infinitely proc until you're dead. I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. That's... But you can totally have him throw a grenade and then fire his autocannon. Sure. I think I'd rather shoot the autocannon just to try to get the hit, but I suppose you can. You can um, do it once. And then Owen McColl, while the unit contains Owen McColl, models and unit have a five up inform. I think McColl is my favorite. All right. All right. Uh, is this unit a lot of points? Gaunt's Ghosts, I believe it's like a reasonable 120 points. <laughs> okay. They are a bundle of wounds. Like, together yeah. they are... By my powers combined, wounds. for the points cost of two infantry squads, I can make two infantry squads. But with every rule, every single... Still on an infantry squad. I actually think Gaunt's goes... And uh, he knows regimental and perfectus orders and can issue two. Yeah. I actually think Gaunt's Ghost is, like, is like good. Hmm. Not... For any like crazy reason, just because they're cheap, have a lot of wounds, have a lot of rules that'll come up and issue two orders. I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll get around to painting them. I will play them. It's fine. I don't believe that. I, if I play guard, I will. I will put them down. I don't believe that either. I read all of the books, John. I read a lot of books, man. Not all of them, but I don't I use. I'm missing. I don't use Ariel Ventress my Ultramarines army, man. All right. Uh, next up is the regimental. In the middle of one of them, guns, attaches, and bodyguards. Uh, there's five like idiot characters that you can add on to a command squad. They're not in the command squad data sheet. Instead, they have five very weird data sheets. Like, it's just like a line each, and then there's a points cost in the back for them. Do you, do you attach any of the regimental attaches to uh, any of the units? Uh, you attach it to a command squad. Got it. Keyword command squad. Uh, so you can attach uh, all of the, the three, the first three attaches are uh, exactly the same stat line, which is T3, one wound, five up save. Cool, just one wound. And they are they're guardsmen. It's a one wound guardsman in every stat. And their leadership is six, which is insulting that a master of ordnance is leadership six. But whatever. Uh, again, he's not, not a frontline soldier. I master get it. Of but he's not an, anything else. He's an officer. Is I, he? No, he's not. But he should be. He's a keyword master of ordnance. Um, and uh, artillery commander. In your command phase, select someone within 30 inches invisible. And until the end of your phase, each time a friendly astro military artillery unit makes range attack against it, reroll hit roll one. So he cites one thing, all artillery in your army reroll ones to hits against that one thing. This is the only way that I have found to give reroll ones to hit to a basilisk or manticore. And therefore it has some value. But a master of ordnance is a little bit pricey. I think he is, where did these points oh, sorry, go? I don't know. Um, we're going to find out exactly how much he is. Master of Ordnance is 25 points. That's not the worst, but I, because you have to see them in the command phase, it's like a questionable value. Uh, an Officer of the Fleet is uh, also 25 points. And what he does is in your command phase, select an enemy unit within 30 inches visible to the target, and friendly Aeronautic Imperialis can reroll hit rolls of one against it. 
which in this book is just the Valkyrie, but it does include some of the Forge World uh, gunships as well. I think that's theoretically more valuable than the Master of Ordnance, and it also comes with a better strat. Uh, is that the Orbital? No, that's the Stay Reserves. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, you have an Astropath, who is more expensive at 40 points. Still one wound, but if he perils, he can pass those wounds off to someone else and have the med pack fix them. And uh, he is a normal Psyker who casts one, denies one, and knows one spell from the Psycana Discipline. But remember that it's only the first three options, not the whole six. And in addition, he knows a Psychic Action. Warp Charge 7, a little bit rough, gain a CP. I don't mind it. He's not a yeah. character, which means that he cannot do secondaries. 40 points, gain just a couple extra CP. Yeah, over the it's 40 of the points, and you are hoping to get two CP out of it, but maybe you'll get more. I think the average is like 2.8 or something. It's Yeah, you're hoping for two, but three is very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally fine. I like having a deny in the army. It does give you a psyker for the purpose of secondaries that you do or don't want a psyker. Um, all three of these are fine. Then you've got the Ogren add ons, which is the Ogren bodyguard and Nork dead dog. Ogren bodyguard is a better Ogren because he is. Uh, Strength 6, Toughness 5, 6 wounds with 5 attacks, Leadership 8, a 5 up armor save. Weapon skill with 6 skill 3, he moves 6. He, he's an, an Ogren, who's just beefier. Uh, he has all the Ogren weapons. We'll talk about those more in the Ogren and Bulgren data sheets. They are all fine, good. He's not anything crazy. He can get a 4 up invuln save or a uh, better armor save with some of the upgrades. And uh, he doesn't have any special rules. Uh, oh, I apologize. No, he, does. he does. He does. He's got abilities. So he's got Wall of Muscle for minus one damage that is shared with Bulgren and Ogren. They're also minus one damage, which is a huge buff for them. This guy's with six wounds, though, so like... Yeah, <laughs> he is a big target. Each time an, tar an attack targets this model's uh, unit, use this model's toughness characteristic when making wound rolls for that attack. Uh, it must be allocated to this model. Each time a model in this unit suffers a mortal wound, it must suffer this model. So if you take an Ogren Bodyguard or an Orc Dead Dog, they have to take the first damage that you start on the bulgard, the bodyguard, but their toughness five uh, on the unit until uh, they go away. That is still that is a good defensive buff. Um, just, do bodyguards also go to command squads? The added uh, oh, they get infantry, infantry officers, officers excluding named characters. So an infantry officer unit means that it could go on a uh, the. Uh, but let me see if it also goes on a command squad infantry. And officer, yes. So a body, an ogre bodyguard could go on to a, a guy like a, the the castellan, or it could go on to a command squad. The uh, the master of ordnance, officer of the fleet, and astropath have to go onto a command squad. Um, Nork, Nork Dedog is a beefed up uh, bodyguard. He's leadership eight, making him braver than a tank commander. Uh, six attacks. So is the ogre bodyguard, by the way. Yeah, he's braver <laughs> than a tank commander. Uh, so he's toughness five. Uh, he's seven wounds and six attacks. So he is better in that regard, and his weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 3. He's good. Uh, he comes with a ripper gun uh, and a huge knife, which is, uh, with him, strength 8 AP, 2 damage, 1 plus 1 attack, so he makes 7 attacks, a weapon skill 2. That's honestly not bad. That is a pretty big knife. It is a pretty big knife. And uh, he has his own rules, which is that he can pile in or consolidate plus 3. Just him. Just him, not everyone else. And then uh, whenever he makes a melee attack, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal in addition to normal damage. Nork Dead Dog, genuinely pretty good. How many points are these? That's guys? the question. A bodyguard is 50 and Nork Dead Dog is 60. Oh, they're actually pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I would want that in my command squad, but I acknowledge they're, they're good value for points. You can also staple it to a Castellan. Yeah, if I took a Castellan. But like, I, if you did, can you staple him to, to a named character? No, okay. other than named characters. And uh, just to make sure, no more than one bodyguard per officer. Just checking. <laughs> Look, I, you gotta ask, right? You just make a command squad of a whole bunch of over bodyguards, just like. Well, yeah, that's like the one time I would buy the uh, mask of Elenius Pius to get a four pinvol on a unit of four ogrins. Three over bodyguard in North. North. Yeah, I'd give that a four pinvol, hundred percent. That's pretty. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, these are all perfectly fine. We'll talk about the weapons more in the ogrin and bulgrin sections. Uh, they are all slightly better than before. Those guys are pretty durable. Yeah, no, the uh, six or seven wounds each, minus one damage. Um, Nork Dagarog has a four-up armor, and the bodyguard is a five-up armor, but can get better with the Bulgren upgrades, because you can get a four-up interval and a four-up armor, or a two-up armor. And you can give him objective secured with... Uh, mm -hmm. with Perfectus orders? With a Perfectus order. Yeah. I mean, it's only off Leontis, because he's the only one who can order officers around. But like, you can totally give Nork uh, plus a dude. If you, there's a couple ways I think, but there's none of them are as easy as take Leontis. So I think that's all you're gonna say. Yeah, 
Nork plus uh, like a uh, a guy with the relic weapon and the sixes explode and plus one to wound is like a very cute little. little well, I think unit. the roller trade is only for the model, not for the. I know. I'm just okay. Saying, yeah, it yeah. Just hits. Yeah. Yeah. It it would be a little a uh, little like stern, honestly. Because yeah, the price like, point is about the same. It's like 110 points. Mm -hmm. And you spend a Warlord trait and Relic, but that unit kind of bangs. And you yeah, can give them like a little bit. You can give them Opsec. Yeah, you, you can. You can tell them the fixed bayonets too, get the plus one AP in melee. Plus one to hit, plus one AP? Yeah. So they're hitting on twos and they're AP a lot? There you go, it's pretty easy. Yeah, I actually don't think that's terrible. I don't think it's terrible, I just don't think I want it. I can see that, yeah. for sure. I think for that point to cost, I'll take a unit of Bulgren. They're just friends forever, John. Yeah, I get it, they're I get it. They're friends forever. All right, ready to go into the first of the four infantry squad digits? Uh, I'll just go over all of them together. All right, fair enough. Okay. That will take about the same amount of time. It will. So I'm just going to read off the infantry squad, and then anything I don't read off for the next several is exactly the same. Yep. Uh, I'm going to save time. Guardsman stat line, exactly what you think it is. Yep. <laughs> It's it sure is. All four of them have the exact same stat line. I just want to cover Rambo. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You can cover Rambo. That's okay. All right. uh, yep. It's an infantry squad. But. Yep, all their weapons. There's four options. Are very standard. Um, oh, God, there's so many, like, random weapon options. Yeah. So the infantry squad can swap two of their guys around for a heavy weapons team. I believe all the price points are exactly the same, except for the plasma pistol and power sword for some reason. Yep. Everything else is free. Yep. Yeah, so uh, last gun can be replaced with one last gun in the unit can be replaced with a flame or grenade launcher, melt gun, or plasma gun, or sniper rifle for mm -hmm. free. So one in an infantry squad. Heavy weapon is free. Uh, it could be an auto cannon, last cannon, missile launcher, mortar, or heavy bolter. Mm -hmm. uh, two guards models can be replaced with a heavy weapon team. Sergeant's last pistol can be replaced with bolt pistol, bolt gun, plasma pistol, chain sword, power sword for the. All reliable. Um, and then one guardsman will be equipped with a Vox caster. Mm -hmm. And their last gun cannot be replaced. So you just will take a Vox caster and they gain the Vox caster key. Yeah, it's free. Just toss it in there. All right, super boring. So, uh, yeah, that's the infantry squad, yeah. generic, and that is 65 points. Cadian shock troops are pretty much exactly the same, except two of their guys can get a special weapon, although you cannot double up. But you can't take a heavy weapon. But you cannot take a heavy weapon. They yeah, can get a Vox more. caster, same way. This uh, The sergeant can take a drum fed auto gun, which is just a rapid fire two last gun that doesn't have uh, last gun. That doesn't have last gun. Yeah. Probably take that and give him a bolt pistol. And uh, yep, that's about it, except they have shock troops. Each time a model in this unit makes a range attack with a LAS gun or a LAS pistol, hit rolls of six score an additional hit. That is technically better than not having that. Sure is, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and you pay five extra points for the Cadian keyword. No, no, it's the same points cost as infantry squad. You just don't get a heavy weapon. Yep. So you get, get a second heavy weapon, a second special weapon, and the Cadian keyword and exploding six on LAS guns, but you don't get a heavy weapon. I think I'd rather just take shock troops and infantry squad literally every time. Yeah, because access to transhuman on a 10 model unit oh, that's toughness 3 is super good. Yeah, just and every once in a while you need those Cadian specific strats. Yep. Just, yeah. I think Cadian shock troops, you're right, are just better than infantry. For the yeah, it's point. the same unit, but better. And now I don't have to worry about a heavy weapon. There's Death Corps of Krieg. Yep, those are better. I want to I talk to Krieg. You can talk about Krieg. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll talk about, I just want to talk about Rambo. Yeah, you can have I'll Rambo Krieg and, and Jungle Men. All right, Death Curve Krieg are still exactly what you think. They're the stat line of a Guardsman. Uh, they take all the upgrades of a Guardsman, but with some notable changes, and they're better. Uh, so up to two Death Corps uh, troopers can now have their lives replaced with the following. Uh, one flamer, one grenade launcher, one melt and sniper rifle. You can't take more than two of the same weapon. But here's an interesting part. One Death Corps guy starts with a plasma gun, which means you get three special weapons, but only two could be plasma guns. So you start with a plasma gun, you can then uh, get replaced with uh, uh, a thing. Uh, this cannot select the same weapon more than twice per I unit. I think you can take three plasma guns. I think you can just take three plasma guns. I think, I'm pretty sure that's just you can take three plasma guns. Awesome, three plasma guns, call it good. Yeah, it's super good. Um, yeah, and it's just built in. Uh, uh, one model can, uh, with a LAS gun can be equipped with a meta pack for a death core meta pack, and that is ignore your first failed save of the, uh, of the... Also gives you medic. Of the turn. Once per turn, uh, the first time a saving throw is failed from a model despair's unit, change the damage characteristic of the attack to zero, and use the medic keyword to grow back guys. Five points for that. Everything else so far has been free. That's good for five points. I like that. There's 75 base. Go to 80. Go to 80. So they're a little more expensive. Um... You can take the normal sergeant upgrades like a bolt pistol, plasma pistol, or power sword, or a uh, bolt gun. 
Uh, and they have a special rule called Death Core, which is baby transhuman. Unmodified one or two uh, just, just fails. fails. Yep. Yeah, easy. So, yeah, Death Core is super good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and there's one other thing. Right, one uh, Death Core Trooper's plasma gun can be replaced with a Laz gun and Vox caster. Yeah, you're not doing so that. So if you want the Vox caster, you have to lose a plasma gun. You're, you're not. And I think you're not doing that. You're not doing and that. And you're just going to say, I don't have a Vox caster. Sorry, Anyway, Chief. three plasma guns. Anyway, three <laughs> plasma guns for the price of nothing. Um, so for 10 points more than a, a Cajun infantry squad, you get baby transhuman all the time, but you lose access to the Cajun strats and full transhuman, and you get a third special weapon. I th 10 points, that's like right on the borderline of is that isn't it worth it? And what I think this means is I start every list with Death Corps of Kriegs, and if my list is 2010, I know where I'm going. Yeah, access to real transhuman when it matters is a big deal, but also just having it all the time without having yeah, to Yeah, because like, I don't want to spend that CP every time, and also there's the unexpected value of it, where like sometimes you spend a CP on transhuman, your opponent's like, I rolled zero threes, and you're like, great, this feels good, man. But when you have baby transhuman all the time, you just get to be like, ah, that last cannon's a two. I was never going to spend a CP for a last cannon shot, but ah, that one was a two. Yep, yeah, yeah. So I like the passive value of Death Corps of Krieg. There, it, I do like changing a wound on two on a toughness three unit to a wound on four. Like That's pretty gross. The access to the strat is great. Yeah. The Death Corps and Cadians are by far the best. Um, I'll hit Catachan Jungle Fighters really quick. They're the legitimately the worst of the four troop options. They're like no questions points, asked. Right? So they're more expensive than Catachan. Seventy points. It's five points more than an infantry or Cadian squad. Uh, they don't get access to a heavy weapon. Up to two of them uh, can get a special weapon, but it's only flamers. They, nothing else. They did word it very weirdly, where everything else is like because they're all fixed ten man units. All fixed ten man. Everything else says up to two can do this. This one says for every five models you get a you can take a flamer. But you can only be a ten man squad. You can't be less. You can't be more. It's just that it honestly looks like there is supposed to be a heavy weapon, and it's like oh you can get a second flamer if you don't do a heavy weapon. But then there isn't a heavy weapon option, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the only special rule they have is that in close combat, an unmodified hit roll of a six scores one additional hit. So you can choose to have plus five points, only flamers, and exploding sixes in combat compared to a Cadian squad, which is exploding sixes and shooting for your bad weapons, but also cheaper, better special weapons and access to stratagems. And so the one difference is you can't select a flamer twice. This can select a flamer no, twice. No, Cadians can have two flamers. Yeah. Uh, you cannot select the same weapon more than twice. Oh, more than twice. Yeah, you can just have two flamers. Is this more than... There's only one weapon, so there's no bullet point. Because you just get one. Yeah, you get that and heavy. No, nah, the Katachan Jungle Fighters, it's for the keyword Katachan, which does technically matter on a very small number of things, and it's fun. You know, I, I like Katachans. Some people are going to want to be Katachans. Data sheet, just just worse. I mean, Mr. the Katachan Urbanowski. I'm sure, his, specifically Brett, is going to be like, oh yeah, I'm taking Katachans. And we're going to be very proud of him for sticking to his guns. Uh, but they do nothing. All right. I, I have it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, Sly Marbo or, or Rambo? Sly Rambo. Like, just, just Rambo. Um, okay, so he is, first off, how many points is he? He is 50, which is super cheap. Yeah, Rambo is not that expensive. Yeah, he is movement 6, weapon skill plus skill 2, strength 4, toughness 3, 5 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 7, and a 5 up save. Mm -hmm. All right. He is he has a ripper pistol and envenomed blade and frag grenades. Yep. Yep. Ripper pistol is three shots. It's rank five, AP two, damage two, uh, range twelve. Each time you select a target for this weapon, you ignore the lookout, sir. And unmodified wound rolls of six to a mortal wound. So you can try and snipe with it. Not the best at it, but it can try. Yeah. It does some damage. And his blade, uh, every time attack made by this weapon is allocated to a non-vehicle model. The attack has damage characteristic of two at plus two strength, AP two, damage one, and non-vehicles damage two. He's pretty good. Yeah. During deployment, you can set this model in ambush instead of setting it up on the battlefield. If you do so, then reinforcement step of one your movement phase comes in nine away and can reroll charges. It's interesting. Cool. Never be your warlord, and once per battle at the end of the fight phase, you can remove this unit from the battlefield. If you do so, it comes back in more than nine inches away. Yeah. He's just one guy who deep strikes, does a little bit of damage, and then sometimes runs away, and he's cheap. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah, 50 points. He's also regimental, so yep. he gets the benefit of any of those yep, things. Yep, whatever he took. And he also gives your entire army plus one on the, uh, mm -hmm. the melt -a mine thing when he comes in, and he has plus three on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, cool if you're really game-planning on melt -a mines Which I am. 
which which Jack is. I do think Sly Marbo is like the last thing that Harlequins want to see ever. I get that, but it's still. I think they'll just like shoot him with a fusion pistol and then it'll, they'll move on. Yeah. All right. All right. Casterkin. All right, fine, John. <laughs> fine. I also <laughs> you, am excited you, about You've Kasserkin. already skipped me once. I'm not letting you do it again. Casterkins. This is. On what? Uh, the water traits. You did both pages. Oh. Uh, Casterkins. That's something you Casterkins, though, this is what I want to talk about because Casterkins are. Baller. Yeah, Kashkin are super good. Uh, a Kashkin so sergeant, Kashkin are like guardsmen, but they are, of course, better. Uh, notably, the ballistic skill three, plus one attack and plus one leadership and a four up save. So this is like a Scion stat line. Uh, they don't have a deep strike built in, unlike Scions, and they're 10 points per model for a clean hundo. And the only thing that really costs points is like a plasma pistol on the sergeant and like maybe a power fist. But that, that's basically all the upgrades that you care about are free here. And that's what matters. So. Kasserkins come with Hotshot Laz, and they take a bunch of special weapons. Here's the most important thing. Kasserkins have all of the keywords you could ever ask for. That's really what matters here. Yeah. Uh, so Kasserkins, uh, up to four Kasserkin troopers can have their Hotshot Laz gun replaced with one of the following. Flamer, Grenade Launcher, Hotshot Volley Gun, Melty Gun, Plasma Gun. The Hotshot Volley Gun is notable here. All the other ones are exactly the same stats you would expect. A Hotshot Volley Gun is Rapid Fire 2, 30 inch range, Strength 4, AP 2, Damage 1. So four shots at, at uh, 15. Uh, it's a very good gun. And uh, Hotshot Laz guns are now 24 inch, strength 3, AP2, damage 1. Still rapid fire 1. That's good. Uh, but you can get four special weapons. That's, in my mind, going to be two uh, Hotshot Volley guns and probably two Plasma guns. But Hotshot Volley gun and two other things. Uh, so you, you can also take one Hotshot Marksman rifle, which is 36 inch heavy 1, strength 4, AP2, damage 3. Ignore lookout, sir, a 6 to wound is immortal. God, which is the 6 to hit, because you're taking four soldiers with these guys. Yeah. Uh, then you can have one guy replace his LAS gun with a LAS pistol and a Meltamine, and a hot shot on all of these, by the way. Uh, one guy can be equipped with a Vox caster in addition to his LAS gun. The Kaskin Sergeant can take a power sword instead, and the Kaskin Sergeant can take like a bolt pistol or LAS pistol, which you're just going to take the hot shot LAS pistol, I think. One special rule on them, which is that when you add this unit to your army, you can select a doctrine from page 60 to 61 that no other unit from your army has, and you get it in addition to any others it has. So if, for example, you were to keep born soldiers, you can take one Kaskin squad and say, that one is also mechanized infantry. It'll get out of transports. Pick another one. Yeah, this one is also veteran guerrillas and can uh, ignore cover with an 18. Pick a third Kaskin squad, and it gets like trophy hunters for plus one strength against monsters vehicles. So getting an extra regiment means that they get a lot of extra keywords, because they can take the one that synergizes with the strat you want. Uh, they get really good hotshot weapons. They have the Kaskin keyword for all the strats you want. Their core, their Cadian, their regiment, or their platoon, their regimental, their Kaskin. They literally have every single relevant infantry-esque stratagem that you could ask for. It's also the coolest unit in the book. Like, yeah, it's, other than Mons Ghosts, obviously. Yeah, I, I'd say they're about tied with Scions for me on cool factor, but they've got all of the rules that Scions wish they had. And they get tons of special weapon access. This unit's baller. Uh, notably, you can do a ton of mortal wounds with it. Oh, if, an insane amount of mortal wounds. Like, yeah, if you do the, the, the hot shot weapons, do mortal wounds on sixes, and then you're like, oh yeah, fives to hit count to sixes to wound because I'm combining all this, and then I reroll my hits because Leontis told me to. And then you're like, three las guns here, three las guns here, three las guns here, you know, hot shot las gun or whatever here. Like, you can splash mortals in a ton of spots. So, I think this unit's it, really good. Right, because you can make them three shots mm -hmm. each, uh, and then you can make them ignore hit rolls with the pineal. Mm -hmm. And then you can make every five plus to hit a six to wound, and every six to wound does a mortal. Yep. And then you have them rerolling hits and wounds. You can have them legitimately shoot in like four directions and do like 20 to 24 mortal wounds. Yeah. I don't, you won't get six on every one because dice are weird, but you can go in four directions and everyone's getting a handful of mortal wounds. Yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable you go in four directions and do like five, 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 five. Yeah, I sometimes six, sometimes four. Total of 20, totally reasonable. Yeah. If you're just going all hot shot weapons and that's what your kid's you for. Two CP on it and a command phase ability. That's super good. Yeah. And yeah. You take three of these. Yeah, I'm absolutely taking three of one these. One of them can take the barber barbican's key to teleport after you give You've, it all the all command that command stuff. phase goodness. So you can teleport after the command phase and just be like a billion mortal wounds to you, sir. And then you uh, you know you do the same thing next turn with mechanized, and you make sure you get out of the transport and you give an order with a character that gets out of a transport. Yep. And it's just like. Mm. 
Yeah, Castorkins have a lot of synergy. It, it requires investment, but I think Castorkin are the unit that rewards that investment the most in this in this book. And Castorkins are going to be a staple. It's not my... that much. To... <laughs> it's, a CP, CP. it's a CP investment. Yeah, you pay you pay two CP for it, mm -hmm. and you have next to Leontis, yeah. and suddenly your opponent's entire army dies to mortal wounds. Yeah, like... uh, yeah. It, it requires you to not reroll hits with a, a Dorn. It requires you to spend CP. Those are all prices I'm willing to pay, to be clear, but there is an investment. Yes. Um, yeah. Want to hit some characters? If and, there's uh, anything crazy that comes out of this book, I think it's, it's going to be Kashikins. Or if they make indirect to ignore the penalty as before, it's possible some of this is too good, but I, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. I, I, my guess is that they will make Just the indirect nerf apply to guard, and then everyone's going to be fine. Seems home. like a reasonable guess. If they don't, you could legitimately see some lists that are just like, eh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. All right, Regimental Preacher. Um, Weapons go four, bullets go four, strength toughness three, four mm -hmm. wounds, three attacks. Leadership eight, six plus save. Um, has a four plus invulnerable, has some weapons you probably don't care about. Every time it makes a melee attack, you can reroll the wound, uh, reroll the hit roll, sorry. Good for and, him. Yeah, sure. He doesn't have a combat weapon worth talking about. Nope. He's a chain sword. Mm -hmm. In your command phase, you pick a friendly astral charm core or infantry character, unit within six inches, and roll one d6. On a three plus, select one of the following. Either plus one to charge rolls for that unit until the next command phase, and each time they make a melee attack, reroll hits, which is pretty good. Or until the, the start of your next command phase, models that you have a six up invuln can't be affected by malediction psychic powers, and that, that's it. There's some clarification about if they're currently being affected, they're not anymore. Yeah. That's fine. How many points is this guy? It's like 40. He's 40. Yeah. If you give him a power maul, which you certainly will not, he's 45. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty dope. You mm -hmm. give your um, you give your Rough Riders real hits and plus one yep. to charge. That feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can order them for plus one to hit. Yep. And plus one AP. Yeah. That, yeah, all, that can, all slaps. Yeah, you regimental preacher is perfectly fine. I don't think I love one, but it's forty points. It's not bad. So we got Harker. Mm -hmm. uh, his heavy bolter is exactly is an assault three heavy bolter at AP th at AP two instead of AP one. Solid. Pretty decent. Move six, weapon skill plus skill three, strength five, toughness four, four wounds, four attacks, leadership seven, five of save. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives nearby, before deployment, you select one Katachin jungle fighters unit from your army. Sorry, it works slightly differently. Till the end of the battle, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll hit rolls of one. Yep. But Katachin jungle fighters is only the infantry squad. Mm -hmm. That's, there's only one unit you can choose for that, and it's the what we described as the worst of the four infantry squad options. Yep, he ha he himself has a five of feel no pain, uh, and he knows regimental orders, and he can only issue them to Katachin jungle fighters. Yep, and the regimental tactics ability only applies to Katachin jungle fighters. Absolutely. Wow, that guy is bad. Yep, he doesn't get a, he doesn't get a warlord trait. He is he does not he can never be your, well, no, he can get a warlord trait, but he can never be your warlord. Oh, he can. Just can never be your warlord. Oh, you can't buy uh, warlord traits for non named characters. Oh, then so enough, he yes. can't kill him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's 40 points. So he's not like the worst thing in the world because he still has a gun, but his rules yeah, don't do anything. 40 points for a heavy bolter. That's AP2. And that's. And assault, too. So it's like. Yeah, yeah. And it's, hits it's, on threes. Yep, that's a heavy bolter. And is a character. And is a heavy bolter. Yeah. There we go. Regimental Engine Seer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's actually the regimental engineer here is actually decent. Uh, how many points is he? Just figure I'll get through these. Uh, Forty points. Mm -hmm. So at least all these characters are very cheap. Move six, weapon skill three, uh, weapon skill four, bliss skill three, strength toughness four, four wounds, two attacks, leadership eight, and a three plus save. Braver than a tank commander. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> that is really weird. Yeah, I don't think it matters. It doesn't. But I'm gonna point it out. He has two attacks. And one of his attacks is made with a servo arm, one of them is with an engine seer axe, so you can take two with the engine seer axe if you're a crazy person. Um, the axe is strength six, AP two, damage two, and the servo arm is strength eight, AP two, damage three. Love it. Five up invuln, he heals a friendly astral military arm vehicle for D3, and you can give a friendly astral military arm vehicle model within three inches a five up invulnerable save. Yeah, that's cute. It's a little, it's a little heal. Uh, if you don't get armor of contempt, I think that will be perfectly fine to get a five up invuln to a tank. If you don't get armor of contempt, it's fine. Yeah, but and, and healing is nice. At least he doesn't get plus one to hit. Yeah, this is, to my knowledge, the only way to heal guard tanks. Yeah, I it's think the only if you one get I can find plus one to hit. I think 
Well, it doesn't work on turrets. It wouldn't stack with turrets, so like who, who would care? Yes, that's why they didn't do it. Yeah. Yep. Um, Unitorm Servitors it is a Servitor Squad. Go look at any other Servitor Squad. This is exactly the same. However, if it's within six inches of any friendly Asmaterum Engine Seers, it gets a higher leadership than a Tank Commander. Oh, come on. What? It does. Gets leadership characters through Vate. Who can stop it? No, I will not. Uh, no, you won't. I will not. Commissars. Commissars are a Guardsman character profile. They're four wounds, five up save. Leadership eight, braver than tank commander, and uh, they issue one regimental, or apologies, one prefectus order, and they can order it to friendly infantry officers and uh, human units. So they can issue it to ogrins and bulgrins with their prefectus order. They don't know our regimental orders, but it's just a walking officer. They're not uh, colonel commissars like Ibram Gaunt. Yeah, uh, it's just a walking commissar who just picks. A unit gives a regimental order and he gets better options. He gets the options you'd expect. Bull pistol for a plasma pistol and his chain sword for a power sword. He's a guard, he's a guard character. If he's, Leontis wasn't around, you would really want to take these guys because their orders are good. But Leontis is around. And so. Yeah, and a commissar is 40 points. That is very reasonable. Uh, he does have a, a special rule where for every commandant uh, or, and command squad unit included in a detachment. One commissar model can be included in that detachment without taking a battlefield role. Sure. And importantly, uh, once per turn, when a friendly Aston Militarum core unit within six inches of this model fails a morale check, use this ability, and if so, you auto pass all combat attrition checks. So That's fluffy, because he's going to shoot fluffy. the one guy with his bolt pistol or plasma pistol. Yeah, the one guy who starts to run away and would like lead the rest of them away just gets gadded. Yeah. Um, and a commissar, for 40 points, a commissar is legitimately great. It's just that he does one order, nothing else I care about, and Leontis does the same thing and more. I mean, Commissar is brutal into every plan that Nick tries to put together. Just because he like stacks like minus four combat attrition, you're like, yeah, I ought to pass them all. So. Yeah. Um, Ogren, here's uh, again, we're starting to get to the big beefy boys. Ogren are very interesting. Yeah. Uh, they're 30 points a model. They're relatively similar style as before. Move six, weapon skill three, build six, skill four. Strength six, T5, three wounds, four attacks, leadership seven, and five attacks. But the Ogren bonehead is leadership eight, which is higher than tank commander. And uh, basically, they got plus one wound and, uh, or sorry, I apologize, plus one attack and plus one strength compared to the last version. Uh, but they get the minus one damage special rule for wall of muscle. That uh, So just minus one damage to shooting in combat. And uh, then they have a rule called point blank barrage. And this is really good. Because uh, you, you can make attacks to the Ripper Guns, which they're going to have, even if they're within engagement range of enemy units. But each model can only make uh, such attacks against enemy units that are, are within engagement range. So it's basically you can shoot your assault weapons as pistols, and you get all the pistol rules as normal. Uh, here's what a Ripper Gun does, because it is much improved. Yes, Ripper Guns Much improved. 18-inch range, assault 3, strength 5, AP 2, damage 2. And they're ballistic skill 4. To be, to be clear, I believe they used to be ballistic skill 5, damage one, and now they're plus one to hit, plus one damage, essentially. When you tell them to take aim. When you tell them to take aim, they shoot very respectably. I think you have to be Leontis to do that. Uh, no, um, there's a, uh, the Steel Commissar can order. Uh, sure. I, there's, the, the, basically it's Leontis. I think it's Perfectus orders, though. Yeah, I, I it, once. you're going to use Leontis for this 100%, yeah. but it's great on them. The biggest downside of Ogrins, in my mind, is the Five of Armor. Because minus one damage in T5 and three wins is a great way to blunt volume, but if your opponent's like, yeah, there's no saves, it'll get there. But I love Psychic Barrier to protect an Ogren unit. Yes, because they have. A, then you have yeah. five up in full and minus one yeah. damage. Uh, they do also have a. Uh, oh, they don't have a huge knife. Never mind. I assume no, they, they do not have a. Huge they do not have any kind of knife so at all. In combat, they're kind of mediocre. Just strength it's, six, AP one, damage one. Yeah, but there's still four attacks each. A weapon skill three. Shit. Something. I uh, just want to make sure you shift to three or then I'm checking Leontis to mm -hmm. make sure it's not just perfectus orders. Yeah. That can go to abhumans. Yep. It's regimental and perfectus. Regimental and perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then you take aim with them and then they hit on threes and yeah. they're and not three. They're not core. They're not regimental. They're not platoon. So they're not getting any normal buffs. But they get psychic powers and they get Leontis's orders. And that is a lot. That is a lot. My favorite one is the good old Bulgrins. I used to run a unit of 10 of these. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you did. Were they 9? I think they were 9. I, Maybe they were 10. I think they were up to 10, but Maybe. whatever it was, I ran that number. That many. It was a while ago. Yeah. Um, but they've gotten a lot better. It was the same book, though. It was a while ago, it was the same mm -hmm. book. Uh, they've gotten a lot better. Their stat line kind of stayed the same, but they have minus 1 damage. Yep. 
but uh, the orders make a big difference. So they move six, weapon skill three, ballistic skill four, same as the ogre in four attacks instead of three. Yeah. So still four attacks. Still four attacks? Yep. Okay. Still braver than a tank commander. On the, only on the bone end. Only on the bone end. Notably, they have a one better armor save. Yes, they have a four up armor save, and then you can take either a brute shield or a slab shield, both of which I believe are the same points cost. All free. Yes. All free. Uh, brute shield gives them a four up invuln, slab shield gives them a two up armor save, and any number of models, they can either have a grenadier gauntlet, which is a uh, D6 shots at strength 4, AP 1, damage 1, mm -hmm. blast, or you, what you probably do is give him a Bulgrim, Bulgrim Maul. Yep. For 5 extra points, take him to 35 points per model, and it makes him strength 7, AP 1, damage 2. I hate that the Bulgrim went up from strength 5 to strength 6, and the Maul went from plus 2 to plus 1. Like, yeah, I was wondering, I was like, wait, like, weren't they strength 7 with the Bulgrim Maul? They, they were. They were. And now they are. Yeah, so they're basically the same as they were before, except they're minus 1 damage. And but, plus 1 attack. And I thought you said they stayed at... Yeah, ogre, like Bulgren and Ogre. Oh, no, no, I was talking Bulgren, oh. old Bulgren. Oh, yeah, old Bulgren, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, yeah, they have three attacks, right? And you're like, no, no it's the same. So I think we just got wired. Got it, yep. All right, so they went up from their old incarnation, they went up an attack, and they got minus one damage, which is a big deal. Yeah. Um, and then they get orders. And the reason orders are so important is because it takes them from hitting on threes with no rerolls mm -hmm. to hitting on twos and being AP2. And AP that's two. the point where they actually can do damage. Yeah, AP1 was the biggest crime. It was like, Bulgren dropped off a while ago, but when Armor of Contempt came in, they literally were just shunted out of the game. Yeah, AP2 like they were, damage 2 is... AP2 is a real thing. That is a real thing. That is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. I think Bulgren's are actually going to be pretty good. Yeah. So they're not that expensive. It's nope. 175 for five of them. They can take either a four-up invuln or a two-up armor and be just pretty durable. Like two-up armor and cover is just obnoxious to deal with. Absolutely. Minus one damage means whatever you hit them with, it's going to take a while to get through. Sounds them. great. And then they hit on twos with a lot of attacks yeah. at strength seven, AP two damage two. You can perfect disorder them to be obsec. You could order them to ignore mortals on a five-up. Yeah. Uh, you could give them light cover. You All can good. plenty of good options. You can move, move, move them to turn one, get some mobility. Uh, or just to set up a charge, you could move, move them, get out of a. Now you can't really get out of a transport in order them to fix bayonets, but because uh, no one can do that. But still, they take orders. They don't take anything else really, but they're just a good stat line. Yeah, yeah, their stats are great for yeah. the price point. They're no objections. Really obnoxious to deal with. Actually. I I fully believe that. All right, ratlings. I'll give you the rough riders because oh, uh, I know you. Uh, I do like rough riders. I know you like the rough riders. Ratlings move five, their weapon skill five, bliss skill three, strength and toughness of two, mm -hmm. one wound, one attack, leadership five, not higher than a tank commander, uh, and a six up save. They have a sniper rifle, which functions pretty much the same as every other sniper rifle. Heavy one, 36 inch range, strength four, AP one, damage one, ignores lookout service, six is to hit, do a mortal wound. Uh, they find the best spot, which means they set up nine inches away, but mm -hmm. they're not regiments. So they don't get to. They don't get the scout. Yeah, I have not found it. Shoot, shoot sharp and scarper mm -hmm. once per turn. After they shoot, they make a normal move. If it does so after resolving Overwatch, your opponent can select new targets of the charge. The fact they can do it on Overwatch is like the only part of this I think is interesting. Yeah. Otherwise, because they're they are expensive. Rattlings are fifty points for five models. What? Oh yeah. I was oh, expecting yeah, yeah. this unit to be like thirty-five points. No, I looked this up. I looked at them and I was like, all right, five dudes, they have a sniper rifle, they're not that great. How many points? 10 points a model? What? I, uh, yeah, the unit's kind of trash, because 10 points a model yeah, is... They don't get any rerolls. Very expensive. If you, if you step out, shoot, fire, and fade, you, do, you get five shots with sniper rifles that hit on fours, because they have to move and take a heavy penalty. Yes. They only move five, which is... So weird, but yep. they're, they're, they've got short legs. They're minus one to hit at range, and then they get an additional plus one to their saving throws while they're in cover, but they have a set yeah. up. Now, this unit is very expensive and also very easy to kill. This and might get my vote for like least effective data sheet in the book. Oh, 100%. Uh, I'm yeah. honestly thinking about including this in our top 10 worst units in the game. It's fair. They're very expensive. They have yeah. no offense. They have no defense. Uh, would I rather take this or Catachance? Catachans at least fill a slot. That's the only thing they yeah, have going for them. do nothing. Yeah. They're just super bad. <laughs> like, they're terrible. What happens. All right, give me these Rough Riders. Give me these Pony Boys. I am ready to hop on the Pony Express, by the I way. Know. I have a lot of these already painted. Um, Cree ones. So, Rough Riders come in a unit of 5 to 10. They are 20 points per model, so this could be anywhere from 100 to 200 points for the unit. Uh, they do not have anything else that costs points, so whatever op options I say, there's not that many of them. All three. 
Uh, Rough Rider is a pretty good damage profile, but not that tough. Uh, move Very fragile. Move 12, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 4, strength 4, T4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6, save 4 up, 7 on the sergeant. Same and the end of the extra attack. Commander. Same as a tank commander. Right, right. Uh, I'm gonna, really, it's really the brave in a tank commander is when I start to like get excited. Um, well, yeah, yeah, regular Bulgren being the same as a tank commander feels a little worse than a bonehead being more. I, I don't know, man. It's pretty bad all around. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, everyone comes with a LAS gun, a LAS pistol, a hunting lance, and frag grenades. So everyone just has those things. Um, what you really care about is the hunting lance. And the hunting lance is uh, one of two options. You're either a melt -a tip or a frag tip. Uh, melt -a tip is plus two strength. AP 4, damage 3. That takes them to strength 6. I'll give a little spoiler here. The unit is plus 2 on the charge with their scything momentum. So on the charge, that means that they are strength 8 AP 4, damage 3. Which is real good. It's a lot of... Only damage. 2 attacks and not a lot of ways to buff the attack characteristic. As a matter of fact, I have not found any. Uh, but... Oof. But... Oof. Uh, did it's you 11 just, dice for 5 guys charging. Yeah, did you just read the frag tip though? Each time an attack is made with this weapon, a successful hit scores 2 additional hits. I like how they literally just ride in with a frag grenade at the end of their lance. Like, absolutely oh. what they do. Yeah, so you, you roll in, you make 11 dice, and you, let's say you get like 7 or 8 hits, and you're like, great, 24 hits. At strength, 6, six AP, one, 1 damage, 1. That's like a lot of volume. That's respectable. Yeah. Uh, then uh, just uh, there's the Goad Lance, which one model per 5 can take. And then a Rough Rider Sergeant can be equipped with a uh, Power Saber. Just take it. It's free. Um, Every model has a hunting lance, so you can yep. give the taser goad or the goad lance to the sergeant if mm -hmm. you want. Yeah, you can give it to anyone. Um, just one model gets the, the goad lance. So the goad lance, which you will put on the sergeant, each time an attack is made with that weapon, a successful hit roll scores one additional hit. And each time an attack is made with this weapon uh, is allocated to a vehicle model, that uh, model's uh, unit suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So each time an attack made with a weapon allocated, that is the step where they have to take saves. Yep, so if you roll a successful wound into a vehicle unit, boom, here's a mortal. Yeah. So uh, theoretically, it's three attacks with a goad lance, and every hit is an two, additional, is two, is two hits. hits. Yeah. And then every wound is a mortal. So if you could theoretically put out six mortals with this, not that likely on just a charge, but if you had something like four rerolls to hit and wound, that actually becomes like, mm, this could really happen. That, that just kind of just does it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's also strength eight on the charge, AP three, two damage. Yeah, you totally hand this to the sergeant and he forgets he has a power saber. Yeah. I mean, the power saber is one extra attack, so left hand, he's just making one pass with the power saber while he's really just driving in the, the taser good. Yeah. Um, which that is really good. Yeah, that, that sergeant hits. Uh, yep, you can ignore any or all modifiers to your move, uh, advance, or charge. Great. Do they have a picture of the goad lance in here anywhere? Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's just a <laughs> It's literally just a taser on a stick. It, yeah, it looks like a big, like, coiled taser thing on a stick. It looks ridiculous, but awesome. It does, but awesome. Um, yeah, so you can make this unit hit very hard sometimes. It really likes having buffs, but I think if you fix it, because it's core, if you fix bayonets and are near Leontis, you actually do hit very respectably hard because then you hit on twos, you're rolling ones. And your AP plus one, so yeah. AP two on the sweeps are pretty good. The sweeps can just like decimate line infantry because as soon as you're like, okay, I hit on twos, you're rolling ones, you're like, oh yeah, every guy just makes six hits. And then it's like, oh wow, this is a lot. That's, that's a lot of damage. So they also ignore any or all modifiers to move, advance, and charge rolls. Yep. So, they, I mean, you're fragile, but like they punch. They are very fragile, though. At the moment your opponent even gets even a slight angle on them, they're yeah, they're dead super dead horribly. I like at least one squad. I, I'm going to try two. I don't know if you need to. I don't even know if I would like any. I like. I know you like them. I know you like them. My personal thing is that they're basically Windrider jet bikes that are even they're less nothing durable. like Windrider jet bikes. I'm saying defensive wise. Well, sure. Because I know how easy it is to have like a medium strength unit shoot at Windrider jet bikes and be like, that whole squad's gone. No, this is just an intercessor with a four armor save. It's not a Windrider jet bike with a four armor save. This is an intercessor with a four armor right, save. Except it can't get cover. Yeah, same thing. Or armor contempt. Right. It's just like a jet bike. It... <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to kill than a Windrider jet bike. Sure. And I know how easy Windrider jet yeah. bikes are to kill. And it hits on mass. harder than a Windrider jet bike. 
I'm, all I'm comparing is the durability, John, yeah. and I know how easy I, bikes are to kill with anything in your arm. I'll freely acknowledge that a squad of Adeline Rough Riders is a one-trick pony. It dies to a stiff breeze, and the problem is that it does not advance in charge. One-trick pony. I get it. I was not acknowledging you could, it. You could have them move 14 inches, 16 in the custom regiment, and then charge at, like, plus two. They're cavalry, so they, they need that because they have to yeah. go all the way around walls yeah. and stuff to get in. No, no you, you sit behind a wall and you wait, and you shoot guns at people and ask them if they want to come close. But and at they, some point they do, and then you're like, Pony Brigade, and that's it. You spend like half of your movement going around whatever wall you're in front of. Yeah, and, and if they're not running. close enough for you to charge, then you just back up and shoot them. And if they are close enough, then you charge them. I mean, I like Bogren for that role because they just walk through the wall and charge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like move the same. I like ponies because they murder tanks. Sure. Do you, do you want to see an, Ad, an Adeline Rough Rider squad, pure average, just kill the Silent King? Because that is exactly what they do. A 10 man? Uh, I don't know how many it takes. A 10 man overkills him. Rerolling hits and wounds. Yeah, it's like they they murder him. But you have five attacks with the Goad Lance, which will just be, be five hits and probably four wounds. So, no, no, no. The Goad so, Lance is yeah. 10 hits. So, 10 hits from the Goad Lances. And then, and then nine let's say you get wounds. Yeah, nine wounds and nine mortals. Yeah, no, the, you know, I, they kill the Silent King for sure. There are also 200 points for unit 10 that dies to. Anything that sees it. Yeah, but a five man punks the Silent King pretty hard still. Not if they fight last. And <laughs> that's what's going to happen, and then the entire unit dies. Are you really not going to charge him with Gaunt's Ghost to make him fight last? I mean, Pathetic. obviously, they charge him with Gaunt's Ghost. Pathetic. <laughs> All right. I think the unit's a little too unwieldy for how cool it is. Yeah. And it is very cool. I'm taking it. Hit me with both sentinels. I, I do strongly believe that. Hit me with both sentinels. All right. I will. I will, in fact. Mm -hmm. Um. Thank you for handing me both Sentinel data yep. sheets right now. 40 points and 45, respectively. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So 40 for the Scout, 45 for Armored. Uh, the Scout moves 12, the Armored moves 8. They're both taken in squads of 1 to 3. Uh, they're both weapon scope with skill 4, strength and toughness 6, with 7 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7. Uh, the Scout has a 4-up save, and the Armored has a 3-up save. Yeah, that's a slight stat upgrade on, on a couple counts. Yep, one moves faster, one moves slower. Mm -hmm. All right, so they have some options here. Uh, nothing is turret weapon, so all these are hitting on fours. And everything is free? Everything is free except for the hunter killer and the chainsaw. Yes. Um, all right, so they have a multi-laser, which they can replace with an auto cannon, a heavy flamer, a las cannon, a missile launcher, a uh, plasma cannon, they, whatever those you want. You probably take the plasma cannon, mm -hmm. but whatever. Um, the new multi-laser is strength four shots, it's strength six AP one. One damage. Everything else is exactly what you would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a Militarum Plasma Cannon, so it does not kill itself if it rolls a one, which actually might be a downgrade. It's an upgrade. That strategy never works. That strategy works all the time. It never works. You, you screen with a scout, so you screen with a sentinel, and you would shoot it on Overwatch and just try to roll the one and kill yourself, and then they're just stuck there where they were trying to get in. No, that strategy was terrible, but it was hilarious. Uh, and then the Sentinel Chainsaw gives you an additional attack at Strength User, which is 6, AP2, damage 2. That costs extra 5 points, probably won't take it, because in combat they are so bad. I really wish that was free. It would be so cool if it was free, because it's, it's still garbage, but it's, I'm not paying 5 points yeah, for that. They come with 2 attacks, they hit on 4, so like, yep. no. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much what you got. Scout Sentinels can be set up anywhere more than 9 inches away from enemy deployment zone. And Armored Sentinels uh, reduce... Uh, add oh. one to their armor saving throws against damage of one damage characteristic. There it is. Scout Sentinels can forward deploy. And they are regimental. I thought I read it too fast. I thought they could scout move. They do not scout move anymore. They now forward deploy. And then they can scout move if you take the thing. Which is so cute. Yep. There you go. Armored Sentinel uh, has plus one to their saving throw against damage characteristic one. They're both they're both fine. They're both fine. Mm-hmm. They're not doing a lot of damage. They're not surviving through a lot. They Although are the armored core. sentinel is true. Armored sentinel is fairly durable for its points yeah. cost. Actually, it's actually pretty durable it, for its points. The cost. armored sentinel has an armored cockpit, which is why it costs five points more, which gives it plus one save against damage one. Yes, which yeah. Yeah, that's like that's for forty-five points. That is stunningly durable. I actually really like sentinels of all variety. Yeah, I think armored sentinel is pretty good. Scout mm -hmm. sentinel is fine. I like the scout to have a forward deploy unit for the missions where that matters, and also because it moves 12. Yeah, you definitely want one forward deploy, but you're already taking Gaunt's Ghosts, right? So, you know. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Why not? Sure. All right, you got your Hellhound. 
And uh, I'm with the Rebel Dorn. That's fair. That's fair. So Hellhounds are uh, the same stat line that you'd expect. All of the Chimera chassis are now 11 wounds. And uh, T7, 3 up armor save, lead 7, save the tank commander. Move is 12, 8, uh, 12, 10, 8, and its weapon skill is 4, 5, 6, exactly how you'd expect. Ballistic skill, but yeah. Sorry, it's ballistic skill is 4, 5, 6. Um, there's no longer three different data sheets for the three types of Hellhounds, which is really good. It's now just a Hellhound, and you can replace its Chem Cannon, or its Inferno Cannon, with either a Chem Cannon or a Melta Cannon. Uh, and it comes with a Heavy Flamer base. You no longer have the Devil Dog and the... Uh, the Bane Wolf, yeah. The Bane Wolf. No, just a Hellhound. Yeah. So enough. you can replace every Flamer with a Heavy Bolter Melta Melta. Um, all of this, by the way, is going to be basically the same cost, I think. Armored, yeah, yeah. 110, armored tracks are 5, dozer blades mm -hmm. 5, hunter kill missiles 5, and a multi melt is yeah. 10. So all the same cost for the top gun, and these are the three options that you get. Oh, by the way, it explodes on a 5 plus. Sure. sure. Uh, so the, uh, the chem cannon is 12 inches, D3 plus 3 shots at strength 2, AP3, damage 2, but it is poison 2 plus against non vehicle Titanic. So and it is, all these are turret weapons too, so they yep. do get plus one to hit and oh, shoot out if, of combat. If they shoot out of combat is important, but because the, they a lot of these uh, don't really hit. So this one auto hits. Uh, the Inferno Cannon is the generic Hellhound one. It's 18 inches, 2d6, 6, 2, 1 turret weapon auto hits. Um, I think I like the Chem Cannon more than the Inferno Cannon, but the Inferno Cannon is still solid. Melta Cannon is Melta pretty. Cannon is kind of interesting, and that is 24 inches heavy D3, strength 9, AP4, damage D6 plus 2. If you're in half range, it's D6 plus 4, and it's, uh, if you just target it within, oh, it's a turret weapon, that's it. Oh, it's a blast! Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Melta Cannon's genuinely Melta not cannon bad. Hits. Yeah, D6 it's plus 4? Basically, it's basically shoots as hard as one Warglaive. Just like a little bit more damage. Plus two damage over the Warglaive? Yeah, but like it's still D3 shots that hit on threes with no rerolls. True. But plus two damage is a, is a big buff. It, it is a big buff, yeah. Uh, you can buy all the tank upgrades that you'd expect. Those blade and armor tracks are the same on everyone. Hunter Killer Missile is the same on everyone. These are also 110, so they're like not that expensive. They're not. No, uh, if, I think Hellhounds are perfectly fine. I like them. I think Hellhounds are good. Mm -hmm. But you know what is really good and really cool and awesome looking and just all around uh, amazing? It's a new plastic kit called the Rogel Dorn Battle Tank. Yeah, the Rogel Dorn is super awesome. And this thing's great. I just want to own one, honestly. I I will own three. I'm sure that you will. Uh, it's it comes with either the uh, it comes with either a twin battle cannon or an oppressor cannon, mm -hmm. and then it can take either a cascader gatling cannon or swap that out for a pulverizer cannon, which is like a hull mounted. Uh, battle cannon basically yep. and it can take armored tracks it can either have two it can have two melted guns or two additional heavy stubbers it comes with two heavy stubbers already it comes with one heavy stubber. Comes, sorry one heavy stubber can get two additional mm -hmm. or it can get two melted guns and then it can either have two heavy bolters or two multi maltas yeah yeah so let's talk about the main gun the main gun is either a pull um, an oppressor cannon or a twin battle cannon Mm -hmm. Oppressor Cannon is my favorite, personally. D6 plus 3, strength 10, AP3, damage 4, with blast and turret. And the Twin Battle Cannon is a uh, heavy 2D6, strength 8, AP3, damage 3, with blast and turret. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you go over the stat line. Yeah. This thing moves 10, 8, 6, as it takes wounds. Uh, weapon skill 6, obviously. Ballistic skill 4, 5, 6. Strength 8, toughness 9, with 17 <laughs> wounds. 6, D6, and D3 attacks. Leadership 8. Solid. Higher than Sank Commander. Thank you. And a 2-up save. So toughness 9 with 17 wounds means this thing is not going away at any kind of speed. Yeah. If it keeps Armor of Contempt, it is tougher. If not, it is merely tough. Yes. Uh, and it has a wide variety of uh, guns here. So the Oppressor Cannon is my favorite. That one's strength 10 as opposed to strength 8 with four, damage 4 instead of damage 3. It's d6 plus 3 shots instead of 2d6. It also comes with a coax auto cannon. Oh yes, sorry. The oppressor cannon comes with a coax auto cannon, that is a turret weapon at just an auto cannon. So yep. auto cannon turret weapon can shoot at different targets, which is weird. That's not how coax works, but like whatever, that's fine. Yeah. Um, then the pulverizer cannon or the castigar gatling. Castigar gatling is twenty-four inch range, twelve shots at strength five, AP one, damage one. Solid. And the pulverizer cannon is twenty-four inch, D six, strength eight, AP two, damage three, blast. It's all that's free, you know that's all free. All of it's free. Armored tracks cost five, heavy bolters cost five, additional heavy stubbers cost five, so not the one it starts with. Melted guns cost five, and multi melts cost fifteen. Yep. This thing hits 
really hard. And the unit itself is 250 points for a toughness 9, 2 up armor save, 17 yeah. wound model. Uh, yikes. That yeah. is... As soon as you take those heavy stubbers, it'll go to 260. And then if you want to add sponsons, it could go up to 270 yeah. or more. It doesn't, you don't have to take the heavy stubbers. You don't, but I think I want to if I'm banging the ignore cover. Oh yeah, if you're taking ignore cover, you take you three just heavy load stubbers. And two heavy bolters, and you're just like, dice. Yeah, that's a lot of dice. It's a roll. lot of dice. It's a lot of dice. Because you know that one tank gets to reroll hits with Lord Solar nearby. It's going to be this one. It's going to be that one. You could take the caster, Gatling Cannon, or the Pulverizer. They're both fine. Depends on what you're worried yeah. about teching into. Honestly. I like the Pulverizer because it's it's a three damage gun and it's good anti-tank. It is good anti-tank. But it's only 24 anti -tank. inches. Yeah, whereas the... So if you fire... If you take only anti-infantry stuff, mm -hmm. you will be... Uh, 12 shots straight 5 AP 1 damage 1. Now remember these have on 4s, but reroll hits is very nice. Yep. Then 9 shots with heavy stubbers. So 9 shots straight mm -hmm. 4 AP 0 damage 1 ignores cover. 6 shots with the heavy bolters. Uh, and then 2 shots with the coax auto cannon. Or you can swap out the caster gatling for like another battle cannon. You probably do take the battle cannon just so when something's within 24 you're like dead. Yeah, that's the main thing. I don't want survivors within 24 and I can probably already kill infantry within 24. Let's just make sure that it's just yeah. like it's gone. If you ignore cover, AP2 is good enough, even into like. Even into big stuff, yeah, AP2 yeah. ignore cover is perfectly fine. Yeah. That is very cheap for toughness 9 with 17. Yeah. Now, when you consider that this thing kitted out is getting very close to 300, because it's 250, goes to 270 with ignore cover, and then if you start buying all those, those upgrades, it's about 290. Remember that 2 Lehman Russ is 300. Yeah, I think it's 295 with the loadout we talked about. Yeah. Which, I mean, two that is Lehman very Russ, good. Two Lehman Russ are not 300, because you also have to pay for their upgrades, too. Sure, it's 310. But like, I'm, sure, that's just Heavy Bolter, not like mm -hmm. any other upgrades. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then, like, you compare that to a Rogelborn. I still think you want one Rogelborn. I don't think you want two. I could see two just standing next to each other and both getting tank orders. Yeah. Because they are very tough, and for their stat line, they're, they start incredibly cheap. Mm-hmm. 250 for that salad is pretty crazy. Yeah. Like you can have one at 290, uh, 295 with the armor tracks, mm -hmm. and then you can get a second one at 300 with one of the 25 point upgrades that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. There's and plenty of good options. A lot of damage. Now they need to stand next to each other to both receive the same tank order. That's. But you can give them two different tank orders because Leontis is on a larger base. I, mm -hmm. I would assume we, we don't have the model. But I was assuming he's on a looks like he's like a Belisarius call kind of guy. Yeah, and it's 12 inches for mechanized orders. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty easy to have one over here, one over here, and just give both of them different tank orders. It's very easy. And just... Yeah, I, they're great. Again, I'm, I don't know if I want three, but I want three. I want to own... I want to own one. That's, yep. that's the amount. Yeah, Rogelborn hit pretty good. All right, we've got the Heavy Weapon Squad next. Heavy Weapon Squad ends up uh, being exactly what you think. Which is, uh, it's Guardsman Profile with two wounds and two attacks, Leadership 6. It hasn't changed at all. Uh, all of its options are free. You can get an Auto Cannon, Laz Cannon, Missile Launcher, or a Mortar, or Heavy Bolter. All of those are the same, and it comes with the Laz Gun per guy. The only thing that changed is the Mortar. A little bit of an aside, I really don't like how all the weapons are free. Not because I don't think it's like... It's, it's perfectly balanced. I, I don't think it's unbalanced. Yeah. What I think, it, it just flattens everything together, right? Like, you're never going to take a flamer when you can take a plasma gun for the same points cost because they're yep. baked into the unit. I wish the units were cheaper and the, the weapons cost points because then there might be reasons yep. to take each of the weapons. Whereas when a heavy bolter, when a missile launcher is the same as a las cannon, you're not taking the missile launcher. Yep, you just aren't. And that's, that sucks. Yeah, um, a heavy you're weapons. Not a heavy bolter either. No, absolutely not. No, a heavy weapons squad is fifty-five points. Uh, you could give them las cannons, or you could give them mortars. The mortar is just the same as before, but strength five. So it's d six shots, strength five, AP dash damage one. Uh, again, we don't know if they um, are going to take the um, the indirect penalty. They don't have the artillery keywords. They don't synergize particularly well with the uh, the big stuff. Um, but heavy weapons teams just doing heavy weapons team things. Their platoon. Uh, their core, so they can just take passive rerolls from Leontes. They can take full rerolls if they want. You can give them basically any orders you want. So take aim on a mortar squad does make them before an indirect nerf hit on threes at strength five AP one damage one. If that takes an indirect nerf, that's kind of back to a normal spot. 
But uh, it's not terrible. It's a good thing to like have a splash order to. We're like, yeah, I'm going to tell these guys to take aim. And um, also the heavy weapons team, sure. Why not? Yeah, it's 55 points. It's nothing crazy, but it's yeah. not valueless. Yeah, but like I think the part where the point where the equivalent mm -hmm. points cost really hurts are like with the coming up field ordnance battery. Yeah. And even less turrets. All being the same is crazy. All being the same points cost means there's only like... Like you're not going to take a demo, a battle cannon ever, or a demolisher cannon. Sorry, you're not going to take a demolisher cannon ever. Yeah. Because it's the same points cost as the like executioner plasma cannon. It's just better at the same role. Yeah. It's just more shots, more range. Yeah. More. It's also higher AP. Hilariously. Yeah. So like they have to try to make all like six of the turret up options mm -hmm. the same efficacy, and if they're not, then they're terrible. <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's a little weird. It's just weird. It. Also on the infantry squads, you're just if you have flamers on any of your infantry squads, just take them off. You're never going to take a flamer ever again. Yeah, I mean, maybe next edition. Maybe <laughs> next edition. Uh, the field ordnance battery is the next indirect piece. This one does have artillery, and this is the new one that is found in the Cadia stands box set. Uh, the model's pretty cool. Uh, it's also on a big base. It's on a hundred mil. So you can take two of them in a squad. There's no choice. It is just a two-man squad for 130. All points are locked. Nothing else matters. Um, and they have one of three options. Their stat line is it's like an artillery piece. So it's move six, weapon skill, move six, skill four. Strength three, toughness four, six wounds, three attacks, leadership six, and a four-up save. Um, they are not core, but they are platoon and regimental. Platoon means they take normal regimental orders. Notably, you can tell them to take aim. That is probably the best one on them. How many points are these? 130 for two. So 65 per model, but you can only take a two man. Never less, never more. So you can take two, four, six. They're pretty fragile. They are pretty fragile. I'm shocked their toughness four or the four up. They I are. They'd be something like toughness no, they six are, or the three up. They are really. They're really fragile. Really fragile. They're really fragile. Um, so they come with uh, one of three big guns, and then everyone also has two las guns strapped on the base. And that is the bombast field gun. This is the indirect. It is D6 shots. A seven minus two damage to blast, but if you give it ta uh, take aim, it would get plus one to hit, so theoretically hitting on threes, and it would get plus one AP, so strength seven AP, three damage to. If Creed was the one who ordered this, it's strength eight. And so theoretically, if there's no indirect nerf, I would expect to see two units of field ordnance with Creed. I would expect to see three. 100 mil bases, man. They, but like the second a, an intercessor squad sees this, you start picking up it. <laughs> like T4 of the four up save man, as soon as they're seen, they're dead, which means you can't hide them mostly and just take a little bit of fire, because as soon as they take a little fire, they're dead. Also, Creed uh, can only issue the same order. I, I do know that. I was so, saying, I think the plus one strength, even if you don't have take aim, you give them anything else, and it's like plus one strength, like cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, hiding two is easy. I would be surprised if you couldn't hide three on most boards. I, I we'll see when we actually have uh, have it all built and painted and ready on the stream. But um, still, uh, you also have the option for heavy last cannon. That's forty eight inch heavy two strength ten AP four damage D three plus three. These things hit super hard. Again, you can take aim them, which makes them AP five hilariously. They're fantastic anti tank, but they are fragile and they're direct line of sight. So if they're shooting it, they're getting shot back. And they're, they are artillery, so they don't take the hit penalty. Nope. So you can like nose them out, try and pick an angle. They can stay safe largely through range. Yeah. Because they have 48 inch range, and a lot of the things that just pick them up in like one shot are either threat overloaded or closer range. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see a unit of this sticking its nose out yeah. at strength 10 AP5 damage D3 plus three with four yeah. shots to hit on threes. It's not bad. Uh, I just think that's a little more than I would pay for that. Uh, finally, you can take a Malleus Rocket Launcher, which is heavy D6 plus 6, strength 6, AP 1, damage 1, and a blast. This feels like the weakest option. It's direct line of fire. It is direct line of fire, but like if you if you give it take aim, it's strength, it's AP 2, and if you give it Creed, it's strength 7. Yeah. And that's the part where I think like you can start really swarming people with damage. Yeah, it's still damage 1, which means it's like good at killing infantry, which I just feel... It, it's not that it's a bad stat line, I just feel like there are so many ways to kill one wounded infantry in this book. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, so you probably many. don't, because it's direct line of sight and it will die. Yeah, if it was indirect, that would be like an a interesting option, but it's direct and it's like, eh. Yeah. Uh, next up is the Lehman Rest Battle Tank. Uh, I think we have covered almost everything in it, but... Uh, Yep, so its stat line is exactly the same, even down to the leadership, as the tank commander. Yep, it is 100% the same. Uh, 
the all the weapons are the same. Mm -hmm. I believe the points cost is the same. Yeah, it's a, it's a 150 instead of 160. You can take one to three in a squadron, but they split up after you deploy them. Yep. So they, yep. they're set up exactly the same as like an armature squadron, where they're set up within six inches of each mm -hmm. other, and then start of the game, they're separate units. Yep. So it yeah. has regimental and squadron. Those are the keywords that and matter. And smoke. And smoke, yeah. It, it, has all, it has all the keywords you'd expect. It's a battle tank, of course. It has all the normal keywords for a tank. Yeah, it's priced, I think, the same as a tank commander. Uh, it's 10 points less. All the upgrades are the same, though. Yep, yep, yep. All the upgrades are the same. So they're pretty cheap. Like, honestly, they're pretty yeah. cheap. Their turrets are, none of them, like, stand out to me as, like, oh, my God. I like the Executioner as a, just a solid stat line. Yeah, it's fine, I think. I think it's the best of them. It's not anything like insane, but I think it's the best of the choices. Yeah, you can't tank. You can't take aim them, so they don't get plus. Well, they get plus when they have the turret weapon, but they don't get plus one AP. No. But they will get you know reroll hit rolls of one or count people as double for blast. Yeah. Things like or that. the minus two move. Minus two move is pretty good, but you have to hit them what five times? Five times with all your weapons. Which depends. It's not bad. Yeah, that that would be an excellent reason to give the rogue Dorn the extra heavy stubbers. That's the main reason I actually want that. Okay. Yeah. Lehman Rest Battle Tank is fine. Yep. No issues. You don't hit the Basilisk because the Lehman Rest was just things we already did. Yeah, yeah, I'll take these. Sure. All right. Uh, Basilisk is exactly the same as a Hellhound in terms of stats. Yep. All the Chimera uh, Bricks are the same. Yep. Move 10, Ballistic Skill 4, 5, 6, Strength 6, Toughness 7, 11 Wounds with a 3 up save. Yeah. It is uh, T7 now, which is nice. It used to be T6. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Uh, it's got an Earthshaker Cannon, which has a, an insane range. It has a 20 foot range. Yep. So, you know, have fun with that. Heavy D6 plus 3 instead of 2D, instead of 2D6 pick the highest, mm -hmm. which I think D6 plus 3 is just way better. It's way better, way yeah. Way better. Um, strength 10, AP 3, damage 2, blast, mm -hmm. and it can target units and not visible to the bear. Yeah, strictly speaking, it's a buff over the last Basilisk. It's just a question of does it come with an indirect nerf or not. It's 140 points, and it comes with a heavy flamer, which you can replace with a heavy bolter for free. Cool. The Hydra is the uh, same profile, same stat line, 110 points, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yes. Comes with a heavy bolter, and it comes with a Hydra quad autocannon. That's the magic right there. And this gun hits super hard. Sometimes. Uh, it hits super hard. Sorry, it hits insanely hard into aircraft. Yeah. Other than that, it's just a good gun. Other than that, it's just a good gun. Mm -hmm. uh, eight shots, 72 inch range, so no hiding. Eight shots, strength 7, AP 2, damage 2. It is a turret weapon, so it gets plus one to hit natively. And then every time an attack is made with this weapon against an aircraft unit, make two hit rolls instead of one, so 16 shots. Mm, which yes. is a lot. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then add one to both hit rolls. So it's plus two to hit so against plus aircraft. Plus two to hit, so it cancels out the native mm. minus one. So mm. it's hitting on threes. Yes. With 16 shots at strength seven, AP two, damage two. Yeah, love that. Love that. Yeah, that thing hits incredibly hard. That will down a Tau Flyer. Yeah. Most of the time, 16 yeah. shots hitting on threes, like 11 hits, wounding on threes, let's say seven wounds. AP2. You get a five up. It doesn't yeah. actually kill a top. Four up. You get a six up. Sorry, six up. Sorry, six up. So it does down it like on the nose. Yeah. Which, if they have a drone nearby, it probably won't down it, and then yeah. they one CP act it full. Yeah. Or if you have a six to hit auto wound, you'll get a couple extra through. True. Yeah. You'll, you'll do good damage to a plane. Yep. Uh, it'll wound a harpy fairly significantly. It, it's unlikely to kill a harpy in one shot, but that is not insignificant damage to a harpy. True, 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 for sure. All right, we've got the... Uh, but, uh, the, <laughs> the biggest thing is if they deep strike their plane in and you don't kill it, they've bypassed the fit start, the mm -hmm. point in their turn where they can um, make full. an active top bracket. Yeah, so even if you don't kill it, you're getting real close. Mm -hmm. uh, then just chip in heavy bolter. Yep. Uh, so you've got a Manticore. Manticores are uh, just the same indirect pieces as before. Uh, they're the exact same stat line as all the other Chimera chassis. Then we need to go over it again. Uh, it's got a choice of Heavy Bolt or Heavy Flamer, and it has four Storm Eagle rockets. Uh, so actually, that's not true. It has Storm Eagle rockets, which you can fire four times. Uh, so it just can't really shoot on turn five is the only notable thing. I think that's the best way to word it, honestly. It is. It's much better this way. Uh, Storm Eagle rockets are uh, range enough. D6 plus three shots. Oh, sorry, range 10 feet, John. Yeah, enough. <laughs> if your buddy's having a problem three tables over, if he's like losing, you can totally just fire the Storm Eagle and help him. Yeah. That's in the rules. You're allowed to shoot in other games. Yeah. D6 plus three shots, strength nine, AP two, damage three. Basically, 
this is a basilisk that's instead of 10, 3, 2 is 9, 2, 3. It's the same number of shots and for every intent and purpose is the same range. A manticore costs 140, which is the exact same as a basilisk. They're very comparable. They're very comparable. The basilisk being able to shoot turn 5 is nice. The basilisk's strength and AP is nice. The manticore's damage is not inconsiderable. But I think I would probably take the Basilisk. Or can you almost us? Per, yeah, you could take both. Again, the indirect nerf matters so much, because if the indirect nerf exists, I don't think you I just don't think you I take don't him. think you take him, and I will not cry for the Manticore or the Basilisk. Yeah. I'm sorry guys, but indirect fire is just Yeah. We're just gonna hit the last indirect because it is yet again a chimeric chassis that Weird. can buy a heavy bolter or heavy flamer for free. Your choice. Uh, the Wyvern Quad Mortar, uh, Quad Storm Shard Mortar, is forty eight inch heavy four D six. You want to distinguish it from other quad storm shard mortars. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, and that is strength 5, AP 1, damage 1, blast, not a turret weapon. Notably, none of the indirect are turret weapons. Even though a wyvern is strictly the same turret as a uh, hydra, it is not a turret weapon. I'm fine with this, honestly. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need that. Um, the only notable thing about this, in my mind, is that it lost real wounds, gained a strength and an AP. But I like that you can give it the uh, pound them to dust to go max blast against a six man. And just go 24 shots? Yeah. That's pretty good. If you have the indirect nerf that is hitting on fives, then I probably don't care. But if you don't have the indirect nerf, that is not insignificant damage. Just just being like grind them to dust, shoot your six to ten man behind the wall and just go max shots, that is very good for clearing out idiots. Yeah. yeah. Clearing out nonsense. Like you fire that into a unit of dire avengers, and then the following turn you're probably just gonna kill the whole unit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and I'm You'll kill like four, and then the following turn you're just like Super Nox. All about killing super yeah, hawks. Yeah, hawks, you really just need to just have pound them to dust. Um, yeah, and you can, um, I guess you can give, because uh, you can, it's uh, squadron. You can order them? You can order them. They're, they're vehicle squadron. They're squadron, okay. So I guess you could give it real ones to hit with, uh, like you can give them all the tank orders, which is fine. Um, I think that the minus two move requires line of sight, so I don't think you're going to use that one here sure, that often. you can give them real ones to hit, because uh, doesn't that count, don't, don't you need like a master of the whatever to do You that? can do that, or you can just do the... Uh, the tank order? The tank order, I think. Uh, so I guess there's some value that the... Uh, oh, this is... I went too far. Uh, there is some value that you can use the real ones from Master Ordnance at the same time. Uh, it tells you what you can... It's it gunners kill on site. No, no, no. I'm saying the... Order, yeah. It's, it's vehicle uh, squadron. It's like one friendly squadron. Yeah, yep. and they are a squadron. They okay, are I just wanted to double check. Absolutely. Oh, we have all the cool shadow swords. Going we are... Oh, we're, there. we're just talking about the guns on those ones. <laughs> Um, yeah, so right. that wraps us up there, and you've got the Death Strike, the last, oh, last indirect piece. Death Strike. It doesn't technically shoot indirect, but it really feels it like it does. technically have a gun, other than a heavy bolt or heavy flamer, and yet a giant missile will tell you otherwise. Yes, it performs actions. Yes, it uh, is equipped with a heavy bolter, mm -hmm. and it, then it says also equipped with a Death Strike missile, but unlike conventional weapons, it's in the abilities section. Yep. So, it's exactly the same Chimera chassis. This thing is, I think, 160? Is it 150 or 160? 160. 160. All right. 160. All right. Uh, all right. So the only thing that really needs to be covered is this gigantic essay of text under Death Strike Missile. Mm -hmm. So after you've seen your opponent's army, you pick one of three warheads for it to be equipped with the God Spear, the Plasma Barrage, and the Vortex. In your uh, command phase, any number of Death Strike models from your army that have not launched their missiles can start to perform the aligned target action. Any number. Any number. So if you take three, you can do it three times. Mm. Uh, it, the action is completed at the end of your turn. If completed, you must do one of the following. One, place a Death Strike target marker anywhere on the battlefield for the model that completed this action. Or two, if a Death Strike target marker is already on the battlefield for that model that completed this action, move that marker to anywhere on the battlefield. So, um, I hate that this resolves at the end of your turn because that means that you have to do all your shooting before you fire the Death Strike. No, 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 this doesn't fire the Death Strike. Yeah, yeah, but the, I thought the action was complete at the end of the turn. Right, which doesn't actually shoot it. Yeah, that's the place the marker. I thought it was the second, the same action does it the second time. Nope. Okay, cool. The second, this, the second time you do the action, it just moves it. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, uh, it says in your shooting phase when the model is selected to shoot, if it is not within engagement range, it's Death Strike target marker on the, uh, if it's not within engagement range of any enemy units, it's Death Strike target marker is on the battlefield and it has not launched its missile, you can choose for its missile to be launched. Got it, so it is in the shooting phase, never mind. Yeah, cool. so you start the action, and then you can choose to just launch the missile anyway at the current location, or you can choose to move the marker at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. basically. So then you you pull the you pull the token and you do a thing. You do the thing and then you pull the yeah. token. And you have three missile options, and you choose which missile you want 
uh, the Start beginning of the game. Beginning of the game. So you get to see your opponent's list. So the God Spear is the one the internet freaked out about. Yeah. Uh, because it has big numbers. We I saw think this back it's the in worst Rome. one. I, it, but it's super cool. It's super cool. It is probably the worst one. Uh, it's probably better than Vortex. I think Vortex oh, is maybe. not great. Um, so you roll 1d6 for each unit within 3 inches of the center of the smallest target marker. Mm -hmm. On a 2 through a 3, that unit suffers 8 mortal wounds, which is what caused people to freak out. Four, well, no, it's the 16, because people see big number. On a 4 through a 5, that unit suffers 12 mortal wounds. On a 6, they take 16 mortal wounds, yeah. and then you remove the target. It's a 3 inch little thing. Well, no, it's a 6 inch bubble, because it's 3 inches. Yeah, yeah it's 3 radius, inches from, from the point. Which makes it bigger than 3 inches would make it look. It's, you know. It's, it's almost the size of an objective marker. Almost the size of an objective marker, mm -hmm. which is very sad. If it was exactly the size of an injector marker, it would actually be pretty good in my opinion. Yeah. But the fact that it's almost the size of an objective marker means that you can't cover a whole objective and say, you can't hold this next turn. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, if it was 3.5 inches or 4 inches or whatever, I legitimately think this thing would be great. You could take three of them and point an objective every turn and say, you can never hold this. So yeah. you just align the marker, all three on the same spot. Mm -hmm. Or you, you align one there, one on their home objective, and you say, clear off or die. Yeah, I, I think I would just use the big ones, like these, because there's one that's a larger area. Yeah, the plasma barrage hits very, very hard. Roll d6 for each unit within d6, d3 plus 6 inches of the center of the mm -hmm. smallest death strike target marker, which is huge. Minus 1 from the result if that unit is an infantry character. The average is a 16-inch circle. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Um, subtracting 1 from the result if that unit is an infantry character unit. On a 2 through a 3, they take d3 plus 1 mortal wounds. On a 4 through a 5, they take 2d3 mortals. On a 6, they take d3 plus 3, and you remove the target marker. So it does a lot of mortal wounds, but it has to. This is not a one-shot. This is not like a one-shot a turn weapon. This is a one-shot a game weapon. So to, to be worth 160 points, you have to do a lot of damage. Yeah. Like you have to do a lot it is of damage. It's pretty method. cool. It's super cool. I think the Death Strike's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think it's too easy to play around. Yeah. Like, once your opponent is like, and where exactly do these mortal wounds stop? And then they're just like, I'm going to walk to that spot. Sometimes you can get value out of that, but it's hard. Plasma Barrage is not horrific because the, the template the size is so is huge. huge, you're just hitting their whole arm. I would really just want to drop three Plasma Barrages in one spot and say, like, yeah, this, this spot is now, like, turbo bad for you. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. I, I like the God Spear, but I really wish it were four inches, so you could just point at an objective. Four inches just, would be cool. You just point at an objective and say no. Mm -hmm. You just can't have that. Uh, the Vortex Warhead, I think, is the worst. At the end of each of your shooting phases, uh, if the model's Dark Strike, Death Strike target marker is on the battlefield, roll a d6 for each unit within d3 plus three inches of the center of that marker. On a two through a three, that unit suffers d3 mortals. On a four through a five, it takes d3 plus one. On a six, they take two d3. And then on a one to three, you remove the target marker. On a four, do not remove the target marker from the battlefield, but the marker cannot be moved again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if... Uh, yeah, you can... Technically, I think this is legal. It's like a weird timing on when you actually like proc it. Versus mm -hmm. like during your shooting phase versus end of your shooting phase. It's weird. So I think that means, oh yeah, it's at the end. Yeah, okay, so that one is weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But uh, God Spear is not terrible, but you have to use the minus move stuff to force people to stand mm -hmm. in the center. And if you roll a one, yeah. you're going to cry bitter tears. And if you or, don't roll a one, yeah. whatever, like it's fine. You're gonna do like eight, twelve mortal wounds to somebody. It's that's great. That's like, super cool. It, that's the only thing this thing's doing the entire game. Doing twelve mortal wounds is like a psyker casting for. A know, good. Like, that's a good psychic like, phase. That's like a smite cast for five turns. That yeah. That never fails. Like, yeah, oh, but, right, but, like, but it but it sometimes fails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like the average number of mortal wounds of a smite cast five times without failing. But then, guess, like, yeah. you could just roll a one and do zero. I think death strikes are terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got transports though. We've got three transports. First up is the Chimera. Uh, shockingly enough, this has the exact same stat line as a Chimera. Uh, comes with a heavy Chimera heavy bolter, which is just a turret weapon. It can get a Chimera heavy flamer, which is a turret weapon, and a Chimera multi laser, which is a turret weapon. And then it comes with a normal heavy bolter or normal heavy flamer, and a single las gun array. Uh, Lasgun arrays, it looks like, can now be fired even if you don't have guys inside, which is cool. It's a rapid fire six las gun. That's it. Oh my god, if you align target, you can't even move. So you can't like run up the board with death strikes and use them as like sacrificial units. I mean, you can, you just have to stop doing the action. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, well, after they've shot, they run up the board. 
No, I, so I was thinking like, man, if it was four inches on the God Spear, you could like zone out objectives. I think triple could be like pretty good because you just tell people they can't stand on objectives the mm -hmm. whole game. But then your opponent rushes you down because you took a fifteen hundred point army. Yeah. Like they're just like, all right, I won't stand in the, on the objectives, but you're gonna die. That, that could happen. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Chimera has all the weapons you could uh, imagine, and it can take a Dozer Blade and Armor Tracks. That's fine. It holds 12, which is still interesting. Uh, heavy Weapon Teams count as 2. Ogre and Bullgrunt count as 3. Uh, the only real special rule it has, besides a very standard explosion, is that in your command phase, if one or more officer models are embarked in this transport, one of those officer models can issue one order it knows when doing so measure distances to and from this transport model. Interestingly, uh, if you stay in and do your order, I think it's exactly what you'd think. And if you get out, can you also do an order? That'd be cool. I don't think so. I believe the get out and do the order says probably like instead. If you're yeah. not, if you haven't issued an order. Yeah, I think I don't think it lets you do an extra order. Either way, it's not the biggest deal. Yeah, chimeras are perfectly fine. They're eighty-five points, which is like a little more than I would want, but holding twelve models is cool. Yeah. Next up, we've got the Torox, I wish which they were is cheaper, so you can make like a transport. Yeah, I want them to be just, just a little cheaper. Them or the infantry squad. Uh, Torox. Torox is not a Chimera stat line. We did it, folks. Also doesn't have a turret weapon, even though it definitely has a turret. It does not have a turret weapon, even though it looks like it does. Uh, so a Torox is move 14, 12, 10, so it's faster than a Chimera. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill, what you'd expect. Strength 6, toughness 6, notably tough 6. 10 wounds, meaning it's one less than a Chimera. Uh, lead to 7, 3 up save, whatever. It comes with two auto cannons and can buy a Stormbolter for 5 points, which you're probably not going to. Uh, it gets Armored Tracks built in and is 70 points. So Armored Tracks is the plus one save against damage one. That's really nice on a uh, dedicated transport. They have the crappy looking yep. track wheels. I, I like the track wheels. And then it gives them the Armored keyword. The notable thing here is that this is 15 points cheaper than a Chimera. It moves two inches further, is one less toughness, and has possibly better guns and double auto cannons. But it has no turret weapons, it doesn't have the Lies Gun Array, it doesn't hold 12 models, and it doesn't get the command vehicle. 15 points less than a Chimera, it's slightly faster. It's 70 points? 70 points. It's not bad. 15 less than a Chimera is why I like it, but the Chimera can hold an officer and a squad, and it can do orders. How fast does a Chimera move? 12. This thing moves 14? Yep, so two inches faster. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's what a Torox is. It's uh, just a cheaper alternative to a Chimera that I think I like more, but uh, it's not. It's not nothing. Uh, Valkyrie mm -hmm. is... Checks notes the next page. The next page. Checks notes 140 points and it pays five points for every bolter, five for Laz. Alright, so Valkyrie's equipped with Hell Strike Missile, Miltar, Multi Laser. It moves twenty to forty, so it's mm -hmm. kinda slow for, for flyers, like whatever that means. Yeah. Uh Bliss Skill three, four, five, so it actually is Bliss Skill three base. Sweet. Strength and toughness seven, fourteen wounds, so it is pretty chunky in the air. Mm -hmm. Uh with a three up save. And lead seven. Same as a tank commander. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it comes with Hellstrike missiles, Militar multi laser. The Hellstrike missiles are one shot, strength 8, AP 3, damage 3, plus 1 to hit against aircraft, and D3 plus 3 damage against aircraft. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Uh, but you can, um, and the, sorry, you can replace that with the two block. multiple rocket pods, yeah. which are D6 shots, blast, strength 6, AP 2, damage 1. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. You get 2D6 shots. I think that's. Probably better than a single missile shot. Yeah, it is a good missile, but yeah, yeah. it's probably better. And you can replace their multi laser with uh, a LAS cannon, which you might do, you might not. And you can give it two heavy bolters for five points apiece. You might do that. Well, six still three is nice. Yep. You can set it up in reserves uh, and it can deep strike in in the reinforcement step. Yep. I mean, you can do that, it just this doesn't cost you CP. Mm -hmm. uh, it is all the normal flyer rules. Except one. As hover jet and then. Grab, shoot, insertion. So it is actually chargeable. What's up? It's chargeable. Oh, did they forget to put that in. Yep. You can just charge with it after you move forty inches, and it can be charged. Just it's just a flyer you can charge and be charged with. This is almost certainly a mistake. That is definitely a mistake. Almost as close to positive as you could be. The one reason why you would think that it is not a mistake is that. Uh, their, their hover jets specifically doesn't, because like every single flyer has the exact same four rules. But hover jet doesn't only takes away the other two, it doesn't take away the, uh, the, no, the, charging. Air, the uh, no charging one. So they didn't copy and paste it, they specifically tech, typed out a uh, hover jet slightly different than every other hover jet that the uh, game has known. To specifically exclude the one rule they didn't give it. That could also just be somebody forgot to check it and just checked against the two that were already here. Yep. I. 
Like I, I, I would not be at all surprised if a, a, a two-week FAQ was like, um, you can't charge flyers unless they hover. Great. Yeah. That would be very reasonable. Yeah, right now, you can just walk up to it and just... Or it can move 40 inches and charge you. Which does actually matter if you're trying to tie guns up. Eh, it's an aircraft, so you don't have to make a fallback move against it. Never mind. It does it's not. Three attacks and strength seven. Yeah, it only matters if people have a, a if I am stationary rule. Sure. It forces people to take a heavy penalty. It's not inspiring. No, no. It's definitely much worse that it can be charged. Yes. <laughs> Although, I don't think it's very good. No. Uh, in your movement phase, when this transport model makes a normal move, one mm -hmm. or more units embarked on it can disembark at any point along that move. If they do so, models in the unit must be set up more than nine inches away from any enemy models. Militar armed and pestis models in the unit must be set up more than six inches away. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. If the transport model moves 20 inches or more, roll 1d6 for every model that disembarks using this ability, except Militar armed and pestis. And on a one, that model is destroyed. And models in the unit counts having made a normal move. And they cannot count as remain stationary. They cannot move further, etc. And they cannot declare a charge. Yep. It's just a cool way to bring a squad close and scions do it better. I think this thing works okay with scions and is like, meh, without everything else. It is interesting if you put uh, a the units that can get out after you've moved and you just move 20 and just show up three inches away because you like you just show up well, I thought they buffering. couldn't make a normal move afterwards right I'm saying if you don't use grab shoot I'm saying if you use the trait the mechanized trait you also can't oh I guess yeah you just you don't use that you just disembark afterwards like one inch it says accept off. aircraft in mechanized yeah um, sorry it was, that was a cool idea. Yeah, instead it will just not be taken. Uh, the Valkyrie is indeed not regimental, so it doesn't get traits, which is fine. It doesn't really need them. Um, I'm not very impressed with Valkyrie. No, I think it's not. Good. I was waiting for it to be good, and it's not, and that's okay. And I'll just you, wait a little longer. You had a um, an idea, which I thought was pretty cool, where mm -hmm. you do the flyover, you drop down uh, a squad of... Plus one to hit if they've taken casualties. Right, and you kill one of your ca uh, one of your Kasserkins. Kasserkins that has that. You give that Kasserkin squad that trait. You disembark out. You kill one of them by rolling a one, and hopefully you don't roll more than Too one. Too many, one. yeah. Because that would suck. And then you're just like, hey, hit on two. Like, hey, <laughs> the problem is that it's so easy to get plus one to hit. It's so yes, easy to get plus one. It to really hit. is. So. so I'm not that enthused about no, it. No, Valkyrie, not great. You just defense line. Oh. Is well, do you want to start with? No, I want the age defense line. Because I need to explain line. how stupid this is. Oh, I was gonna explain how stupid it is. Oh I I don't I don't we I don't know if we've talked about how stupid it is. So it's possible we're on the same we, page we here. We talked a little bit about how stupid it is? Uh, well, I guarantee I've got at least one stupid that you haven't seen yet. Right, let me let me go. Right, and you tell me I got some stupid in mind. Got some stupid in mind. I think the age defense line is the most broken fortification of the game. Uh, okay. I think that uh, it's yeah, I think it's very good. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, it works on tanks and stuff touching it, too. Uh, no. No? If, not area no. terrain feature? No, I've got, I've got some broken coming. It's okay. also not area terrain. It is. It's treated as an area terrain feature. It is area terrain with defense line. Oh, well, then that's really stupid. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think tanks benefit from it, but... They are receiving the benefits of cover. No, no they're not. They're, not. they're tanks. Yeah. Damn. But Aegis defense line is super cheap. It's 40 points. It is mm -hmm. big. So that's the problem. We don't know what an age defense line looks like. Uh, there's a picture here. Of the Wall of Martyrs. That's the Wall of Martyrs? Yep. Okay, well then they I They do not sell an age defense line on their website. Anymore. No, yeah, they, they did they like used to. 12 years ago when Planet Strike came out. Yeah, I, I remember. I still have one, defense yeah. Defense lines, yeah. But, we, but like they also used to sell a Bloodthirster 12 years ago. That's not the current one. So true. do we use this one? I don't know. Who knows? So what does it do? So after the model's set up, it's treated as an area terrain feature with the following terrain traits. Uh, defense line, light cover, heavy cover, and defensible. Your heavy cover. can't shoot it to death. Heavy and cover. you can just put it and just block people from mm -hmm. moving up the board. Which is pretty it's cool. also that. Yeah, it's a train. It's an obstacle. Yeah, it is an obstacle. Uh, it, it has defense lines, so you fight through it extra range. Yeah. Uh, light and heavy cover and defensible. So that means if your Bulgren is standing in it, they have like a one-up save against combat. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty good. Yeah, and they uh, reduce incoming AP by one. And they also reduce incoming. It's every time they take a ranged attack, though, so not. Yeah. It doesn't stack. But yeah, you, you essentially have a zero up armor save on your bulk while they're standing in this. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to know why it's stupid? Why is it stupid? It's not a unit. Right. It's Imperium. So just toss that into any Imperium army. 
Would oh, you like yeah, your yeah, custodies yeah. to get light cover, dense heavy cover, cover, and reducing coming AP by one? No, light, he heavy, light and heavy. Sure. Heavy, which is way stupid. Yeah, there. light and heavy and reducing coming AP by one. Just put a custodies in your age defense line. Yep, because it's not a unit. You can take it in anything. Yeah, it is keyword Imperium and Astro Militarum. So you know who you can ally that with? Gene Slur Cult, because it's Astro Militarum and it'll gain brood about this keyword. But it's still not a terrain for you. It's still not a thing, so you get Crossfire, and now you just put this piece of uh, light cover, heavy cover, armor of contempt in your Gene Slur Cult army. Yeah, that's pretty but, stupid. But at that point, wouldn't you just ally Tyranids to your Gene Slur Cult and put Tyrant Guard with double cover in your light cover, heavy cover, armor of contempt, Aegis defense line? Would you not put... I would know that army in the first place, John, but if, uh, if I did... Surely, surely I would take Tyrant Guard, put them in this, and get a two-up save against uh, Laz Cannons? That's something I would do. Two-up save against Laz Cannons? Yeah. Doesn't it give them a zero-up? That gives them a negative one-up, because I uh, reduce the incoming AP by one. Right, but they have a two-up save. Oh, and double, double cover. cover. Yeah. Why not, right? Why not just double cover? Yep, and this thing's 40 points. 40 points. 40 points. Just slam that into every single list if it works that way. Yeah. It's so why? definitely love just yeah, it's gaining up attempt. Like a fortification slot doesn't cost uh, any CP if it's the same keyword as your warlord. Hmm, maybe I'll use Imperium. So so fair enough. You do pay one CP for it in a Tyranid or Dream Circle Army. Yes, but in Custodies, you get a 40-point heavy cover with mm. gaining armor of contempt. Why? Yeah, Why? you take that on Shield Guard that then sit there and take a two up against AP3. Yeah, it's the same. 100%. Why wouldn't you? And if you're standing on objectives, you're just like, cool. I will do this all day. Like, Does the entire unit have to be in to benefit from heavy? No, it's model by model. Model by model. So you can just model. 10 yeah. men back and have five guys. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, like, why? The Aegis Defense Line needs an FAQ. Not even as like a, this is broken, although I think it's a little too good. It's too it's good. It's mainly that it sure. doesn't work in any way that it should work. Because it's not a unit. It's a fortification with no, like, it's, it's, not a date, it's not a unit. Yeah, it's not a unit. So when you're like, hmm, let me check to see if all of my units are uh, custodies to see if I get my Marshal Katas. Uh, hmm, looking at this, yep, this Aegis Defense Line sure isn't a unit. Sounds like all my units are custodies. Yep, it has to deploy in your deployment zone, which is... Challenge accepted. Fine. No problem. What is this thing doing? <laughs> so yeah, so again, it's area train, defense line, light cover, heavy cover, defensible. And if you're receiving the benefits of cover from a ranged, uh, from the strain feature, Worse than the armor it's penetration. Range I'm range check. Uh, so you don't. So it doesn't stack with heavy cover. It doesn't stack with heavy cover, but it, it stacks with light cover. Does. And if someone goes in and ignores light cover, don't worry. It's an area terrain feature. So your infantry are still receiving the benefits of cover. Yes. It's so only when they say they ignore, ignore all, all benefits, benefits of cover. Of cover. Yes. So if they don't ignore all benefits cover, it just works in that AP by one. So this isn't that broken in Space Marines, although they really like heavy cover. The Space Marines love heavy cover, like um, a lot. Yeah, I'm like, would you just like have this as a launching point for like all of your units? You'd be like, yeah, light and heavy cover, no problem. I'm just going to deploy on the line in this, thank you. Ugh. Uh, sisters, it's not that broken, although again, I don't mind heavy cover, but mostly because it doesn't stack with armor contempt. It's 40 points, so 40 even, points. and it's free if you're Imperium. Like it's 40 points you can just add onto your army as long as yeah. you have three detachments. <sighs> Yeah. Like, I don't know. I like my Tyrant Guard example. Get this Brood Brothers Aegis defense line in my. In your Tyrant, in my double, tyrant cover. Guard double cover list. Yeah. You, Why? You do, lose, um, you do lose your imperatives, right? If you have Gene Circle and Tyranids, yeah. But yeah. some people already do that because honestly, Tyranid imperatives are a little shaky. They're, 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 they're not. I like them, but they're not, in, they're not as imperative as the name would suggest. You yes. can play without them. Yeah, no. I often do, honestly. Aegis defense line is like the thing it's that so, custodies want more than anything it's else. It's so poorly worded because, like, it's in the guard codex, but you can just slam it into a custodies army, no penalties because it's not a unit. This is, for the record, the same problem the battle sanctum has because you can take a battle sanctum in your custodies army, no downsides. Yeah, this is this having and then, heavy cover yeah. and giving uh, armor of contempt is mm. exactly exactly what a custodies army wants. Why? And you can yeah. just deploy on the line and be like, yeah, I will ignore AP3, so... <laughs> yeah, buzz off. Like, <laughs> why? Yeah. It is you can also so take 10-man units. Like, the 30-shield guard list 
We'll just deploy in the Aegis defense line. I would just buy three. Yeah, or two, so or however many. A fortification works. allows you, I'm yeah. not really sure. No, 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 I mean, like, however many you need. However, decide based yeah. off of how big it is. The player plays terrain, that is out. real good. Heavy terrain is just something the game doesn't have. Yeah. Now, the fact it has to be deployed in your deployment zone does keep it from being stupid broken. True. But the fact any army can get, uh, half of the armies in the game, roughly, can get access to it and benefit from it. Yeah. And also, if you wanted, why not wall off your deployment zone from your opponent being able to rush you down? Yeah. Imagine knight armies. Like, yeah, ugh, knights, ugh. if you take three Aegis defense life for 120, they can't enter your deployment zone. Because they have to be deployed three inches away from each other, right? Yeah. And their bases are more than three inches wide. That's all true facts. So you just Great Wall of China, your, your deployment zone, and if you have better secondaries than them, they can, they can go away. Yeah, so the Aegis defense line just needs an FAQ to update how it works in my mind, because it doesn't really work, but that's okay. Uh, there are six Baneblade variants. Could you imagine if in the future an army gets access to like Necron level secondaries and Aegis defense line? Like if some army out there just has Necron level secondaries and sure. just, yeah. if there's like a, If there was a Space Marine 2.0 codex and they gave them new secondaries. Yeah, we don't know any of this which, for the record. We, we this don't is speculation. But at some point, some army secondary is going to be broken. And if they have access to Aegis defense line, just wall their deployment zone, yeah. you just can't. Again, also, uh, so look, show show it real quick. So the Aegis defense line, you you old guard players will remember as being like a uh, a wall of uh, bunker things. This is the Wall of Martyrs. This was sold as the Wall of Martyrs, but it's no longer on GW's website. So they don't sell the Wall of Martyrs anymore. But it used to be the Wall of Martyrs. This is an Aegis defense line. They used to sell an Aegis defense line. I don't know what model you're supposed to use. I don't know how it's supposed to work. I don't know what armies it goes in. Can I take it with Tyranids? Really shouldn't. But let me put this out there, by the way. If you heard this and you're like, I'm going to take that Tyrant Guard thing, please don't. I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. If John says he's not going to do it, then you know yeah. it must be. I, yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. And now if, am I going to ask you know, organizers, like, hey, can you please just say that this only goes in guard armies or it counts as a unit or anything? Although, honestly, I would legitimately give up Marshall Kataz for that. Yeah, Marshall yeah, like, don't do very much. Yeah, I'd also give up custody secondaries for that. No problem. Just, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, I really don't. Mm, I, Stand Vigil is better than replacement by a lot. <laughs> Just trust me on that. I'll, I'll engage the front. It's OK. All right, well, let, let's hit these super heavies. because that's behind your Aegis defense line. <laughs> all right, Baneblade. So I believe all of their profiles are, uh, some of them have 30 wounds, some of them have 28 wounds. I believe there's one kit that has 30 and one kit that has 28. No, it's all one kit. They changed that? I thought there were two kits for Baneblade. They used to make one, and then they uh, added an upgrade sprue and started selling it as a new one. I see. Yeah, but they don't sell the old one anymore. It's just like, yeah. Well, some of them are 30, some of them are 28. We'll just point out which ones are rich. Sure. Um, they are all move 10, I believe. They are all weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, 5, 6. All a 2-up save. All a 2-up save with toughness 9, strength 9. Leadership 8, higher than tank commander. Sure, sure, sure. Which, fair enough. The, uh, the main blade I'm not mad about. Blade I'm not mad higher. about the main blade. I think it should be tied, but whatever. Yeah. So they... I mean, they're they're all basic. Just, just just hit all of them, honestly. Yeah. So uh, everyone has its choice of sponsons, where it comes with one sponson and can buy a second pair of sponsons. Right. They can Every all single one has additionally that. be equipped with two lascans and two twin heavy bolters, mm -hmm. or two lascans and two twin heavy flamers. Yeah. So everyone comes with two las cannons and two twin heavy bolters. Right. And they can choose to buy that a second time, and you only pay for the las cannons, which I believe are. How much last cannons? Are they 15 They're or 10? That it's like not that expensive. Last cannon each is 20, but they come with a twin heavy bolter or yeah. a twin heavy flame. So 40 points, any of these can take four heavy bolters, two last cannons. I honestly think you just slam that down. And if you're taking this, maybe this one ignores cover. And it's just putting out eight heavy bolters that ignore cover. Why not? Yeah. Flop shots. All right. So then the biggest difference are their guns. Yep. The Bane Blade cannon comes with a coaxial auto cannon, which mm -hmm. cool. Why not? Uh, it is turret weapon blast, 72 inch range, heavy 3d6, strain 9, AP3, damage 3. That's the Bane Blade at 30 wounds. The Bane Hammer is 36 inch range. A note on the Bane Blade, it has a demolisher cannon as well. Cool. Yeah. Just it's a demolisher cannon, it's normal. So it's a demo cannon and a Bane Blade cannon. Yeah. It's cool. It's mainly because the Bane Blade cannon is kind of garbage compared to the other ones. The demolisher so. cannon on this one is d6 damage. Indeed. It is down. not a Lehman Rust demolisher, it is a normal demolisher cannon. Sure. It's also not a turret weapon. Yeah, Woo! so it hits on fours. The Bane Hammer is, I'm just going to go through all the guns. Sure. 
Banehammer, 36 inch range, heavy 2d6 plus 3, strength 1083, damage 3, turret weapon, and then this one, is that the one that you must cover or not? Uh, it's a firing deck, you can shoot out of this one. Firing deck, you can shoot out of it, it has transport of 25. Does the Bane Blade hold? Nope, it holds nothing, but it has armored tracks. They all have armored right. tracks. A Bane Sword has a Quake Cannon, which is d6 plus 6 at 96 inch range. Strength 14, AP 4, damage 4. Blast. Blast, sure. I think they're pretty much all blast. The Doom Hammer is 48 inch range magma cannon, heavy D6 plus 3, strength 10, AP 5, damage D6 plus 2, and if you're in half range, mm -hmm. D6 plus 4. That hits pretty hard. Yep, that one's uh, transport. Transport and firing deck as well, which means you can shoot out of it. Mm -hmm. The Hell Hammer has the Hell Hammer cannon, heavy 3D6 plus 6, which is a lot, but only strength 7, AP 2, damage 2 at 36 inch range, and then uh, ignores light cover. And that one also comes with a coax auto cannon and a demo cannon. Okay. Yep. Then the shadow sword, this is the big, big ed, chunker. Big chunker cannon. Um, it has the <laughs> volcano cannon, 120 inch range, heavy D3 plus 3, strength 18. So just prepping for all those T9 targets. Yep. Strength 18, AP 5, damage 12. Sure. It's a turret weapon, even though it can't move the turret. It's a turret weapon. <laughs> it's fixed in place. It can't move the you turret. You rotate that whole little tank to line up Bellicor. <laughs> yes, Bellicor will find out. <laughs> yeah, minus one damage. So damage 11. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be the clenchiest CP roll I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> Bellicor's like, fail the ah! first one, You fail the second, you're like, this is the last save I have to take. <laughs> All right, Stormlord, uh, Vulcan Mega Bolter is heavy 20, strength 6, AP 2, damage 2. Sure. Yeah, why not? I mean, that's like, yeah. by far the worst gun. It's a transport and a firing deck. It is transport and firing deck. And finally, the Storm Sword, which might be my favorite. I'm not sure. Uh, D6 plus 6 shots, strength 12, AP 4, damage D3 plus 3, ignoring light to cover. I like that one. That was probably it's, my favorite. I think that's the perfect range of like still hits hard enough to like rinse a conventional tank. And also does pretty good into infantry. It's the Bane Sword, which for people who didn't know, is the uh, D6 plus 6, strength 14, AP 4, damage 4 turret weapon that mm -hmm. does not ignore light cover. Yeah. That one is the cheapest. Yeah, I so like I, the Bane Sword a lot. I like the Bane Sword a lot. I think it's actually, is I think it, it's better than the Storm Sword for 30 points cheaper. Yeah, uh, th are they both 31 versions? Yes, they're both 31 and versions. And neither of them have uh, transport capacity? Correct. So it's basically, it's. Less, it's what is it? Is it higher strength? Strength higher four. strength, two higher strength. Yeah. One higher AP. Oh no, same AP. This one, Storm Sword, ignores light cover and is D3 plus three. This is just the flat four. Sword does not and is flat four, but is a higher strength and 30 points cheaper. Yeah, 30 points cheaper is not irrelevant. Also, 96 inch range versus 60, so you know. Yeah, that's always factor that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can shoot anything or you can shoot anything and it's better. Yeah, so Bane Sword and Storm Sword. I think those are the best two. They're, they're both D6 plus 6, high strength, high AP, high damage, but not so few shots. And they're also cheaper than a Bane Blade. Like, it's cheaper than a Bane Blade, and that makes me happy. But you're it not. Averages more shots, like like one shot less than a Bane Blade, at like such a better stat line. You're just not getting that many hits out of this thing. Like, it's like nine shots for a 450 yeah. point model. Yeah, hits on threes. It's like 420, but you have to actually Again, pay for all the last game. I think you just have Leontis tell it to reroll hits. Can you? I think he can give it orders. Can, I think he can tell it to reroll. I think he just orders it. Yeah, core battle character tank. or battle and he's tank. Probably not battle these tank. are not battle tank. Okay, so he can give it reroll ones to hit. Does he? Yeah, yeah, because you can give it a tank order. Oh, for, for yeah, reroll yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. So hit on threes, reroll ones. What are the other ones? You can give them objective secured, which is hilarious. Uh, max blast, which is sometimes hilarious. Yeah, some some yeah, not always max blast. It's double models for blast. When that comes up, it's hilarious. Like, look, yeah, if you the, find that that ten man Terminator squad, and you're like, well, if I can't reroll hits, we might as well be twelve shots. Well, the Hellhammer will just have twenty four shots. Yeah, but those are not Hellhammer stats that I want. No, they are not. Yeah, no, I don't want that. No, no I no, want no. I want the damage no, D three sure. plus three into these Terminators. Yeah, Bane Hammer fifteen shots. It's strength ten AP three damage three. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's what I want. And then you know, Venge for Cadia. Just make sure. Can it vengeance? Uh, I think anything could vanish. I think it's K oh, no, it's Platoon. No, it's right. Kadia. It's Kadian or within si or platoon, platoon within six within of a Kadian officer. There's very few ways to actually buff these mm -hmm. these guns. Yep. And they just hit on threes. You can make them reroll ones, 
with a Leontis tank order, and you need Leontis, and you want Leontis anyway. I, I will. Yeah. Um, they're very hard to kill. Yeah. They do a decent amount of damage. Uh, yeah. They do a good amount of damage. The problem is everything that isn't the siege cannon, everything that isn't the main gun, is going to be hitting on fours rerolling ones. And that's the point where it's like, yeah, you're firing 24 heavy bolter shots, yeah. but, yeah. you know, it's just you're going to get like... 14 hits, if you're not minus one to hit, if you are minus one to hit, just get out of here. But you're gonna get like 14 hits, you're gonna get like nine wounds at AP one, two damage. You have a couple of LAS cannons. I'm actually not that sold on these things. I, I like them. I mean, again, that's you can take them for like sub 400 points. And that's like, oh, okay, that hits no, hard. No, you can't, because each LAS cannon, and it comes with two, each LAS cannon's 20 points. Oh, you have to pay for the LAS cannons you already have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so it's 40 points more than I thought. Yeah, so yeah, the 391 is actually 430, and if you want to take the other two last cannons, it's actually 470. And if you want to take a, a uh, I hate that so much. Tank I ace. hate so much yeah. that like half of the guns are built in, half of them are. If you want to take All a right. tank ace, that guy's 500 points. And the, it's like that's the cheapest. One. Yeah. The very last rules in here are the cyan rules, and I'm going to hit all three at once. Yep. Uh, the military of Tempestus Command Squad is an elite, as an HQ choice that comes with an officer. It's all the same rules as a command squad that you'd expect. They're the same stat line you'd expect. A scion is a ballistic skill three guardsman with a four up save, the leadership seven, and the Tempestor Prime's leadership eight. Um, they take special weapons exactly how you would think, which is that any number of scions can be replaced with all the special weapons we've listed so far, but don't worry, you can only take one per unit. You can take a med pack for the five up female pain and the keyword. You can take a regimental standard for the lieutenant or and the keyword. Uh, you can take a tempestus command rod, which means that your uh, your commander knows the prefectus orders in addition to regimental orders. This is cool, but uh, he can only issue prefectus orders to tempestus sign units, whereas he can give uh, anyone the regimental orders. Uh, but it doesn't let him uh, give extra orders, and he only issues one. So he issues one regimental or prefectus to a scion at that point. Um, a Master Vox is still just uh, the Voxcaster keyword, and you can give it to Voxcasters far away. And that's it. It gets all the uh, other upgrades, again, that you'd expect, but it's all one per, one per, one per. They're basically all built in, except for the Plasma Pistol you can buy the Sergeant. And they get a couple of special rules. Uh, the Tempestor Prime is a 5-up minimum from his refractor field. That's cool. Uh, aerial Drop. They can Deep Strike. This is a pet peeve of mine. You can disembark out of a transport and issue an order. You can't Deep Strike and issue an order. And I think that they should have just put that in. Because it only affects the Military and Tempestus Command Squad. And just would have been nice if the squad could Deep Strike and give an order immediately. Just one order. Just one. Yeah, yeah. That's all I would have asked. And then affect two units. Like, that's fine. Sure. Yeah, like, who cares? Actually, no. I think when you get out of a transport, you don't get to Splash. Yeah, so if you deep strike and don't get to splash, I'm okay with that, yeah. for the record. Uh, Stormtroopers, they get exploding sixes to hit. They are not regimental. That means they don't get the traits. They just get Stormtroopers as an, a kind of a, a replacement for a trait, exploding sixes. They don't get Born Soldiers. I would rather just have Born Soldiers. Yep. Um, military uh, Tempestus Scions are the exact same stat line as the Command Squad. Just to the, to the dot, the Tempestor is leadership eight, everyone else lead seven, all the same stats. Uh, it's a five-man unit that can take five more models. There's no heavy weapon in the team here. That's what you'd expect. It's out of the kit. And you cannot select the same weapon more than once per unit unless you contain 10 models, and then you can select twice. So it is exactly what you'd expect. It's you build the, the weapons out of the box. You can take two special weapons per five, but only one of each. And then you take four special weapons per 10, but only two of each. Uh, everything's free except for the uh, like the plasma pistol that you might buy, Sergeant. And they get Stormtroopers for Exploding Sixes and Aerial Drop for Deep Strike. They're elites, not troops. They are core. They are platoon. They are not regimental. So again, it's like taking a Kastrican squad that Deep Strikes for an extra point. These are, by the way, pointed. Uh, a Stormtrooper squad is, I believe, 11 points per model. And let's just double check. Tempestus Scions are 11 points per model. And the Tempestus Command Squad is 95 points. 95 for five is... That's harsh. That's rough, man. Because it's <laughs> just, it just does the same things as a normal command squad with better ballistic skill, but you can't really buy weapons for it. So it's 20 points more to just be a command squad, the deep strikes that you don't want to do because then you can't issue orders on turn one or two. Ugh. Without, if, they, if they got regimental instead of the exploding sixes, there could be so many interesting things here. But there's just not. Because they don't synergize with a lot of the rules that rely on regimental. They seem designed to be taken like by themselves. Yeah, yeah. The warlord traits and relics are cool if you take them in mass, but but they just don't have units that provide that hammer. 
on your opponent. Like, yeah. they have units that move, like they have, well they have unit, they have unit. Mm -hmm. And that unit can do one thing fairly well, if it's a troop, it's obsec, it moves around, deep strikes, like all good. But it can't hurt your opponent in a way past hotshot las guns and like one plasma gun per squad. Yeah, so well, that is a role your army straight up will not have. Now you can ally them into something, and that's interesting. You can ally them into like, into like uh, custodies who don't have that. You can take like uh, two command squads through, you know, four units of scions or something. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. You're probably not going to do yeah. that. I would just do the patrol. I think just one command squad and three scions. Three scions cost you two. Some CP. auxiliary units if you want. It's fine mm -hmm. at that role, but as an army in itself, certainly not. And then, as you said, like it doesn't, it doesn't. Have regimental it doesn't combo with anything. Yeah, that's the biggest the biggest sin to me is that they don't synergize particularly well because they're not regimental. I get it. Like they didn't have regiment traits in the original book, then they got scion traits as a special their own thing if they were in their own detachment. I really wish that you could take born soldiers because if if Tempestus scions aren't born soldiers, who is? Yeah, the problem with making troops choice, and this is functionally a troops choice. It's, it says it's elites, but like. Yeah, you're never taking this. It's just a, you could take a five man for fifty five points, and you can deep strike it and try to do. Yeah, you maybe you take a six man. man. Try to do man. Nachman data, Nephilim data, whichever one we're on right now. Nephilim. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the problem with I'm talking about like Tempest, Tempestus mm -hmm. like army. Yeah. The problem with making a troops choice as like your only unit. Is that it's either broken or it's not? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's either not. a troops unit that also has killing power, and you can spam it now, and you're like, oh, that was a mistake, or you just have an army that has only troops, and troops generally tend to be like decent at scoring, but if your opponent has any kind of reasonably good army, they just run you over. Yes, and they just can't. You just can't do anything to stop them. Yep. The final um, uh, data sheet is the uh, the Torox Prime, that, that special boy. A Torox Prime uh, is the same stat line as a Torox, but ballistic skill three, which is nice. It moves fourteen. Yeah. And it's T six ten wounds three of armor safe. Uh, it's a transport holds ten, but it only holds military tempestus, officio, officio perfectus, or auxilia units. Uh, same thing as before. A Bulgrin uh, counts as three. Um, so you can get a three man in there and like end like an and a commissar, I guess. Can you just take this as a dedicated transport? You can't, team? yeah, because uh, it has to. You cannot t include more Torx primes than military and tempestus infantry units in its attachment. So you can't even take it as that. It is also not regimental, so it doesn't get traits. However, it doesn't have stormtroopers, so it doesn't have exploding sixes. So where stormtroopers have like exploding sixes as like a replacement for a trait, which is not a bad thing to have, but I would rather have the trait and the keyword. This has none of that. Is it exploding sixes to hit with? Uh, Any attack thing. It's, yeah, so it's in combat too, which you know that's cool. Well, I was wondering if it was just with hotshot weapons. But oh no, no, it is. It is everyone. Um, the Torx Prime weapons stunningly got a little bit worse in some aspects, better in some. It can take two auto cannons, which is the same as before. A battle cannon for Torx is D6 shots at seven one two blast forty eight. Not a turret weapon, notably. Yeah, but it's it ballistic has skill a three. turret. It, it, it is mounted on a turret. But it's ballistic skill three instead of turret weapons, which I'm fine with. But the regular Torx doesn't get turret weapon, even though it also has, has a, a turret. turret. Yeah, and I don't really get that. Um, then it can take a Torx Gatling cannon, which is twenty four inches heavy, twelve, not twenty twelve. It lost eight shots. Strength 4 AP 1 damage. Remember, one. That thing used to be broken. That was like beginning of yeah. the edition. And it can take a Torox Hotshot Volley Gun, which is probably better than a normal one, because it's 24 inch rapid fire 3, strength 4 AP 2 damage 1. Weirdly less range than a normal gun, but an extra shot, slash 2 in rapid fire range. But the two Torox Hotshot Volley Guns are pretty good. Finally, it can take a Torox Missile Launcher, which is a 48 inch range, heavy 2 missile launcher, or a 2d6 frag launcher. Um, the Torox Prime is just a little too expensive and also comes with a, a uh, Scion sized attacks. This makes me very sad, but it's 105. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, this no. thing does, like, it's 35 more than a Torox, and it's ballistic skill 3 and shoots harder than a Torox. All its weapons are free, but it does not shoot 35 points more than a Torox, and oh. it doesn't justify Scions, and Scions don't justify it. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, Scions are overcosted for if you're trying to make your entire army that. Torox primes are very overcosted, actually. 105 for that is like, oh, I don't like it. No rerolls means it's going yeah. to shoot. Like, if it was like 80 points, I could see it. I could see taking a bunch of Torox. But primes. then you'd have to take a bunch of Scions, which you could. At that point, I think it's fine because they're objective. Like Tempestus Scions are fine at yeah. the troops, obsec, running around roll. That they're fine at that. They're yep. actually pretty good at that. 
But then, if you're doing that, the rest of your army sucks. So like, you don't yeah, my problem is that 10 Scions in a Torox is going to run you 215. It's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. Pretty expensive. I would be very interested to see the next Codex that comes out. Because yeah. what's happened a lot in this book... Boom. Done. What's happened a lot in this book is they've moved towards uh, all weapon options, with some exceptions, are free. Mm -hmm. And most weapon options have been restricted to like a certain amount for the unit. So yeah. like you can't double up on any of them. So you end up with units that can take like a flame or a plasma and a melt gun, which is just so useless because they can yeah. never do one thing well. They do like everything not great. Yeah. And then I mean, you never dedicate them to that thing. For 55 points a model, for a Scion squad to deep strike in with one plasma and a, a melta, it's like three shots at ballistic skill three. It's not terrible. Yeah. I, I just wish you could give them orders after they came in. Yeah. Which you can't. You just strictly cannot order them on the turn that they arrive from reserves. Which, again, that feels so weird. Like, how, how does the Scion Prime not have the ability to deep strike and give orders to his Scions? How does the, the Command Rod not let him give orders to Scions? Yeah. Like, that just feels like such a weird miss. Yeah, it does. But in, there's a lot of good in here, too. There's a lot of good in here. The army functions very mm -hmm. differently. It's going to be very interesting. It does not appear broken, although there are some things in here that seem a yeah. little too good. Casterkins Caster can do too many mortals. Casterkins do too many mortals, and I think that's the biggest thing. I also think Born Soldiers may have just been a miss to apply army-wide. Like, that's just really good. Considering that they have 90% of it right now, I don't think that Born Soldiers inherently problematic. No, I don't think Born Soldiers inherently problematic. It always just felt like a uh, Band-Aid, and now the Band-Aid is just in the regular Codex, too. Yeah, but it's instead of a trait. Yeah, it's it's a really good trait, though. It's a great trait. It's an amazing trait. Yeah. Um, but what's weird to me is that all of the main weapon options on all of, like, everything, 90% mm -hmm. of weapon options are all free. Yep, that means that there's a best choice and a worst choice. Yep, and that's yep. just... I think poor rules design, yeah. honestly, and I wonder if it's sh it's going to signal a shift um, in the way that they approach mm -hmm. writing codexes as we go forward. Possibly, because it seems like they're trying really, really hard to match the box and to yes. say make it accessible to take the box and put it on the table. Yep, you just take the box, you assemble it as it comes, you put it on the table. So that means you're taking one of each special mm -hmm. weapon. Every option is free. If you take either turret weapon, it's the totally same okay. Cost. It's the same cost. Same yeah, cost. I don't even have to think about it. I don't know why they're doing all turret weapons free. I could see like special weapons being free and one per guy yeah. and like fine. Tanks is where I'd be willing to go into nuance because now it's like, would you take a twin linked battle cannon or an average of half a shot less with a free auto cannon, uh, better strength and plus one damage on the oppressor cannon? Like the oppressor cannon compared to a twin battle cannon. The oppressor cannon is, is just better. Just better. It's the only scenario where you could think that the twin ball cannon is better is if you go pound them to dust and you get 12 as opposed to 9. Yeah. But even there, the average damage to vehicles, which, I mean, fair, uh, vehicles you can't pound them to dust, but the average damage is like 3 versus 4. So like. And also you just get an auto cannon, so it's plus 2 shots if you're going into like horde units. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... And it's more reliable because like, I, I really just do don't. hate that rules writing yeah. there. Like everything being free mm -hmm. sounds like it should be a good thing, but it just means the unit costs more and you take the best option. Yeah. And there's no nuance there. Yep. Like if <clears throat> if the units cost ten points less, but you know, flamers were free and melty guns were five and plasma guns were five, then like, all right, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think it's interesting. I think the codex is very good, but I don't think think it's broken? I don't think it's broken. We don't know about the balance patch. We've said it 17 times, and I'll say it 18. Um, uh, yeah, I, if they get the full indirect and armor of contempt, I could see this book being like very upper A tier. Even if it gets the full balance patch, I'm not confident this would be S, but it would be close, and it might be. It would be, at the very least, toxic. Yeah, yeah, like it, would it be, wouldn't necessarily be broken, but it would not be very fun. unfun. Yeah. Absolutely, if, if if indirect comes back in full effect, it will not be enjoyable at all. So I hope it doesn't purely for that sake. There'll be like one sicko <clears> being like, <laughs> and then and then they'll still they won't win like the tournament. Yeah, because someone will go first against them with like an army that just brought like Harlequins. They're like, oh no, you can see me anyways. You can see me one turn your call. 
Yeah. Like, um, and then the entire Harlequin army touches every artillery piece and is like, hey, you can shoot out of combat into, hmm, oh wait, everyone's already in combat, can't shoot me. The game is less resilient to a full indirect army than it used to be. Because, yeah, we're all building for it not to exist. Yeah, we're building for it not to exist, and we're also... Mm -hmm. They've removed a lot of the ways to move ludicrously fast and charge. Also true. So that a lot of armies don't have a way to deliver like ten nonsense bodies to your back to your backboard edge yeah. and just tag you. And so that means that if you take an indirect army that's full indirect and nothing but indirect, mm -hmm. then you will get to shoot your opponent at least one time. Yes. And yeah, sure. If you go first, you're gonna get to shoot him at least twice. Mm -hmm. And you know, you won't win a tournament with that, but you could definitely beat someone that is playing way better than you. Yeah. Or you could lose to someone who is just playing, like just munching on crayons. <laughs> Fair enough. Just, just jamming them down their, their favorite color is red. Yeah, uh, isn't, isn't yours. Yeah, it's my favorite flavor of crayon. My favorite flavor of crayon is um, red. I like this book for a lot of the options in it. I love how much you can do with the infantry. It feels like guard infantry are actually useful beyond just dying in a spot, which is nice, because yeah. that is what guard infantry used to be. I feel like Scions missed. I feel like Castricans are awesome. I Castricans love the Rogel so Dorn. Uh, Leontis is great. Creed is great. Uh, orders. I love the mechanic of orders, and I think they've done it really well here. Yes. I like that they put it as a tr command phase thing, but then they, they gave the room for uh, for transports. You missed on Scions, though. Yeah, Scions, not, you not just missed, and that sucks. Yeah. Um, this book is very supable because the only thing you lose by not being pure guard is, yeah. well, secondaries. First of all, secondaries, secondaries right now which, are great. Secondaries are good. Secondaries are amazing, mm -hmm. but you also lose out, you only lose out on the splash orders, nothing else. Like the fact yeah. when you order someone, you, you extend it. Reading through the book, that actually feels pretty impactful, mm -hmm. doubling up on your orders. The orders does feel important. Yeah. It's not a small loss, but it's also something I think you can get around because you have less units if yeah, you're souping. Exactly. You have less scarred. Mm -hmm. I think this army feels pretty strong. I think if it keeps the current secondaries, it can be really, really strong because you yeah. can just set up a build to score a lot of secondaries. Guard secondaries are great. Mm -hmm. And then if they come out, that's when you shoot them. You don't need the indirect. Very true. You only need indirect if your opponent can hide from you. If your opponent can hide from you and win, mm -hmm. which is why Tau take planes, Tau take... Sometimes they still take the indirect, even with the nerf. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, overall, I think guard players will be mostly happy with how the book plays. I think they'll be a little bit sad with the regiment rules. I personally am a little disappointed that you don't have a keyword to replace. Again, this is... Uh, the last 8th edition book has now been replaced. Yes. We don't know if this is the last Codex of Ninth. We assume World Leaders are coming. We don't know if there's more after that. We don't know when 10th is coming. But this is the last Codex of 8th replaced, the last Codex to move over from 8th to 9th. So the fact that they did it this change now is weird and probably indicates that this book is designed for the future. Again, So we don't know. Disclaimer, this we, is not us yeah. wink, wink, wink. This is what's going to happen. We don't know. Yeah, this like, is the latest rules that we know is this codex. This is the most up to date we've got. I hate that if I don't include that, yeah. people are going to make a Reddit post that says Art of War confirms Bibble, 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 Gibble, Gibble, Gibble. gibble. And yeah, like, confirmed by nine Rage Runners before the Gene Strickle Codex came out. Yeah, that didn't age well. Yeah, that's not great. Because we didn't know. Um, but still, this codex could be a sign of what a 10th edition codex is going to look like. Could be. It could be that this codex is going to, when 10th edition comes out and we're playing with this codex, that this codex feels really good and it's like, oh wow, this is like, like Space Marines are now similar design to this and we're like, yeah, these regiment rules stack up great to that. We don't know. We have no idea. But it's a very interesting and it's new and I feel like it's a little bit less flavorful in the regiments. No idea if when 10th edition drops, whenever that is, mm -hmm. if this book will even be legal at that point. Yeah. Like, we don't know. No, no idea. Um, it's just a really weird rules design that doesn't that feels out of step with everything else. I think it's a well designed book. I mm -hmm. really do. I think the internal balance of this book is quite good. Yeah, and I think yeah. there's a reason to take a lot of the units, yep. and there's not a lot of reason to just spam them, which is good Great. rules design. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's designed well. I think Caster can do too many mortal wounds. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's that's yeah. a whole other thing. If I were to rank this in a tier list, considering that we have zero games with this as of this recording, no practice we're games, getting them no in real games, soon because I'm building the model still. But uh, we'll be getting there very soon. Uh, but if I were to give this a ranking on the tier list right now, off the cuff, I would say it's any it's somewhere between the top and bottom of A tier, depending on how the balance slate comes. It feels like it's A tier. I think it's the lower end of A tier if it doesn't get any of the balance patch to hold over, but it's still A tier. And as we play it and we find the combos more, we find out what works, maybe it rises the ranks. I don't know, 30 Castricans drops an insane amount of mortal wounds on people. Yeah, but then, like, what if they can't actually see all the different units, and what if they die first, and, like, 
what if that's not what you need? What if your opponent has a, a, a feel no pain against mortals? Now it's like, all right, this has, didn't actually do that much anymore. As it, what if they have a feel no pain? Against mortals. Oh, yeah, yeah, the finial will ignore that. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, the Kassarkins would be the thing that's too good. But also, Kassarkins are cool models, and they're new. So, Kassarkins you know, we've got to sell them, right? Um, they're also like $50, $60 a box. Uh, you can't even buy them. You have to buy them in a $150 box. Hmm. Hmm. Think face. Yeah, I think I I think I know what I'm doing with my 30 scions that I have painted up. I think I know what they're doing. Uh, I want Kassarkins. And we're yeah, painting them like all of green. <laughs> they're Kassarkins now. Um, it's a well-designed book. I really like the way they design Leontis. I feel like he takes over a bit of the book, though, because he feels necessary. To he make. does. Leontis feels necessary. Creed feels great, but not necessary. Half of the time we talk about what you can do with units, it's only things that Leontis likes Yeah, to like if you don't take Leontis, then... Ulgrin and Ogren feel way worse because I think Leontis is the only way to give them regimental orders. Yeah. Um, you can give them Prefectus by a couple of different ways. But that doesn't increase how much damage they do. No, not really. And they need that pretty bad. Yep. Uh, but when they get it, they're good. need to start dipping into tank commanders in order to get orders, and then the tank Mechanized. commanders can, yeah, in order to get mm -hmm. mechanized orders, you need to start dipping into tank commanders, and the tank commanders can't order themselves unless they take the upgrade. So it's like, just... Just take Horsey Boy and give two of your tanks, you know, reroll yeah. ones to hit. And gain a CP, and, and he's a Supreme CP. Commander, and he's a Captain Lieutenant Aura. And, and occasionally you will just get to win a game off of, you both pick, like, you both pick two kill secondaries, and then you switch yours, or you pick one kill secondary, they pick two. Mm -hmm. And then you go, yeah, my kill secondary is going to become not that, and then you have to rush me down through all my guns. Like, I, yeah. I do think that ability can be crazy. It, it, it can be very good. I think it's almost always going to be plus one CP because the guard secondaries are just good. Yeah. You don't need to change them. That's true. It's definitely something that might come up in the future with Warzone, Bithylum, or whatever. Yeah, that's true. We'll, we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, yeah, so uh, overall, I think, um, I think I like this book. I love all the models that came out. So the fact that they came out with so many new models honestly gives this a lot of brownie points for me. Where if this came out with no new models, I'd be a little more mad about the regiment thing. Uh, but I'm not a, a dedicated hardcore. This is my regiment guard player. You know, I've played custom traits all, as long as they've existed, anyways, uh, or like whichever one is best. So I, I'm not, you know, married to it. But I would have liked to have seen Catachan options, Cadian options. Like, it, it feels weird that it's like, oh yeah, if I want a captain in my army, it's a Cadian commandant, and I can't take a non-Cadian commandant. And I know it doesn't matter, but it feels a little weird. And I think that the more hobby attuned guard players. Will be a little disappointed in the lack of flavor. Oh, oh I've seen the the yeah. Extra I'm being community. I'm being, being very are, mild with that. Yeah, literally, Leontis came out and they're like, "He's not Yarrick." In yeah. about that tone of voice. It, indeed, and as as you may have, we didn't even mention this, by the way. No special weapon team in the squad. No uh, veterans in the uh, in yep. there. Uh, no conscripts. Yeah. No Lord Commissar. No. No Yarrick. Yarrick no Pask. You know, Usarker Creed, but you do get Ursula Creed, who has the same war gear as before, so if you like the old Creed model, just do that. If you like your old Creed, you can keep them. Yeah, just keep them. Um, so uh, quite a few data sheets got taken out as well or consolidated, which I think is fine. I don't, I don't, I spam special weapon teams and command squads, and I don't mind that they're gone, honestly. Well, the special weapon team are now the command squad. It, well, yeah, the, the command squad got folded in with the platoon commander into its yeah. own thing, and the, and the company commander is gone, and they put in the, sorry, they took out the platoon command squad, they kept the company command squad, but now it became the platoon yeah. command squad. So there's no real way to spam out special weapons in a way that you want. The best would yeah. be like Death Corps of Kree getting three plasma guns. Which is cool, I like that's that. Cool. That's cool. I like that a lot. I like having three plasma guns just jumping out and be like, pew, pew, pew. Oh, I like plasma guns a lot. How does it go? Pew, pew, pew. Thank you. There you go. All right, well, I think that wraps us up there, so. I uh, appreciate everyone who stuck with us for this uh, entire video. We appreciate your support, as always. And if you want to see more of our content, a lot more of the Guard content coming up, you can catch it on this YouTube channel or in the War Room. Yep. So uh, go check out our website, theartofwar40k.com, or you can become a member of the War Room right here on YouTube. The War Room is a place where excellent top-level players like myself, Jack, Nick, Richard Siegler, Brad Chester, and many, many more are there to teach you how to get better at the game that you love. It also gives you access to our wonderful global community, and you can become a member of our Discord. So please consider checking it out. We're going to send you away the promo for that same War Room. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. There's so many rules in 40K, hundreds of events, and constant updates. Skip the learning curve of Warhammer and join the pros.
Art of War is led by multiple world champions with decades of success. We teach clinics, stream games, and inspire you to succeed at your favorite hobby. Join our global community of gamers just like you.